Worcestershire's embrace, we stand tall. A vibrant tapestry woven by the threads of all. In the shadow of the majestic spire, the roar of a captivated crowd inspires. Where Elgar's notes dance upon the breeze, through winding valleys, hills and trees. Along the Severn, the railway winds, capturing and enchanting hearts and minds. Our culture and heritage in history steeped, a passion for community upon which we reap. But now, a new season about to be born. Here's to fearless warriors, ready to face the storm. And Bullswick is bowled by Leach, plays forward, last ball of the first over, and he is bowled. Good start for Joe Leach, good start for Worcestershire. You see, right arm over, comes in, bowls, and that's a nice drive, pass point and away to the boundary on the far side of the ground for four. Smith starts his second over, bowling down the hill to Lees. Lees plays this away through mid-wicket for four. Nice shot along the floor towards the car park last week. Sleech bowls again. Ackerman on the back foot plays it back to the bowler. He tries to get a hand on it. It's run past him down towards the far end of the ground. And it's actually raced away for four. Nathan Smith from the railway end. Bowls oh, and gets a wicket. Really good catch by Jason Holder at second slip. Edged by Lees. Smith again in bowls. And this one is edged for four. Down to third man by Ackerman. Leach in. Cut by Bellingham, there's a big gap in the offside and it's heading towards the piles of covers on that far side of the ground and comes to nestle on top of them. Four runs to finish the over. Tails on the website, weight balls again and Bellingham drives for four. Half volley, off stump, right in the slot, lovely shot. Just too full from weight. Weight balls, Bellingham drives four more. Through the covers again in the slot. He'll be annoyed with himself, Matthew Waite. Action replay really. Holder in, driven away nicely by betting and past point. And got the legs to get to the boundary. He has the four. Running in from a boundary, and that's defended, put an outside edge, and that will trickle away. And that will be four. Running from that long boundary there. That's a tented pull, and he's pulled it straight, and it's beaten mid off. That's a great shot, and that will be four runs. Smith in, nice drive from Bedding and that's through the covers and that's, that's going to go drive. away for four to the far end of the marquee on our left hand side, the VIP marquee. Yeah, no, absolutely not. Finch recovered this time that's short and that's been pulled away. With one bounce four and somebody in the crowd stopped it. Yeah, I definitely would say this is a par score. Yeah. Oh well, I hope, I hope you haven't been hearing, you. well, You've probably not been hearing anything. Wicket for Jason Holder as Beddingham chops on just in time. My uh, driven hard this time, haven't chased the pairs as that will find the boundary four runs from it. People have accepted that as Holder bowls, and this time I think Robinson will get fours. It's half volley, and he's driven it through extra cover. Starts a new over from the old pavilion end and he bowls wide to Ackerman who slaps that away behind square for four. That was a real gimme from Jason Holder. He got that one wrong. Again, balls. Peel for LBW. It's given. That's the end of Clark. He looks a little bit surprised to be given out. And everything looks in good order as Leach comes in again and balls. And that's short, hammered away by Robinson. And that's gone all the way over Baker out on that boundary for the first six. 
comes in again now and bowls and Robinson drives through the offside this time. Four more, absolutely sweet. Half volley, Leach overcorrect in terms of length. As Finch comes in and bowls and there's a big shout for LBW and he's got him, he's got Delader whipping, looking to whip it away on the onside. Holder comes in again, bowls. Edged, and that's taken at Very good catch. Is that Rob? It's, uh, it's not, is it? Holder to Ray. Ray lobs that nicely out through mid wicket. One bounce for. It's gone past the. Finch in again. Past him by Lungley. Bowls, and Rain gets a run. Just clipping this one away off his pads. He'll probably get two, in fact. In fact, he'll get four because Nathan Smith was it. Finch around the wicket. In again. Bowls. Rain drives. Four more, wide outside the off stump, square drive, sort of sliced away past the diving lid. Waiting, cut by Robinson, and that's got the four down past the deep point. Repair work here at the moment, and that's a lovely lob shot from Robinson. Has that gone for six? It has. <laughs> that's, that's a lovely shot. He's played that straight back over. Stumps and there's another lofted six from Robinson. I think he's put that over the roof of the pavilion. Yeah, that was landed on the way and on the left it's down the hill. Raced four. away for four. Can't see mid wickets. Weight comes in. Over pitched oh. edged by Robinson. Where's that it's gone? Four. Gone four to the third man around the corner. The side of the market. Running in from the railway and once again bumper and that's pulled it towards the leg side and that's four runs. It's almost it's turned his head on that. It's yeah. It's very good bumper there to be honest. It's Comes the bowler. Robinson cuts oh. that nicely. Where's that gone? gone just gone four. over point, yeah, just found the boundary. It's fifth. Again, oh, I'm not sure what happened there. He's played and missed it. That it's gone between the keeper and hold of the slip. I'm not sure. Oh, he's got, he's I got think an edge he's actually it. nicked that. Yeah. yeah, let's just split them. Two consecutive balls, and he's out. He's got him this time. Caught behind, taken by Roderick, low to his right hand side. And Robinson Adam Finch to continue from the railway and round the wicket. Bowls to Rain, who is out. Bit of a strangle, he's banged it in short, Finch and Rain's gone for the pull shot, maybe uh, just got a bit cramped up and I think he's just gloved it through. Finch in again, bowls, and uh, that's very full, and that is it, he's got Callum Parkinson's second ball, LBW full in the block. Rain again in, bowls, and Roderick is out, so it's not going to be a strong start, he's pushed at that one outside the Oster, probably just nipped away a little bit, he's got a little edge through to the keeper, so... Uh, Bad start for Watershire in uh, there. Potts in again, bowls. Libby gets a, a run, at least one, maybe two, as he tucks it away on the leg side. In fact, four, because he's timed it so well that the man... Oh, he's played it on. He tried to leave it, and he's played it on. <laughs> Rain on a left, defended just behind point. Let's see where that's going. And that's run away for four runs. That's really well timed. He hasn't tried to hit that, he's just guided. From London. Pots in, balls. That's a nice shot. That's a lovely a shot. Ollie outside of off stump, and it's been steered through the covers. It's well wide of off stump for four. Dear, dear. Coming in again. That's a really lovely flick through a bit onside there, and that's for sure found the boundary. Coughlin balls. Cut shot, that's away for four. Nicely done by Jones. It's on to 16. Coughlin in balls and Libby on his toes. Plays a nice shot. Square of the wicket on the offside. Very much a trademark Jake Libby shot. That square drive off the back foot. High left elbow, straight bat. Nicely played. Oh. Break off as Coughlin bowls and Libby drives. Square of the wicket, behind square for four, full and wide. Coughlin in, bowls, four more for Libby, short. In at his hip and he just tickles it round the corner, very fine down to fine leg. Left in the day, it's coming oh, in and that's driven shot, ever so handsomely through the offside, but you know, extra cover and that'll be four runs. In again from that top end, short of a length and that's 
cut away and that'll be four more. That's just gone behind point. Tenedi comes in again. That's kept quite low and that's driven through for covers and that's a beautiful shot for the third boundary of the over and that. And bowls. Oh. And Jones is taken on the pad and there's a shout and he's given. Tom Lungley, the umpire, took his time, but uh, Coughlin getting that one full and straight. Middle of West Bromwich. <laughs> Coughlin bowls. This is uh, a way down through the slip cord and to vacant third man for four. Off the bat of holes. Coughlin bowls. Oh, he's got him. Now, was that chopped on or did he just get it through his uh, defences? I think he's got a bottom chopped edge on, on that and chopped on and Holes has gone for five. Running in the bowls. And that is the end of the day's play then. At uh, quarter past seven, 16 minutes past seven. On what is a beautiful day, blue sky, a little bit of cloud, sun's out, it's uh, nice and warm, uh, or relatively warm, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all set to go for day two of this championship game between Worcestershire and Durham. The uh, game evenly poised after the first uh, day, where the visitors were bowled out for 244, good comeback by Worcestershire in the afternoon session there, uh, but then the visitors struck back in the uh, latter stages of the day and reduced Worcestershire to 78 for four. I'm Chris Williams, with me today is Martin Emerson and Mel Farrell, uh, and Mel, well set for uh, well, a full day's play by the look of things and could be an interesting day. Uh, absolutely, yeah. I think yeah, the vernacular is it seemed to be doing a bit, shall we say, with 14 wickets on the first day. Uh, this is my first time ever at Kidderminster, so I'm really, really excited. It's beautiful ground, cherry blossoms are out, beautiful pavilion, a lot of people uh, already starting to come in. Uh, so we are set fair for a really good contest, I think, between these two sides. And I'm very much looking forward to it. I have to say, though, I, I have brought gloves and, and uh, a, like a ski woolly ear warmer and uh, about five layers. So I'm prepared. As soon as, as, soon as I said it's, it's a warm day, I was thinking of you next to me. We're coming from dip, very different uh, parts of the world. So for me, it's warm. For you, it's uh, uh, understandable that you've brought, uh, brought, brought the hat and gloves, etc. But what is interesting, actually, is that uh, playing here at Kidderminster's uh, Kidderminster Cricket Club, um, Birmingham League games have been put back a couple of weeks because the water table is so high and the rain we've had. But the pit, the ground here is in remarkably good condition. Certainly looks fantastic. I was talking to to one of the the local gentlemen uh, around from sort of Kidderminster who said it's been really huge challenge for them to get this ready, especially on relatively short notice. Because of course, uh, it's not that long since the games were moved here because of uh, of new roads waterlogged troubles uh, so what they've done just just everything about it obviously the pitch and the grounds the most important thing it looks immaculate but just the facilities they've got around as well it just really nice setup so it's, it's exciting an interesting first period of play you feel here because uh, with with Worcestershire at 78 for four still 166 behind uh, Jason Holder and Jake Libby there you look at the batting to come and you feel that this this is a big partnership and, and Durham will be throwing everything at it in the first few overs yeah absolutely huge uh, having Libby set there on 35 Holder able to see out 13 balls uh, without scoring last night that was pretty key I think and this, this first half hour, I think, will tell a lot perhaps about how uh, Worcestershire's first innings is going to go. But they, they desperately need these two to stay out there and uh, just try and form a bit of a, a rear guard action, if you like, after losing those early wickets. Yeah, but if they do, Worcestershire lose one in the, in the, in the first, say, a uh, few overs then you'd feel that Durham will have their tails up and rain forecast Monday. So they'll be looking to, to get ahead of the game here. Uh, well, both 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 sets of uh, players will be, but you feel for Durham having, with no Kashi Valley in the side, that's taken uh, put a, quite a big dent or hole in the Worcestershire batting lineup. Yes, as uh, 
the very contrasting when it comes to height figures of Jason Holder and Jake Libby walk out to the middle. I did, by the way, I did, did like that when Jason Holder took his first wicket uh, for Worcestershire and celebrated. He actually got down on his knees and they all came up and hugged him because that's probably the best chance you've got of going face-to-face -face hug with Jason Holder. I say, he's a big old unit, isn't he? <laughs> he is uh, he's a very tall man and Jake Livy's far more diminutive. But... So they will have their, their heads up if they can eke out a wicket here, Durham, after what that, what would have been a, a disappointing four days for them, their first run out at uh, Edgebaston last week. So it'll be Matthew Potts to open the bowling. One for 17. Is that, oh, to say, is that Potts? It doesn't. Running towards us now, bowling to Holder, gets onto his toes and drives defensively into the offside and there's no run yes this is the uh this is the challenge it's actually ben, it's ben rain, rain yeah. yeah this is a challenge when we're, we're sitting in a tent sort of at about fine leg for jason holder there's if he tucks, just, tucks around the corner you we just can have feel to trust it. yourself don't you because i could i could see it wasn't Potts, but the uh the tv feed was actually had, had got his name down but uh rain it is one for ten Bowling from the pavilion end and driven off a thick outside edge by Jason Holder. But again, his first runs and first runs of the day are four through the covers and all along the ground. But I think it was a thick outside edge, uh, but a big stride forward and gets that scoreboard ticking. Just have a look at it here. I think he got all of it, but he got, pl he got plenty. And uh, just... Looking to retrieve the ball from underneath the the covers over on that far side. But it is a lovely day here. Blue sky, a little bit of cloud. Fluffy cloud going above the ground. Uh, it's absolutely glorious. I f this feels very old school and I'm here for it. Next delivery. Sees Holder on the front foot playing defensively into the offside and no run. Three slips in for Rain. Wearing 44. But they, as you were saying earlier on, the way they've been able to turn things around and, and get such good facilities out out here at Kidderminster. Mm. Of course, they've got a bit of experience going back to the uh, the floods of 2007. Uh, but also it's been a, an outground for Worcestershire for many a year. Holder plays the next ball defensively, driving back up the pitch and no run. You certainly have a more intimate feel, don't you? Yeah. You, you just feel so much closer sort of to the players. Nothing nothing separating you from them. It's it's quite nice to experience. I've certainly got, got three slips in for Holder, who himself is a, an excellent slips fielder. But just trying to find that outside edge early on. Rain runs towards us. Holder again, in the crease, plays defensively into the offside and no run. It'd be interesting to get a view from uh, the supporters that are here because you can see a lot of them are in, in the, the chairs that have been provided, the white plastic chairs. Some have brought their own deck chairs there, but the experience for them would be closer to the action mm. and, as you say, more intimate. And they've done, done really well, as I say, getting the facilities here that uh, supporters would expect. The most difficult thing is trying to see the scoreboard on the far side, which is <laughs> with my old eyes. Next ball is driven, but straight to a fielder at uh, extra cover. Well, I, my eyes certainly don't do any better unless I look through the binoculars that I've purloined from Martin Emerson for the moment. Uh, yeah, there's another scoreboard just to our right, but we're in a tent, so there's, there's, there's a few <laughs> challenges here. Hopefully the listeners will bear with us as as we do our best. It's... um. It's not quite as uh, the, the view that we normally get, but we're spoiled, aren't we, really? It has to be said. So, end of the first over. 82 for four. Libby, 35. Holder off the mark with four from 19 balls. Uh, 98 overs to be bowled today. So, 97 still to go. Worcestershire trail by 162. So, 
So a change in the bowling. It is Matthew Potts now coming into the attack. And here's the thing, this is what I'm hopeful for, that with it being warmer today, they'll all have their jumpers off and we'll be able to at least see some numbers. So Potts is coming from our end. I'll have to check with you the names of these ends. He's running into Libby over the wicket. And that's just played straight past the bowler, but lots of cries of appreciation from the fielders. So we're at the railway end. Railway end, that makes sense because there's a railway line behind us. <laughs> I'm, I'm quick, you know, <laughs> I'm very quick. And the top end is the pavilion end. That makes it, what a beautiful pavilion it is. That is one of the loveliest I've seen. A black and white building, the little weather vane on top and the red or dark brown tiled roofs. Here's Potts it's over the wicket again. This time the ball just squirting off the outside of Libby's bat. Just rolls into the offside. Yeah, that is a magnificent pavilion. I'd, I'll have to go over and have a bit more of a look at that. I'm especially enamoured of the uh, little weather vane on top. Yeah, it's very old school, isn't it? Black oh, and white. lovely. Is it, the whole thing, the whole experience of of coming here, getting on the train in Birmingham. It's been very nice. Here's Potts into Libby and just up on his toes and defends that back to the bowler. Yeah, I came on the train. Um, never had never caught a train from the jewellery quarter station in Birmingham before. And I didn't realise there was a Banksy there. So I was very, very excited. It's, that's my first Banksy <laughs> in the wild. Uh, yeah, lovely station. They had what they called Temple of Relief from the 1800s, a latrine as well. I liked that too. Here's Potts. Again, Libby just defends that one. He's bowling a nice tight line. Just out to mid-off. No rum. Uh, and yeah, all sorts of things. I picked up a jewellery quarter guide actually because I, I realised I need to see more in that area. But lovely train trip and then a walk through Kidderminster. I feel like I'm a tourist, actually, have you today, got, got coming the, here. The Seven Valley Railway as well, of course, the steam railway. It's, uh, well, there's all, all sorts. But, yeah, I do feel like a proper tourist as Potts. He's in. Nap time, there's a big shout. They liked that one. He tried to turn it across the line, almost seemed to hesitate a little bit. But the umpire is unmoved. Yeah. Impossible to see from where we yeah. are exactly if that was just how on the money that may or may not have been but we have got a replay here and well, it's worth a shout but it probably was going down the leg side yeah, I think so umpires today Paul Pollard Tom Lungley Paul Pollard of course former Worcestershire player Nottinghamshire Potts he's in to Libby this time he just tucks that away on the leg side towards square leg and they'll get through for a single. So just the one run coming from Potts first over. One run from Libby today and hold it. Are they the first runs he's scored? Libby's today, yeah. Yeah, um, uh, since he got over here because I'm not sure that he got to bat the second time. I'm just going to double check that. This is the other thing that's going to be interesting, is just how much the internet is working here. It seems to be doing well so far. Uh, just going back to the pavilion, of course, it, uh, for anyone that, can, yeah. that uh, is listening rather than can see the feed today, it's very one of the uh, very traditional old-fashioned uh, pavilions and not too dissimilar to the one that used to be on the, uh, the old Cinderella ground in Worcester, which is where I think... Uh, Worcestershire first started playing many moons ago and it was very very much a treasured um, pavilion until it's uh, the first ball of the new over is run down to third man Libby will pick up a couple of runs there being chased down to the boundary in fact the ball wins it was uh, surprisingly quick along the uh, the ground there the ball so Libby's first boundary of the day um, yeah the, going back to the uh, that old pavilion at the Cinderella ground. Yeah, it was uh, just went to rack and ruin over the years. And uh, I don't know if they actually did move it in the end, but uh, that was the aim 
was to move it and, and try and erect it elsewhere, um, perhaps somewhere like Avoncroft Museum. But uh, I think they had some uh, some major challenges as they uh, as they looked into that. But yeah, it's, it is a lovely old style pavilion here at Kidderminster. I'm still not getting over the Cinderella ground. Why no, was it called the Cinderella, Cinderella ground? Cinderella Gloves Factory. It was uh, it was next door to it, and uh, this next ball is played defensively by Libby. Wow! Uh, and the, what was the glove factory is still there, uh, although these days it's apartments. Oh wow! Um, and okay. it was in the days when you when you the factories used to have sports facilities and grounds, and uh, it's, yeah, still known as the Cinderella ground. Had a, a lovely football pitch there. Yeah. Uh, and but they're back playing cricket on there now. Oh, I need. I feel like I need to go yeah. to the Cinderella ground. Yeah, Rushwick. Uh, certainly, one of the Rushwick teams was playing there. His rain is in from the pavilion end. Libby plays defensively, and there's no run. Still, in fact, one of the slips has uh, been taken away. Two in now. Score is 87 for four. Libby with that boundary has moved on to 40 from 81 deliveries. The run rate is just over three. Jason Holder's just making some adjustments. He he uh, had they had to have special trousers made for him. Rain right arm over bowls and played onto the leg side by Libby and there's no run. It's the first time I've seen Holder in the flesh. Seen him many a time on on the uh, TV. I hadn't realised just how big he is. Yeah, well, they, tall. the manufacturer, the kit manufacturer, couldn't, uh, didn't have any in his size. So they had to get them sort of adjusted or made by a tailor. And they only arrived like the morning pretty yeah. much of the first match that he played. So it's very last minute. Next delivery, full length. Run into the offside by Libby. What is he? Six 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 seven. Uh, six seven apparently. Yeah. But it, it, so you weren't here. I, I did uh, let listeners in on my little fun fact about Jason Holder uh, when they played played at Edgebaston the first week. But you weren't there, so I will tell you. Uh, he and I are the same height when we're sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's all in his legs, you see. Yeah. So he's got not the longest torso, yeah. it's just the legs. Uh, so I discovered this while interviewing him. Uh, right. Yes. Rain runs towards us. And turned onto the leg side by Libby. No run. End of the over. It is 87 for four with Libby on 40, Holder on four. But you say having to have his trousers... Uh, Specially made. I don't have that problem, but uh, <laughs> five, seven and a half. And don't forget the half. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's when you see, well, I think you know, Brett Dolivera is quite a diminutive yeah. guy. And he, he actually put up a, a post a picture of the two of them from the first game that's just said little and large. <laughs> like, yeah, I used to have to stand on a box or a couple of steps or even a seat to interview him uh, so that we'd be in the same shot. But when we're sitting down... <laughs> Turns out exactly the same height. So I told Brett Oliveira he should try the same thing. <laughs> I want to see if they're the same height while sitting. Here is Matthew Potts to continue from the railway end. And first shot is a beautiful one from Holder. Just stroked that one through the covers straight to the boundary. That is a gorgeous shot from the former West Indies captain. I think you've summed that up perfectly. It was a stroke, wasn't it? He just mm. strokes it, caressed it. Uh, no uh, no big flow of the bat. Just got it into the line and, uh, and caressed it through. Lovely shot. Yeah, he just made that look effortless. He waits now as Potts is in and again drives, this time straight past the bowler. It's not going to get past mid on mid-off rather, who runs across and does the fielding. Clark it was, Clark just it moving was. across. Yep, just getting my binoculars out. <laughs> I've, I've, I'm struggling with the, with the one who's right in front of me. I mean, for a good time <laughs> over the yeah. next few days. <laughs> He's going to test me out, that's for sure. <laughs> with its small boundaries, if he does get those levers going, he could hit the ball a long way, couldn't he? In comes Potts, and he's just defending that one. It goes to slip. I think we could end up with a ball in the commentary tent. 
Well, I, I was just thinking, actually, more on the railway line and trains going past. Could you know? <laughs> imagine you're sitting reading your, your newspaper. If anyone <laughs> yeah. does read a newspaper these days, <laughs> and walk them through the window. Well, you know your looks out if that happens, though. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, it is right behind us. Uh, I just went and had a look because there's also a beautiful uh, tree in blossom as Potts is in, and there's a big shout here that struck him on the pad. Extended shout, but again, nothing from the umpire. So, so is it Potts is, is finding the pads, is he? I'll have another look at this one. There's still a few hands on heads here. They thought it was close. I don't know whether there was bat in that. The other question, it might have been height. And that's the, the tricky thing with someone yeah. like Jason Holder is that probably where his, his knee roll in is about 10 centimetres yeah. higher than the average person or the average cricketer. Yeah, I think the, the umpire can end up guessing, can't he? just plays with you a little bit but Holder waits as Potts is in again plays a nice looking drive but it just goes straight to Clark at mid off no run there and uh, he he'd only made 20 well he made 29 in his first match he didn't make any runs in the second one against Knotts and had just taken the one wicket before his performance yesterday. So just taking him a little while, I think, to get into the groove holder. He's on now and he drives again. Another straight drive and a diving mid on does the job this time. So played some really lovely looking shots. Jason Holder only got the one boundary though. So score now moves on to 91 for four with Libby on 40 and Holder on eight. You could just see mid-pitch the uh, the two batters <laughs> in conversation there, and uh, dwarfs uh, Libby, who's probably about my height, I would I would imagine. And uh, yeah, many a time in my in my life, I've been having conversation, looking up to somebody <laughs> like that. He's yeah, he's. I, there was another one. Um, I've got great photo of me interviewing Boyd Rankin, where I look like Frodo's baby sister. <laughs> It, it, it's just ridiculous. Oh, we've got a bit of a funky field change here. So it's uh, rain to continue from the pavilion end and whoo, gets a ball that possibly just moved away from Libby there. Uh, certainly playing down the wrong line. But uh, from his point of view, thankfully, it uh, didn't take the edge. But it looks like we've put a little bit more into, into that one. Ben Rain. One for 18 from his 11.1 uh, overs. I think it's Paul Coughlin is basically fielding right next to Jason Holder at the non-striker's end. So. Rain, bowls, about leg stump, driven back up the pitch by Libby, who's, uh, without wanting to put the kiss of death on him, he's uh, been such an outstanding performer for Worcestershire since he arrived here. Real success story. Yeah, he uh, made the BBC's team of the season last year and uh, was the third highest run scorer in Division 2 last year. Made 1,153. Again, plays defensively from within the crease, not taking uh, any liberties at all with rain. I think oh, that was one reason why there was a fair bit of excitement to see how well Kashif Ali uh, did in that first game when he, he got hundreds in both innings. And maybe there was a bit of a feeling of, you know, what did Worcestershire have when, when Libby wasn't performing? And to see him come along, such a shame he's injured his back yeah. uh, in the gym. We hear? Rain, short for length and... Libby has nothing to do with that. Let's it uh, go harmlessly through to the wicketkeeper. Yeah, when you when you're in a a rich vein of form like Cashy Valley has been, the last thing you need is it to be interrupted by injury. You just want to keep playing, don't you? You want to be out there batting all the time when you're scoring like that. Well, it, and it wasn't just the amount of runs scored; it was the way he scored them. It they were two absolutely stunning in innings to watch. Really, really easy on the eye. 
Libby right-handed waits, turns this backward a square, will pick up a single. Clark just uh, jogs up from the boundary to field halfway in. Libby moves on to 41, score 92 for four. One ball left in this 31st over. So the ball getting older now. Batting, you would feel, in these conditions should be a lot easier than, than perhaps it was yesterday. There was a little bit in it yesterday, as you can imagine, 14 wickets falling. Yep, doing a bit. Holder, right-handed, very upright as he waits and drives along the ground nicely. We'll pick up a couple here because Clark has got to make his way round. Uh, to his left, it's more square of the wicket, and they're uh, through for two comfortable runs. Not the greatest throw in by Clark, but takes us through to the end of the over. Holder has moved on to 10, 10 from 26 balls. Libby's on 41 after 31 overs. Worcestershire in reply to Durham's 244 are 94 for four, so they trail by 150. At some point, because I'm quite sad, I. I would like to count how many strides it takes Holder to get from one end to the other and how many it takes Libby to do the same yeah. journey. Uh, I'm going to try and do that at some point because I am sad. <laughs> yeah, that is one of the advantages of being that tall. That's going to be Potts continuing from the railway end. Yeah. Yes, railway end. And it's Libby on strike crouches and waits as Potts is in. First ball just driven past the ball at down to mid-off. Yeah, I mentioned before the railway behind us and there, there is the most glorious, is it a cherry tree that's in blossom behind us? You're definitely asking the wrong person. <laughs> I should know because I'm an orchardist daughter so right. I grew up on an orchard. It looks like cherry blossoms to me but absolutely beautiful. So spring has sprung here in Kidderminster and springing down to release the ball is Potts. And Libby plays at that one and misses. So Potts is just causing a, a few moments of consternation. He's struck the pad a couple of times. Managed to beat the bat. It's been around for a few years now, Potts. Um Played for England, of course. He's come off his uh, got his maiden century in the last game. He's still very he's very youthful looking, isn't he? Yeah, everything about him. He's in now over the wicket to Libby. He just clips that one wide of mid on. I'll run through for a single. Yeah, he's he's a, an intriguing prospect. I think for England, he's definitely on perhaps on their radar as they look towards life without Stuart Broad and possibly Jimmy Anderson at one point. It's just a very interesting time for fast bowlers. And I thought it was interesting listening to Rob Key last week. Always is, as Potts is in. Holder crouches at the last minute and just solidly defends that one to the offside. Yeah, when they were talking about the Kookaburra ball, a lot has been said about using it and uh, you know, a lot of people don't like it. But what he was saying uh, was that you know, he'd use it all the time because he doesn't want medium paces. Um, he, he wants to develop um, fast bowlers um, and make them work for the wickets more. Mm. Um, and you can see where he's coming from. But it's where you get the clash between the England side and, and the county side. Potts is in and again just really classic defence from Holder back to the bowler. Yeah I, I, one thing I mean people know I talked about it quite a bit last week uh, the existential question of, of is it about the county championship as a competition in its own right valuable is it a platform for developing England players? Do those two things have to be mutually exclusive? And I think that's, a, that's where the game has to get yeah. to, where it's not mutually exclusive. But there is one other thought I have that I'll give you after this ball from Potts to Holder. And that one's got a bit of bounce in it, but he's just tucked it off his hip uh, down to deep third. They'll run through for a single. 
and that is the end of Pots Over. So two singles coming from it. 96 for four with Libby on 42, Holder on 11. So one thing, if they're serious about developing bowlers who can bowl with a kookaburra, it's not just about the Ashes, because obviously they play with a kookaburra in a lot of countries, England players. Should they be playing with the Dukes, with the kookaburra ball? Just at least some exposure to it in the academies and their age groups coming through. So they're bowling with it when they're like 14, 15, 16. Mm. And also apparently they're playing with the Dukes in the second 11 uh, at the moment. Why not play with it in the second 11 when you've often got young upcoming players as well? So rather than just do it in the county championship. Rain starts new over to Holder, who flicks it. Uh, up to mid on, all along the ground, but no run. So, I use the example, you know, someone like Chris Rushworth is not going to get anything out of bowling with a kookaburra uh, at that, you know, at that stage of his career when he's been doing it all his life. But you've got next-gen bowlers playing in, you know, under-19s and, and second-11s around the country. Well, maybe they should be looking at doing it there. So it's a more holistic approach to getting benefits out of the kookaburra. Holder waits and it played too early there. I think he just uh, took a little bit off that, did uh, rain, and in the end just uh, helped it uh, and to where leg slip would have been and there's no run. Might have just taken it on the chest, I think, uh, mm. Holder there. But no, and, and I think you're right. And also the fact that some, you've got somebody like Rob Key who's looking long-term. Uh, I think it, in too many sports, things are short. There's too much short-termism where you can see what he's, what he's trying to do and... It takes time, so you've you've got to kind of try different things, but know where you're going. Uh, and I think there's such a difference the way things are run these days. And and, and someone like Rob Key would look at with that long-term vision and not afraid to take the brick bats. He's, you know, <laughs> and there've been a few. Yeah, there've been but, a few but, but, in the past couple of weeks. But he'll he'll take them because he knows where he's going. Whether he's right or wrong will, remains to be seen. They're just having a look at the ball here. Uh, Range is showing it to the umpire. There must be something wrong with it because he's immediately coming over to uh, is it Tom Longley at the far end, is it? Uh, in deep discussion there. Difficult to see from here which which is which. So it's handy. One's got a white flat cap on and one's got um, the broad brim tat. So without knowing actually these two umpires personally... I think uh, Tom Longley is this end, actually. The flat cap? Yeah. Oh, that's quite natty. I don't think I've ever seen a white <laughs> flat cap before. I do own one. <laughs> just tweaking the field rain here. Just uh, getting his man squarer at uh, mid-wicket. Uh, and that's immediately where the ball goes to. So we bowl to his field there. Just adjusted him only by a couple of feet. And uh, hold up. Played the ball straight to him, Lee's it was, all along the ground, and uh, threw for a single. Yeah, just sort of thought he was a little bit discomforted. It did take the, that ball in the chest. Maybe that's it. Maybe he's just got an iron hard chest, Jason Holder, and that put the ball out of shape a bit. <laughs> as it was after that that uh, Rain wanted it looked at. They got some fluff off his jumper or something like that. Just needed a snipping <laughs> off. But uh, leave it on strike now. He's rain running to all towards him from the pavilion end and again tucks this square on the leg side and Clark comes off the boundary to field. Takes Libby on to 43 and the score 98 for four. We've had 25 minutes this morning. Certainly Durham would have been looking for a breakthrough by now you'd feel because they know this is a big partnership. Batting still to come. Smith, Leach, Baker, Finch and Waite. Waite will be in next, you would feel. And equally as big a partnership for Worcestershire to stay in the middle. Holder, again, from within the crease, plays defensively. Dropping the ball into the offside. It's fielded by David Bed Beddingham. Holder, of course, is really trying to force his way back into the West Indies test side or, or prove that he should be over here in England when West Indies tour later on in the summer. He opted out of the tour of, of Australia. 
he had T20 commitments and I can completely understand that as well. He waits. In fact, he uses his feet there and he's played in the air and Clark is underneath oh. it, but it clears him and it clears the boundary for six. But uh, I don't think he got quite as much on that as he wanted to. Clark was certainly interested at backward square leg, deep backward square leg, but uh, the ball kept on going and cleared him by some distance in the end. And Holder picks up his first six and that brings up the 100 for Worcestershire at the end of that over. Holder has moved on to, just look at that again, may have been a bit of top edge on, on, on it, 18 he's moved on to, the score 104 for four. Yeah, he saw his eyes go up as if he realised that it had come off the top edge of the bat, but he's got so much power that even when he doesn't get all of it, it was still more than enough to clear the rope. So that'll be a little bit of a, a settler. I think we're going to have Matthew Potts first ball. No run. As I was picked up by Buzz the leader in the the slips. I think we're having a change in commentary, by the way. That's that's what's distracted me. I can't believe I'm going to be joined by Martin Emerson, who uh, I had the pleasure of commentating with last week at Edgebaston. He's coming on to join me now. As Potts turns, he's bowling to Libby over the wicket and it's off the back foot and he's just played that late and guided it down. Is it going to go for four? No. It's just fielded down there on the deep third boundary. But some runs are coming. Two from that ball. So scoreboard just starting to tick along a bit more nicely for Worcestershire and they need it to continue as well. As a few, few more clouds just creeping across the sky but they're high and they're white. It's a perfect day for cricket as Potts is in and Libby just punches that one to mid on. No run there. Moranen. Good morning, Mr. Emerson. It's a nice day, isn't it? It's a lovely day. Yeah. I don't think I've seen you looking this perky. You weren't this perky when you were at Edge It was Edgebaston. very cold last week, wasn't it? It was. It's it hard. Wet. To, it's hard to be perky when yeah. the weather's like that. I don't think I was particularly perky either. No. Well, on a scale of perkiness, I'd say you you weren't really. <laughs> I don't know where the scale goes on the, on <laughs> I the don't perk know counter. <laughs> the perkometer. Yeah. <laughs> Pots. Starts his run up. He's in to Libby. He just takes a half a stride forward and defends that back to the bowler. No run. How are you? Good. Just uh, updating that uh, 100 that came up a moment ago. Uh, and, yes. Uh, I've just been trying to get a nice picture of that uh, blossom tree out the back. Oh, the blossom tree. It is a cherry blossom, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's a very nice picture, yeah. I um, It's just full of blooms. Here is Potts and that one's just squirted off the outside edge of Libby's bat. It's got through a tiny gap in between second and third slip and it's all the way to the boundary for four. There's so, been a couple of shouts for LBWs but yes. I can't remember any scares. Have you? There's not been any no, chances as such, has I, there? I, well, one, one I think was going down the leg side. The one that struck Holder we're saying well, it's kind of deceptive with holder with height. I think it can yeah. make it a bit difficult. Wasn't sure if the umpire felt there was a little bit of bat in there, but yeah, he's tall, isn't he? Oh, did you have you noticed? Mm. He's, he's taller than tall. you. <laughs> not when we're sitting. Here's Potts, I bet he and is. that's just he's not. It's just <laughs> defended into the offside. No run. So you weren't here. I was. I was just telling that story. We are the same height when we're sitting down. Right. I know this because I interviewed him, wow. and I had to st instead of standing on a box, I suggested we sit down, and uh, we did, and we were the same height. That is the end of Potts over, by the way. While I just defend myself. 110 for four. Yeah, it is 110 for four with uh, six runs coming off that over. <laughs> so quite, I'm not used to having a, a, a commentary camera 
It, it, it is I'm in glad here to cut to you while you were leaning right forward <laughs> to look at the, the scorecard there as well. Yes, nice, I... Cl- nice close-up of your nose. I'm going to have a word with the director. <laughs> Oh, yes. So for those of you who are listening, we are on the stream as well. Here's Rain, right arm over from the pavilion end and a waft at the ball there from Holder. And Rain stands with his right hand clamped on his forehead in disbelief that he didn't get an edge there. It was a bit of a ugly looking shot, that really. It's probably the least attractive shot mm. that he has played all day. He's played some absolutely gorgeous drives. And has looked solid, and that's the first time that he's he looked a little bit hacky, so to speak. No, oh, sorry. To, there's a noise I'm trying to get to the bottom of. It. There we are. Rain again, then. 110 for four. Holder plays us up to mid on. No run. Picked up by Callum Parkinson. It's actually getting warmer. Yeah. I might be able it's to nice take, day, isn't it? take one of my four layers off. Sun's just coming around in front of us now. You did you did warn me that it would get cold later in the it afternoon. It did last night about six ish when the sun went behind a cloud. It mm. got rather chilly pretty quickly. Clear skies. Holder stands firm to this one from rain. This is the first time he's played against Durham. He was at North Hans in uh, 2019, I think it was. Weather today is set fair, and uh, it's going to be around about 12, 13 degrees, which is about the average for this time of year. That seems very cold to me. Rain balls. Holder takes a step down the track and looks to push the ball through the leg side, and it's come off a leading edge and gone towards Delayda in the covers instead. And so all of a sudden... Holder just being uh, discomforted a little. He's uh, found the boundary a few times so far today, and his, his cover driving has been straight driving, has been a dream. But Rain just making him pause a little. He struck him in the chest once. Comes in again and bowls. Oh, he's bowled him. He's bowled him. And uh, that has gone right through his defences and he's just played around it. Didn't move his feet there until the ball had hit the stumps. And that is the end of Jason Holder for 18 from 38 balls. 110 for five. Well, it was just just as uh, I was saying, he it was discomforting him a little bit, Rain. He struck him in the chest, just found a couple of edges and then... On this occasion, straight through him. So he'll be disappointed with that Jason Holder after really looking good early on uh, this morning here at Kidderminster. That, that could be real trouble for Worcestershire as well. Ends the partnership at 35 from 77 balls and they trail by 134. Yeah, it was, it was looking very productive, the um, partnership between Libby and Holder, uh, especially in just seeing out sort of the first half hour of the day. I uh, have been hoping they could just settle in for a really good session, but now it has to start all over again with Libby and Wait. So the importance of Libby's wicket grows even more significant now. I've I've been I've purloined your your yeah it's um, all right. Do you want me to put them in between us? Your no, the binoculars. Okay. I roughly know who everybody is on the field. You're doing better than me. It's harder. F- it it was difficult at times yesterday because we're at a low angle and the way the yeah the ground tapers away to recognise some of the Worcestershire players because they had their cable and their sweaters on and they don't have any numbers on the back. The new batsman, by the way, is uh, Matthew Waite. <laughs> and he faces the last ball of the over from Rain and plays it safely away. Yeah. 
you need to move your laptop away from your your wire and oh, this because okay. I think that's, there's a little bit of a oh, noise on the line. Oh, right. and I, think, I think that's probably what it is. Uh, I'm technically challenged, right? Being a cheap laptop that you got from some dodgy market somewhere. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> did it come with spyware included in it, did it? Oh, no, it's, it? a, it's a good laptop. It's a good one, isn't you it? Leave yeah. my laptop okay. alone. <laughs> um, Matthew Waite does have a first-class entry, highest score of 109 not out. So, mm. you know, it's, uh, it's possible. He averages 26. 7.61 first class cricket 109 not out against Derbyshire last year and so in comes Potts and uh, whistles passed into the hands of the keeper that so stayed really low first that, didn't up. It? it did stay low that's that could be quite worrying Ollie Robinson was sprawling trying to get that delivery As Potts reaches the top of his mark, does a little wheel around the orange soles of his shoes, flapping as he's in, and that's just turned into down towards deep fine. And 50 for there Libby. Is 100 more the, balls. Yeah, there is the 50 for Libby. You can hear the applause coming. Very warm applause. He's incredibly important to this Worcester innings now. So the wickets have tumbled around him. Seven falls. He's already had a couple of hundreds against Durham. And a 50, I think. Uh. And he's already had a, a century this year. 101 not out against Warwickshire in Worcestershire's first game of the season at Edgebaston. So he's now got 663 runs against Durham. It's weight on strike, though, as Potts is in. And that one just nudged off the hip, defended, no run. This is his 11th game against them. Those runs include 144 for Knotts in 2016 and 126 at New Road in a Durham win in 2021. Oh, so is that the sheet you handed me? I was, I was, I was discombobulated. Yeah. I, it's got lots of interesting information on mm -hmm. there. Here comes Potts to wait, and he just leaves that one, lets that one through to the keeper straight away. So Potts has got his tail up now. His uh, bowling partner at the other end, Ben Rain, successfully removing Jason Holder. Potts wanting to keep things going. Libby got 101 not out in the second innings at Edgebaston two weeks ago, following up his 109 not out in a game at Leeds at the end of last season. Made two in the only innings at Trent Bridge last week. Wait, waits as he just defends one on off stump from Potts. No run. So what you're saying is he's in good, good nick. Yeah, that is the 42nd time he's got two, at least 50. He certainly has been outstanding. And as I mentioned before, I think there was a feeling that Kashif Ali coming in, getting those hundreds, it might be some real bolstering of that top order around Libby. In is Potts. It's a full delivery, but spat out well by weight in the end. So it's the end of Potts over, just the single coming from it. And it's 111 for five. Libby on 50 weight yet to score. Are you superstitious about the 1-1-1 one, one, one thing? I'm not superstitious about anything. It's all nonsense. <laughs> Don't ask me another. No, I don't, I'm just uh, interesting. What about one, one, I'm one. So this is, this is Nelson. Nelson now, right? So yeah. Nels, oh, yeah. Nelson, when he died, was in the middle of a war zone. <laughs> so that contributed to his death, the fact he was actually in the middle of a naval battle. <laughs> Here's Rain. That's a shortish ball pulled away by Libby off towards that deep square leg. Clark comes around the boundary and cuts it off. 
Well, I'm not superstitious either. I, I just had never heard of a Nelson until I came over here. Right. I didn't know what a Nelson was. I've never actually seen anyone standing on one leg, though. No. I don't know if people see actually do that. See pigeons do it occasionally and seagulls. It's, I'm just looking around. I can't see anyone standing no. on one leg. Well, it's 112 for five now, oh, so well, that's uh, irrelevant, isn't it? Was it? A, it, was, yeah. it was a short moment. Yeah. Wait on strike. This is his sixth ball. Oh, he's edged it behind and he's gone. And uh, Rain strikes again. He had a little dab in that one. It was just beyond the off stump and he poked at it. And they now trail by 132 at 112 for six. And he goes for a duck, the second batsman of the innings to uh, fail to make a run. Only Robinson taking the catch there. Ben Rain strikes again. Yep, raining wickets at Kidderminster. He's bowling a very, very good spell, really discomforting them. He's getting enough movement, enticing the edge. And Worcestershire really are in trouble. Just emphasises the importance of that partnership between Libby and Holder. And one has, in this occasion, definitely brought two. It's whether or not they can arrest that now. They're still a long way behind Worcestershire. One, three, two. So Rain strikes again and has now taken three for 29 in 14.2 overs. A new batter. Nathan Smith. It's Nathan Smith, who, to tell you what, I think has been a really canny signing, hasn't yeah, yeah. he, for Worcestershire? Got a half century last week, didn't he? Half century. He's been absolutely outstanding in the bowling department. Gun fielder as well. 58 against Knotts last week. That one squirts away down towards third man. And he's being chased from the slip cordon by Colin Ackerman, who picks it up just in front of the rope to our right and then slips over. His ankle just seemed to give way underneath him there. He's uh, picked himself up. David Bellingham just checking that he's okay. Just turned his ankle as he went, to, went down to pick that ball up there. Obviously still a bit damp in places and a bit soft underfoot. Nathan Smith, the new batsman. 25 years old. This is his first spell in England here for the season. Won the Plunkett Shield during the winter and was the highest uh, wicket taker in that tournament in New Zealand with 33 as Wellington won the competition. Hey, he took his, his best figures in that final, six for 36. And just to drive home the point, he scored an unbeaten 75. So all-round cricketer. We saw him affect a brilliant run out in that first match uh, at Edgebaston that he played as well on the boundary running around one handed pick up throw really sterling stuff so Alan Richardson did say that he was a really terrific all round package and he's shown that in just a couple of weeks of the championship there's a bit of a delay going on here while Durham have uh, asked for a helmet to be brought out Coughlin's going to go in close. There's an advanced gully, really. Got two slips in place. <laughs> Smith's just having a look directly at him as well. It's given him something to think about. Rain in, and that is left alone by the batsman. Yeah, and that indicating indication from Smith that that ball did move a little bit. So this, of course... This match is, is his first opportunity to face the Duke's ball. Having battered against the Kookaburra ball in the first two rounds. So, so it's a different challenge for Nathan Smith this time around. Rain comes in and balls. And that's turned off the legs late there by Smith. Clark comes in from the square leg boundary to field it. One run. I was reading during the week as well that 
Alan Richardson really is having to look at how he manages Nathan Smith as well. Uh, it's a long season. I think they'll want to get as much as they possibly can out of him uh, in different formats, and just making sure that he's able to stay out there on the park. So I think there'll be a fair bit of thought into just how they use Nathan Smith. Rain balls to Libby. Libby drives the ball nicely out through the covers. The leader's chasing after it with Beddingham, but it's gone for four on the far side of the ground. It's come to rest on the tarpaulin up against the fence there. So that moves the score on to 119 for six. Had um, some sad news last night, actually, from the world of sport. Leighton James, who, former Welsh international footballer, played much of his career at Burnley, but also had a brief spell in the 80s for a season at Sunderland played for Swansea and QPR as well I think and uh, he played for Whitburn Cricket Club played in the same team as my dad and he uh, passed away last yesterday at the age of 71 more recently he'd been a uh, a summariser on BBC Radio Wales I was listening to a tribute to him this morning from Alastair Campbell the former Labour advisor who's a big Burnley fan they'd become quite good friends over the years Played 57 times for Sunderland. Has passed away at the age of 71. Potts is in. First ball well. Just gets his bat out of the way in time. Smith. He's pulled it up at the last second. Paul Wilson. Hi, Marty and his band of merry men and woman. <laughs> woman. Uh, merry man and woman. That's you, I think. <laughs> that that yeah. me? Yeah. I think it is me. <laughs> Last time I checked. From a sun-kissed but chilly Costa del Hartlepool. Game evenly poised at the <laughs> moment when he wrote that, which was at 11. So it's moved on a bit since then. We had a couple of wickets. <laughs> Hang on. Here is Potts. He's in over the wicket. And that's just defended back up there. Can I just say, is he really from Hartlepool? Yeah. Did he hear my commentary last week? Yeah. <laughs> he emailed in. Oh, keep going then. What were you saying about Hartlepool? Oh, well, I admitted that when I first came to this country, I didn't know how to pronounce it, and I oh, was yeah. calling it Hartlepool. Hartlepool, that was right. Yeah. Hartlepool? <laughs> oh, my apologies to everyone in Hartlepool. And it's a fuller ball, just punched down to mid on, no run. <laughs> he says, uh, should be with you for the duration, apart from nipping out about 11.30, so he's not even hearing this now unless he's back <laughs> already, uh, to pop to the chippy. Aww. Keep up the excellent banter and the stories. <laughs> have fun and come on, Durham. Ah, You haven't been to Hartlepool, have you? No, I've never been to Hartlepool. <laughs> yeah, it's on the... <laughs> well, this is my first time in Kidderminster. Is it? I, I, I said I felt like a right tourist. I passed through here last year on July the 1st. Oh, it's lovely. Here's Potts, and there's a big thud as it hits the pads. Bit of a shout, but might have been going down leg side from our not brilliant vantage point. But yeah, Durham played Worcestershire at New Road on the 30th of June, and on the, uh, the Saturday I had a bit of time. Did my match notes. In fact, I drove up the River Severn, and I went somewhere over Bewdley Way and found a pub with Wi-Fi and did my match notes in the pub and had some lunch oh. and then continued up to Stourport and then came across to Kidderminster. Here is Potts, legs flying as he runs in and that's just gently defended to mid on, no run. I, I'm actually, there's a, the, a pub just across the road from here, a little, a little pub. I want to go in there after the game finishes because I feel like that will sum up my tourism experience of Kidderminster day one. Right. To go into the little pub across the road. Are you here as a tourist? Well, I felt like it. That's what I saw. I was taking pictures. I saw my right. first Banksy. I was looking at the exhibition at the Jewellery Quarter station, the Jewelry Temple Quartz of nice, Relief. Yeah. Have you not been to the Jewellery Quarter before? I've been to the Jewellery Quarter, not to the station. Right. Potts is in. And that ball just watched all the way past the bat and through to the keeper by Smith. Is that not Snow no Hill? No, 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 it's Jewelry Quarter Station. station right. And it is fantastic. I'll show you some photos. Uh, end of pot's over. It was a maiden one. And it's 119 for six. I'm going to leave you for a while and go find a coffee. All right. Mel Farrell will be back with us a little bit later on. She's gone and taken a few more pictures.
selfies in front of random pubs of Kidderminster. Matthew Mullins has emailed Morning Marty and Co. from a warm Shaftesbury. What a lovely day for it. Hoping Durham can uh, have a little fight back today. Off to watch Shaftesbury before they, their playoffs. Brett Pittman trying to tally 60 league goals for the season. Up the Rockies, says Matty. Chris is back alongside. Baz Delader is replacing Ben Rain from the pavilion end. Right arm over, the Dutchman. That one springs through with a bit of pace on it, doesn't it? Through to the keeper. Yeah, I... Uh I went away and uh, two wickets fall very quickly. So, from Worcestershire point of view, on the one occasion they might be happy to have me back. Because they are in a bit of trouble at the moment. They trail by what, 120, 125? Yeah. Delayed her in. Libby leaves it alone. Through to the keeper, it goes again. That's really quite low, I think, that one. Yeah. To the the wicket keeper. And I think the, the breakthrough might have taken longer than Durham w would have liked this morning, but uh, follow it up with Matthew Waite after getting rid of Jason Holder. I think they'll, uh, they'll feel they're on top now. The leader comes in and bowls. Libby cuts hard. A fielder out on that uh, boundary on the far side there. Underarm throw back from David Beddingham to the keeper. One run. Ants wondering if Matthew Potter's growing a mullet. I haven't got a clue. Uh, I can't actually see where he is on the field at the minute. Either. Oh, he's way down the far end and he's got a cap on, so. Very still around the ground, isn't it? Yeah, there's uh, not much of a breeze today. It was quite windy yesterday, particularly th those big uh, these cypress trees at the far end. What would you call them? As uh, the lady comes in and bowls. The really tall tree at the far end, that's a duck ball. Is it willow? Willow. Yeah, it's a big weeping willow, isn't it, that one? Yeah, that was bending quite a bit yesterday. It's quite a nice uh, area, this, isn't it? I, I had a drive down towards the viaduct earlier, and there's some lovely houses on that road. Yeah, well, uh, Kidderminster Harriers Ground, just round the yeah. corner from the viaduct. It's next to the Seven Valley Railway. Yep. Away at Barnet today. Are they? Last game of the season. In comes the later, that's left alone. No run there, then. Is that, uh, is that National League? Yeah, well, it is... Their last game in Nas National League, because they've been relegated. Oh, so they're mm -hmm. down to National League North next year. I was just saying to one of the lads before, I remember watching Kidderminster on the telly in the last year or two. FA Cup third round, maybe? Yep. On a Saturday lunchtime. And I can't for the life of me remember who they were playing. West Ham. West Ham, was it? Right. Went 1-0 up. Mm. Remember close-up shots of steam trains near the ground. That's right. This is another dot ball wide of off stump. That is the end of the over. Just the one single from it. 120 for six, Worcestershire, here on the BBC. Yep, used to be some of the best food on the circuit at, uh, at Agborough. The famous Agborough soup and the cottage pies. Well, the guy who's got Forest Green Rovers, he, he turned their stadium vegetarian, didn't he? Yeah. He's got lots of uh, solar panels on the roof mm, and things like right. that. The very shy and retiring Mr. Vince. Yes. So we've got a change of bowling at Paul the Coughlin. railway end. Yeah. Paul Coglan. So he took the wickets yesterday of Jones and Hose in that quick succession. Scores on 69 and 75. And he'll be bowling to Jake Libby who is on 56. He feels your hopes rest with him at the moment, and he stretches for this one, steers it between two 
Field is on the offside and the ball will beat both of them down to the boundary. And four more to the total, four more to, to Libby, who goes into the 60s, the score to 124 for six. Did stretch for that one a little bit. Yeah. It's wide outside the off stump. Just uh, first ball up, just looking at it again here. Got his foot forward and then, yeah, just ended up playing it on one foot. But uh, picked up four. Coglin. Right arm over. Ball's outside the off stump. And Libby this time has nothing to do with it. Goes for a little walk. Prodding, pitch prodding. It's a good scattering of spectators in the ground. As I say, quite still. Not not many people walking around. Have everything in front of you. In uh, in terms of where we're sitting, and uh, as far as the spectators are concerned, no obstructions in their way. Really good view of. The pitch in the outfield. There's Coglin. Bowls from the railway end. Outside off stump. So nothing to do. Libby has nothing to do with it. Let's it pass through. There's an ambulance. Goes up the Chester Road, way to our right. You probably here in the background. 124 for six it remains. We're uh, just coming up to the end of the first hour's play. Coglin wearing 23. Balls at the stumps. Libby just got a little bit squared up, but played defensively comfortably enough. So having been struck for a boundary off his first ball, Coglin two for 31. And, uh, three dot balls in a row. They will have a drinks break at the end of this over. And the tall Coglin bowls. Outside off stump. Libby again, shoulders, arms. Let's it go through to Ollie Robinson. Robinson taken two catches so far to get rid of Roderick for two and wait for a duck. Two wickets that's good. And they went down today. Holder for 18. Struck a six. That was uh, the last scoring shot he made. Out with the score on 100, 110. And then two runs later, wait out for a duck. Next delivery is on leg stump and just steered to mid wicket by Libby and there's no run. And the end of the over, it's 124 for six. Libby 60, Smith on three. No sign of the drinks coming on, so we're going to have another over. Just a little bit more cloud coming over the ground at the moment. Not threatening, it's all very white. But uh, a couple of degrees warmer than it was yesterday. It was, uh, had a sit outside, uh, my break in commentary, and the uh, sun was quite strong. New over starts, Smith drives, but straight to mid on, and there's no run. Two slips in for Delada. In deep conversation at the moment. We've got a deep backward square, mid wicket, mid on, mid off. Backward point, deep cover, and third man. Next delivery is driven nicely. All the way to the boundary. I think that probably should have been stopped there by Matthew Potts. Was straight at him, hit hard, but uh, he got down somehow, just uh, got away from him. Takes Smith on to seven, 128 for six. Nice looking shot. In comes later again and almost try to repeat the shot there but got an inside edge <laughs> did Smith and the ball just squirted in front of him and later in his follow through did the fielding 
quite quiet around the ground. Those that have made their way here today, sitting studiously. Knowing that the game is evenly poised with Worcestershire trailing by 116. Smith is beaten there, looking to play defensively. Possibly a bit of a way movement. And uh, taken by Robinson. Must have been very close to the edge, that one. Good bowling by Delader. Not for 29 in his sixth over. Two balls left in this over. Encouragement for the bowler from his colleagues. And this is on leg stump. Flicked nicely off his toes by Smith for a couple. Clark's got a bit of ground to make. Moving round from deep backward square to deep mid wicket. And they're through for two more. Smith on to nine from 17 deliveries. One ball left in what is the 41st over of the innings. This in reply to Durham's 244. And the last ball is wide outside the off stump. Smith lets it go through to Robinson and the first hour is complete. We're just over the hour with Worcestershire 130 for six. So they resumed today on 78 for four. They lost Holder for 18, Wait for naught. And they now trail by 114 with Libby on 60 and Smith on nine. A little bit of cloud cover drifting in, but it's... Uh Still quite a lot of blue sky on show. Quite high, hazy sort of strips of cloud. Nice day for cricket today. Coglin bowls from the railway end. And that is kept out off the toe of the bat there by Libby. He's really key, isn't he? You know what? What's the chicken achieve here, Libby? If these two settle down into a nice partnership, then they can chip away at Durham's lead. Worcestershire in a decent position. Two wickets to fall. Holder bowled by Rain on 18 in the 35th over. It's Coughlin bowls again here to Libby. That's left. Goes to the keeper. And then uh, Waite was caught by Robinson, the keeper, off Rain for a six ball duck. So they were 132 behind when that second wicket of the day fell. They now trail by 114. As a the bowler comes in past the umpire and delivers. Libby meets it on the bounce and pushes it to Clark at wide mid off for a single. Good running there. Libby knew exactly where it was going. Bit of ground for the fielder to make to his left and set off immediately calling Smith through. Good backing up as well. Clark was the fielder. Coglin Up to the stumps. Forward comes Smith. Plays that out. Safety towards point. There's a... As you come out the main gate here, there's now a hair... I think it's a hairdresser's on the corner. Building on the corner there. Mm. And I think the last time I came here, that was a pub. Because the phone box that I used to file my hourly updates into the news bulletins is still there. <laughs> so, couldn't get any mobile phone signal in this ground at all. So, you used to have to go out and cross the main road to file reports. This one is left alone and skips through to the keeper. This was uh, pre the days when we did commentary. So it was 2001 when Durham came here that year, uh, August 2001. Well, even before that, this is how long I've uh, been around doing this. Um, I saw David Sales get a double century here. Right. When he was, um, I think he was a teenager. I saw the end of his career at Northampton. So Coglin bowls, 
This is turned away through the leg side. Being chased by Bedding and he dives in and throws it back to the keeper. Two runs to Smith. Yeah, he was um, fielding off just off the edge of the square. There'd been a nasty thunderstorm one night before a T20 and they really shouldn't have gone back on and they did. And he slipped, fielding a ball just off the edge of the square where all the water had been gathering. It had been monsoon like this downpour and uh, did his knee ligaments and that was that. I think his son's playing now, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. That's when you know you've been doing it a long time. <laughs> well... Yeah, I mean, I remember Neil Killeen was already playing for Durham when I started covering them 25 years ago, but, you know, Phil Mustard wasn't the number one keeper then. Then he got into the team. And I've seen him retire now. His son's playing for Durham. Today, there is it starting yeah. a new over. Uh, bowling to Libby. He's defensively onto the leg side, and there's no run. You've got Hayden Mustard playing for Durham now. He signed a rookie contract. Mitchell Colleen playing for Durham. Neil's son. I think when we get to grandkids, that'll be the time to uh, well, pack up and go, won't it? I mean, there's Gray Munions back at Durham now as the bowling coach. And I remember the his the beginning of his career as well. Delayed it. Bowls it outside off stump to Libby, who just watches it go harmlessly through to Robinson. I think I can't wait till we uh, we we swap seats again because I don't know if you can see it from there. I'm I'm sitting where Mel was mm -hmm. and her, she's left a laptop, yeah. and I've never seen a keyboard so cruddy in my it's life. Minging, it's it's, it's it? really upsetting me well. here. Yeah. I think you could you could get a meal out of this keyboard. Yeah. Delayed her again outside way outside off stump point. Might have started wide and went wide. It was a good tumbling stop by uh, Robinson. Behind the stumps. Uh, oops. I just want to try something here. Well, you're going to try anything. No, there's get a, a, little, get there's a, a little noise that's annoying. All oh, right, right. I thought you were going to get a pressure washer on this keyboard. If the, <laughs> I think sometimes if the machine we use to commentate on is too close to other bits of uh, electric equipment. Next ball again outside off stump. Certainly got the uh, the slips throwing their arms in the air there to indicate that was close to the off stump. Did you move that laptop because it was upsetting me or do you feel it was upsetting no, me? No, uh, I <laughs> think the laptop was the cause of the noise. <laughs> and now the noise has stopped because I've moved the laptop. Well, maybe she can even get a signal to it. I'll have to have a word with her at yeah. lunchtime. Right-handed Libby waits again. Thought about cutting the ball that was outside, I think. Seems to be uh, a plan that Delader has got here, just trying to get him outside the off stump. And you could see that Libby was thinking about having, trying to cut that one. So almost fell into the trap, if that's what it is. He's still there on 61, though. 133 for six. But one ball left in the over. Run rate at the moment, 3.11. As Libby... This time does have to play the ball that was on the stumps. Played it comfortably off the front foot. Back to the bowler. And the end of the over. Libby remains on 61. His partner Smith is on 11. And Worcestershire trail by 111 on 133 for six. There's some, can you hear that? There's something, isn't there? I don't know what it is. I, I, I was looking at Mel's laptop earlier and wondered why she'd smeared bacon fat all over <laughs> the screen today. But it's a strange one. Here's uh, Coglan bowling from the railway end. This is defended by Smith, but just pushes out the covers. See, the, the real. You know, tell you how it what? offends me because I've got a shaving, br shaving yeah. uh, brush that I keep for, for mine and flick. Oh, my life. The scene of crimes officers could do their training. <laughs> Look at the fingerprints on that. They could do their training on that, couldn't they? <laughs> Coglin up to the crease and bowls. Smith drives. Clark dives down and stops it at mid off. Dot ball. If you want to send an email, we are cricket at yahoo.co.uk. Well, she walked in this morning eat eating a bacon roll, yeah. didn't she? And I think she might. She either cooked it on there or just. <laughs> 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 Laptop. <laughs> <laughs> 
Lap- <laughs> laptop cooking. <laughs> That'll be on the BBC before you know it. You have Jamie Oliver flogging them, won't you? <laughs> In comes. Coleman oh. edged. Oh, and put down. Put down at slip. That's a bad drop, I think. I think that's Scott Borthwick who dropped that. Let's Went quickly, but it straight to him. Yeah, it was. So Smith dropped on 11. That first slip by Borthwick off Coglin. Got to make it count now, Smith. It's had a life. Coglin in again, balls. And Smith plays this to rain at mid on no run there. Eric Bowers says, How are you, man? Finally able to listen after two and a half matches of radio silence. Fully endorse your comments regarding Leighton James. From Aaron, uh, from Eric the Stanmore Mackham. Isn't he one of the early ones that wore white football boots? We oh, might have done. Coglin balls. This is played down towards third man. I think that's Lee's down there fielding. One run. Because he played at Derby, didn't he? Played at Derby. Um, played hundreds of matches for Burnley. Was at Sunderland for 57 games. So that must have been two seasons worth then, wasn't it? I think. It was Alan Hinton, I think, had the first white football boots back in the 70s for Derby. I'm sure Leighton James did. Coglin balls to Libby and he's left it and he's bowled him. Well, that was a mistake and a half. Why did he leave that? The camera's bouncing out. The, the screen's gone a bit strange here, but it's jigging about. But uh, what a big wicket for Durham. He didn't offer a shot. I think I can only imagine it just got a little bit of late movement because did it take the top of the off stump? Yeah, he looks so comfortable. You're seeing a replay here. From side it's on. in position. That hit the leg stump, didn't it? I, think I that don't know. We were watching side on. Interesting to see it from face on. Or head on. Good round of applause for 61, but I think he'd be devastated to uh, have got out in that fashion. And that does... Now expose the tail. Still some batting to come, but it was Libby holding it all together. Replays at the moment from side on, and if there's an issue with the camera behind the the stumps or not. But uh, at 134 for seven here on the BBC, Worcestershire trailing by 110, and Durham didn't have to need that. Yeah, it looks a, a long way off, 110 now. Here we see it uh, head on. Well, he's got his stumps covered, hasn't yeah. he? Yeah. That uh, must have been some v difficult to see from, from our screen, but it must have been extremely late movement because he covered the stumps. Josh One. Baker, the new man. Another wicket for Coglan, though. So, new overstarts. It's delayed it outside the off stump. Smith watches it go through to Robinson. So, it's been a good morning so far for Durham. That wicket fell last ball of the 44th over. So, eight overs they were together, Libby and Smith. And they put on 22. That's uh, not looking good for Worcestershire here, although they will pick up a single here. Nice drive outside the off stump by Smith. Down to deep cover, picks up one. He's on 13 now, Josh Baker. Man that can certainly bat. And from a Worcestershire point of view, they need him to here. The batting to come 
It's Joe Leach and Adam Finch. And they do bat, they bat all the way down. Well, Leach, can, do. Leach knows what he's doing, isn't yeah. it? But of course they're under a bit of pressure now with the uh, the deficit still in three figures. Delayed her into Baker. It's a, a thick outside edge and to backward point where it's fielded by David Beddingham in the wide brim sun hat. Sun just trying to break through again at the moment. It uh, just left us for a while. But trying to break through right over the ground. But a very pleasant day here in Kidderminster. It's to later from the pavilion end. Finds thick outside edge again from Baker. He'll pick up a couple as Beddingham does the fielding. Doug the full Mackham has emailed. He says, uh, good morning, Marty and friends. What are the devices on the umpire's jackets? Well, they're wearing cameras, but they're... It's more. It's not for CCTV purposes. In that somebody might say something to them. They were doing it, I think, last year as well. It's a ball tracking um, system they're using. Baker tall, right-handed. Oh, Ooh. he's bowled off the helmet. It might have been there. It certainly got up. And he totally lost sight of the ball there, didn't he? I think it came up and might have come down off off the grill. But uh, it's another wicket. Baker has gone for two. Well, that was a quick delivery from Delader there, and I think it's taken him by surprise. See what this hit. It did look as if it reared up. Yeah, it's it, come off the grill, hasn't it? Yeah. He's turned his back on it, and it's, it's hit his helmet. And as I was saying, he's a, he's a tall man, and that just... Probably the first one that we've seen rear up today. And it's another wicket. Delayed has taken it. And now Worcestershire, well, if they weren't in trouble before, they are now 137 for eight. Baker out for two. Don't often see a ball deflecting off the helmet and hitting the stumps. It's a rapid delivery, wasn't it? Yeah. He's just looking at him there. He's... Seems OK as, he, as he's made his way up, out or off the field. Gone into the uh, pavilion. Jack Leach is the new batter. Very experienced. His benefit year. Don't, uh, these days, doesn't seem to hang about Joe Leach. He looks to get on with things. But this is an occasion where you would feel that it's a matter of grinding out as many runs as they can to... Uh, Eat into that deficit. One, three, seven for eight. With Finch to come. At 20 past 12. Every possibility Durham could be batting again before lunch. Again, a right-hander. Joe Leach batting in a sleeveless sweater. Delayed up. Beats him outside the off stump. Well, actually, he was playing from in front of the stumps there was Leach. I think, it, again, might have been a bit of a way movement. And it's suddenly looking a very different uh, game to uh, the way it did in the first 30 minutes. End of the over, 137 for eight, with Smith on 13. Leach faced just one ball on naught. Deficit 107 when that wicket fell. So, uh, bowling-wise, from a Durham perspective... Rain, three for 37 from 15 overs. Six of them maidens. Potts, one for 31 from 13 overs, two maidens. Delader, one for 34 from eight, a maiden for him. And Coglin, three for 35 from nine overs, one maiden. Here is Coglin down the hill from the railway end. Comes in and bowls. Ball uh, played back up to him by Smith, who's on 13. No run there. Leach at the non-striker's end. Uh, words of encouragement being shouted for Coglin there by Mr. Gray Munions, who's sitting down in front of the advertising hoarding just to our right, next to the uh, sight screen. And uh, Smith looks to pull this one through the leg side. It's uh, looped up in the air off the thigh pad. And the keeper's chased it all the way across towards a, a deep square leg position to field it. 
In fact, there must have been a bit of bat in that. He's flicked it onto, onto his uh, thigh pad off the inside edge there. Melinda's come back with some sandpaper to clean the screen of her laptop. <laughs> <laughs> she might need a pressure washer as well. Uh, Coglin again then. In the sunshine at Kidderminster. He bowls. Oh, that nearly sneaks through. Leach kept that very late there. He got an inside edge under the pad. Stay quite low. Yeah, well his last two overs seen one that, that reared up and then yeah. that one kept a little bit low. This Hurried him as well, uh, didn't it? This game's advancing nicely, isn't it? Yeah. I would say, after the turgidity of the last two weeks, with thousands and thousands of runs and no wickets. Coglin to Leach. Leach clips that down towards third man in front of the, uh, the bar area. Lees fields at one run. Played that very late, didn't he? Seemed to have time there. Kept it tight, the bowlers, haven't they? Yep. Wouldn't have been the odd boundary. The one six from Holder that I don't think he really got a hold of. But uh, they've had this plant bowling a lot outside the off stump. Coglin bowls. Leach plays this into the covers. Two pots, no run there. We'll bring Mel back in in a sec. I'll jump off and then uh, she can come back in at the end of this over. Wickets have been spread around, haven't they? Delayed is now in on the act. Three for Rayner. Three for Coglin. Potts got one. Coglin in. And this is off down towards third man again. But that's gone for four, hasn't it? Yeah, again, played it late and uh, and fine. There is a third man down there, but he's quite wide. Uh, he was always going to beat him because he just ambled across. Didn't try and cut that one off. So much needed runs for Worcestershire there. Uh, trail by 101 now with the score 148 for eight. Leach. On one, and he'll have strike at the start of the new over. Should be delayed her again. Fresh from uh, getting rid of Baker with his last delivery. Very strange dismissal, that one. Delayed her in from the pavilion end. Steered onto the leg side by Leach. And there's no run. Two slips in for delayed her. Who's got 27 on the back of his shirt? But next delivery is played off the front foot by Leach. And there's no run, played onto the leg side. Still sun shining brightly. About as pleasant conditions as you could actually get, where it's uh, pleasantly warm without being too hot. Sun shining. Delayed a bowls to Leach, who uh, picked his spot perfectly through extra cover there. Beat the diving pots and uh, the ball racing away, beating two fielders to the boundary and four more runs. And that takes the deficit down to two figures now. 97 is the deficit. And Leach is second boundary, I think that is. 147 for eight. Leach, in fact, is his first boundary because he's only on five. Smith is on 18. Delayder runs towards us. Leach turns this to mid wicket, to mid on, and there's no run. Sorry, I'm, I am almost there. Uh, I'm just just fiddling with the 
the buttons and the, <laughs> the plugs and uh, trying to get myself some power and elbowing me. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> I know, I know you've come in anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, usually they say you hear me before you see me. I, I get that I think a lot. there's a bit of both there. <laughs> You're here. <laughs> Next delivery is played uppishly by Leach. Flicked away down to Deep Square Leg for a single. I have to say, I'll come clean because what's clean than your laptop is. We were commenting <laughs> while you were away. I don't think I've ever seen a laptop with a screen A so dirty, but a keyboard... A keyboard. I, there's a three-course meal in there. Uh, it's uh, yeah. I, I'm not so good with maintenance. Every time I go that's back, that's not maintenance. <laughs> every time I go home, my mum has an absolute fit and spends an hour cleaning it. Next delivery. See Smith on his toes driving up to mid off. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's not good, is it? It's quite dirty. I haven't really noticed it. But yeah, you're right. Anyway, we've done your laptop to death now. It's the end of the over. It's uh, We're just coming up to 30 minutes to go to lunch. It's 148 for eight with Smith on 18, Leach on five and Worcestershire Trail by 96. Yeah, things have changed a little bit yeah. since uh, since I was last on. So it's wickets falling. Baz Delita getting some incredible bounce out of this pitch. Were you outside? Did you actually see it as it happened? It was from our angle, looks looked, looked, looked so it reared up, caught him on the on the grill. Yeah, that's certainly how it looked. At, at I mean, banged it in short. As in comes the leader again. This ball just in the end played out to the leg side by Leach. And he's tall as well, Baker. So it really did, yeah. you know, come up at him off. It looks as though it came off a length as well. Yeah. well. These wickets have fallen this morning where the batsmen seemed quite comfortable, didn't they? And they just the wickets seemed to come from from nowhere. <laughs> we just, uh, just got Ryan Campbell, the Durham coach, walking past saying hello. Next ball in. Just flicked to mid-wicket by Leach. No run. Of course, uh, having that bond with the, the Durham coach, I, I actually met him for the first time last week, Ryan Campbell. But uh, both being born in Australia, we had a, a lot in common, a lot to catch up on. But it's very interesting uh, chatting to him about the challenges and the, that he's taken on in Durham. Up there with Marcus North, of course. So he's a real Australian influence up there, isn't there? As Coughlin, Coughlin it is. I said to leader before, but it is Coughlin, of course. Runs in and that's just punched up to mid off. No run by Leach. Uh, yeah, so it was very, very interesting to chat with him. I'm not sure if Marcus North is down here uh, this week. He was hoping to, I think. So he'll, he'll feel a difference in the temperature then up there. <laughs> well, they're both from Perth, aren't they? Yeah. Both Perth boys. Uh, Coglin is in over the wicket and oh got some life out of that one as well and Leach ducking underneath that one so there is a bit of life in this Kidderminster pitch yes uh, both from from WA and of course uh, Ryan Campbell then having spent the time in Hong Kong playing playing for Hong Kong and then he was at returned to international cricket at the age of think, 44 for Hong Kong. In comes Coglin, just defended straight back to the bowler, picks it up with his left hand. Hey, age of 44, returning to international cricket when he made his debut for Hong Kong, and that was against Zimbabwe in the uh, T20 World Cup at Nagpur in 2016. Uh, so that was quite amazing. He's got a, a Chinese grandmother and um, settled in Hong Kong with his family. And it's quite amazing. In comes Coughlin. Oh, and that's got an inside edge. It's just squirted out. He did a full pirouette leech in trying to see where that ball went. And then Smith was halfway down the pitch, had to get back in his crease quite quickly. So even though that was a maiden over from Coughlin, it seemed like a bit happened. 148 for eight. Ben Rain coming back into the attack at the pavilion end. So uh, we're trying to throw everything at these uh, Worcestershire tail enders. 
You mentioned Hong Kong. I went over. I went a few times. I went in the 80s, and it was just an amazing place. <laughs> just for someone that lived in the sticks like I have, you know, very, very quiet and sheltered life, and then you, you're exposed to the madness of Hong Kong. It was uh, an, an amazing experience going over there. Yeah, I've only been there once. Stopped over on the the usual trek between England and Australia. And, uh, and just that one time, I'd, I'd love to go to the cricket ground there because it looks absolutely incredible. Wonderful cricket ground in Hong Kong. I'm making a, a real schoolboy error, not knowing what to expect over there. And <laughs> after this ball from Rain into Smith, plays it onto the leg side and there's no run. Um, used to have a number one haircut in those days and I had one just before we left, went over there. Not knowing about the strength of the sun, I mean, how naive can you be? <laughs> and just getting a scorched head on oh. day one. That sounds like what often happens to almost every English or Irish or Scottish or Welsh person I know who comes to Australia. And I, keep, I always tell yeah. them, sunscreen and cover up at the beach. Yep. They don't listen. No. Next, Lurie just nips the edge, drops short of second slip. Might have taken him in the face, bounced up at him. But uh, no harm done to the batter, but the fielder, see who that is there. It's, it's Borthwick. It's Borthwick, yeah. He's he's still down. I think he might have just bounced up and and clipped his clipped his chin. Yeah, he's actually just put his hand up to just next to his his left eye. So might have just got him on the side of the yeah. of the head there, left side of the head. He's up on his feet now, but yeah, he's given the thumbs up. He's he's okay. But uh, Bowl will be happy. He's. He's taken the edge early and has come back over. 148 for eight. Smith is on 18. Rain. Balls. Rain, sorry. Uh, outside the off stump. And there's no run. Yes, with my uh, Irish heritage, mm. I have to have to be very wary of the sun. Well, my, my last name is Farrell, so <laughs> that, that gives away my heritage. Yeah. On my dad's side, um, as you can imagine. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, you always tell them, do this, do that. And nope. They come back like a lobster on their first day, <laughs> and then they spend the next week of their holiday shedding skin like a snake. <laughs> next delivery is dri driven off a, a thick outside edge to point, and there's no run. So two slips, point, extra cover, mid-off, mid-on, mid-wicket, and a deep square leg. I would imagine if we got a... No, there's no third man. It's been really good today, Rain. The two wickets to just make things happen. First wicket of the season for him. And again, and this is flicked off his uh, pads by Smith, and that'll go down to fine leg for four runs. We were almost in the game there. That's gone to about just... Two metres wide of our tent. I thought we might have had a chance. Yeah, just strayed. I think it's the first time we've seen a bowler stray down the leg side today. Mm. And uh, nicely flicked away. Went very quickly. And just in front of our commentary point, which, as you say, is down at fine leg. Which, uh, I mean, as, as I was saying before, the club have done so well to, to get everything here so that we can, we can commentate today. Um, but at fine legs, not the, not the greatest commentary point. More runs here, or singular, more run. Another run, <laughs> which is flicked down to deep square leg. And that's the end of Reigns' comeback over. He's taken three for 42 from 16 overs. The uh, boundary brought the Worcestershire 150 up. 153 for eight. Smith on 23. Leach on four. And they now trail by 91. And uh, with Jake Libby going earlier, you see now the importance of, of Nathan Smith, who batted so well last week for not just having him to bolster this lower order 
Uh, Worcestershire won't want to <laughs> rely on him too often in this position, but he's doing well so far. On strike now as in comes Coglin. He's on the back foot with a sharp delivery, but just fended that straight back into the ground. He got on top of it really well. No run. Yeah, they'll, uh, I think, enjoy their lunch, the Durham players. Play resuming on 78 for four, and they've, so far, we're still 20 minutes to go, taken four wickets in this session. In comes Coglam. He's over the wicket, and again, just up on his toes and on top of the ball is Smith. This time, a bowler taking a, making a tumbling stop. The ball just drops in front of him. Yeah, so na it's funny, Nathan Smith has been around playing first class cricket since 2016 for Otago. It's, it's play, made his debut for them. And probably a lot of people haven't heard of him. On strike now, as in comes Coglin. It's just pushed out to mid off no run. And I mentioned how well he did in the Plunkett Shield, to Shield top wicket taker. Helped his side to to victory in the final with a half century unbeaten and six wickets as well. And uh, I think he's just a, it's a really canny signing. It's not like he's a massive name. He's doing a job at the moment and he pulls that ball quickly around the corner. It goes down to the deep fine leg boundary and fielder picks it up keeps it to just one I think more often than not you get value for money with your, your New Zealand overseas players when they, they play in the championship as Worcester should go back a long way with them Glenn Turner, John Parker used to open the batting together well, he certainly been value for them. Took 10 wickets in his first two matches. It's that half century, but it's Leach on strike now. And he just gently prods that one into the covers. No run. Leach, oh, in my notes, I, I, I wrote down that, that Leach is the heart and soul of the club. Yes. And uh, I met him for the first time last year when I met a few of the Worcestershire players up in uh, in Leeds, was up there for the last game, and uh, really good chat with him about all the stuff he was planning this year. As Coglin is in, it's a full ball. It's just defended past the bowler, and that will be the end of the over with a dot ball. Just one single coming from it, and it's 154 for eight with Smith it's moving along nicely to 24 now. Leach on six. Yes, his testimonial year. Got a lot of things happening. Yeah, he's, he's a very understated person. Um, speaks well. He's always polite. He's all, you know, when you go and do interviews or ask for interviews, he's always, you know, he'll always do one. Um, and he's the kind of player you would feel that is almost embarrassed by having a, a benefit year. Um, he's off strike at the moment. Smith runs the ball down to backward point and they'll pick up one um, he'll do it and he'll be very grateful but yeah, almost embarrassed to, to do it but he's he's been a good servant and um, I would imagine there's been many occasion when he's been playing when he's not fully fit a real workhorse um, but a lot of skill as well taken a lot of wickets scored good runs um, very much what county cricket is about Mm -hmm. He's, He's up on strike now, probably just giving him the kiss of death. <laughs> and uh, no, within the crease, plays defensively into the offside, no run. You're not that powerful, I hate to break it to you. <laughs> You're not that powerful. Well, it's good, good to see that he, uh, I mean, he's been making contributions both with bat and ball yeah. so far this year in the first division because he had a knee operation in January, I believe. So. That seems to have, have gone quite well. Yeah, he had a little spell years, quite some time ago now when the pinch hitters came came in uh, and they used to, in limited overs, game, you know, play play high up the order. Just flick that one away. Square on the leg side. We'll pick up one. Think about two. There's a bit of a miscommunication between uh, the two there. In the end, no harm done. 
And one more to the total. And the deficit is down into the 80s. 88. I think it's 88. It's very difficult to see the screen and uh, with the sun <laughs> shining on it. 156 for 8. Yeah, it's 88. Smith is on 25. Yeah, that's it. It's just hard to see my laptop screen because of the, <laughs> the sunlight, not because it's absolutely <laughs> The sunlight filthy. does your screen even more, <laughs> e even less of a favour. <laughs> I should be having nightmares tonight. <laughs> Next delivery, outside the off stump. Tumbling take by Robinson, who's been pretty tidy behind the stumps. Uh, Robinson, who made 55 in the Durham first innings. Caught behind off the bowling of Matthew Waite. Rain, three for 44. Just wanted to tweak the field a little bit. There's been too much of that this morning. They've uh, just got on with things rather than uh, there's been no... Dilly dallying, got on with things quite quickly. Hasn't been a drinks break. Next delivery just uh, moves away from Smith and playing down the wrong line there and taken by Robinson. No harm done from a Worcestershire point of view. It's been a bit of a grind for them this morning. Yeah, it's been also been a, quite a good battle between Smith and, and Rain as well since Rain came back into the attack. Again, it's good value, isn't it? He scored runs in the in the last match. Smith, he's taking wickets. Twenty five not out today. Yeah, he took uh, he took three for forty nine against Warwickshire. In place defensively here into the offside, and there's no run. End of the over, one hundred and fifty six for eight. So Worcestershire trailing by eighty eight. Smith on twenty five. Leach on seven. And they made that fifty eight, and took seven wickets against. Not four for 29 in the second innings, three for 57 in the first. So, boy, he's uh, really made a contribution, a really impressive one, Nathan Smith. And this innings that he's playing here now could be incredibly important for Worcestershire's hopes. Well, they'll desperately what these two want to see it through to lunch, won't they? 15 minutes to go. Pot's coming on at the railway end. So... Durham throwing everything at them in these uh, remaining minutes. And uh, it's, it's getting a bit warmer here now. I may be able to take off one of my three <laughs> remaining layers. I've got a long sleeve t-shirt, a short sleeve t-shirt. I've got a fleece. I've got my big jacket already, but uh, I might, I might be able to go down to two layers. First ball slapped straight to diving fielder at point. So, no run. First it's, up. Uh, it's so nice to be sat with a bit of sun and your coat off. Of one of the last football matches I did was about six weeks ago. You're there in a great big park of scarf gloves and I was froze. Waiting for a manager to come out and do, do an interview afterwards. And it's just, it is grim midwinter. <laughs> Not just midwinter. Here is Potts again. Leach waits and just tries to flick that one square. He's taken it. It's taken it. He has taken it. A catch. A diving one in the end. And that's the end of Leach. He's gone for seven. Worcestershire's woes continue. It's been a tough morning for them here at Kidderminster. I think it was Beddingham, wasn't it, that uh, th threw himself to his right? I thought it had beaten him. Uh, <laughs> difficult from our angle to, to see it, but uh, and then it was a almost delayed reaction. Well, it was. He just tried to flick it. I thought it was a diving stop, to be honest, at first. And uh, couldn't quite make out if the ball had got past him. And in the end, it was, it was really from the celebrations from the teammates. Uh, but that's a ninth wicket to fall for Worcestershire. Great work by Beddingham in the end. And just went for a wristy flick it was one-handed take in the end to be fair that's an absolute screamer for Beddingham so. yeah it really was I, I was looking to I thought he dived and the ball had beaten him was going to the boundary it was I'm so glad it wasn't just me <laughs> <laughs> because it wasn't it, it, there was a delayed reaction yeah it, it, was, it took sort of a couple of seconds um, before the teammates went up, so I don't think they'd even realised that he'd 
he'd taken it as cleanly as he did. But it was brilliant work. He just flung himself to his right and got one mitt out there. So the ninth wicket falling with Worcestershire still an awful way, a long way away from that first inning total of 244. Yeah, partnership of 19 between Leach and Smith. So Adam Finch is the last batter in. He's on strike as Potts runs in. It's a full one. He jams his bat down. It goes out to point. And it won't get a run. So their chances of staying in, they would have survived 12 minutes. Now 90 o 98 overs in the day today, I am told. Yeah, he can bat, can Finch. Saw him... Uh Heroic final over to hitting, I think it might have been three sixes last season to win a, a one-day game. Well, he's, he's got a top score in uh, first-class cricket of 33 not out. I would dearly love him to do something like that today. Here is Potts, and it's a, just a gentle little nudge into the onside to mid-wicket. No run. The 33, does it say who it was against? It might have been last, was it last season? No, he had a, a, a yeah. partnership at the, Finch. yeah. I see. I'm Nots in, in 2022. Right. Knots in 2022, hey. Got 22 against Durham in 2022. Okay, he formed it. Also did very well against Durham in 2022. What can he do now? He just drives straight to mid-off. Uh, next delivery it was a full one from Potts. It's taken two wickets now for 31. It's been a good all-round bowling performance from Durham. Potts has been incisive. Rain's been a real handful. Baz the leader managed to extract some life out of this pitch. So I probably feel much better than they did a week ago when they were toiling hard for no reward at Edgebaston. Here is Potts. Pushes forward, does Finch, and they will take a single. And that is the last ball of the over. So it means that Finch is going to remain on strike, which will suit Durham just fine. 157 for nine. Uh, Smith on 25 and Finch on 1. So what have we got? 10 minutes, mm. uh, 98 overs. Is lunch still at 1 o'clock? Well, that's actually a good question. I think it was advertised still at 1, yeah. but I don't know how many overs have we had. Oh, yeah, it could be an extra half hour. Oh, yeah, uh, half hour. <laughs> well, yeah. oh gosh, of course <laughs> they could. Right, strap in, folks. <laughs> They might just hang around and keep playing until this final wicket falls. Well, it's been a good morning for Durham, hasn't it? Five wickets they've taken so far. And new over starts with Rain bowling to Finch, who just turns it off his uh, pads <laughs> down to fine leg. It's fielded by Jones. And they're through for two runs. Every uh, every run is, is vital at the moment. Yep, no point farming the strike. Probably at this point, he actually played that quite well. I mean, he strayed a little bit leg sidey, so it was there on offer, but played it well. Jones, the 12th man there. I don't know who he's on for. So Finch is on three now. Keeps the strike. Tall man, right-handed. Gets in line. Plays up to mid on, all along the ground, and there's no run. One five nine for nine, trailing by eighty five. He's tall, isn't he? Yeah. I'm not sure exactly how tall he is, but he's not. He's not Jason Holder tall, but he's probably six four. Uh, Looks pretty not solid. Far off. Nice orthodox stance. As Rain bowls short of a length, and uh, just took the outside that edge there and all along the ground down to third man. Finch picks up another run. 
159 for nine. Yes, that's good work from Finch. He's got also got Smith back on yeah. strike. And he's scored a couple of scoring three runs so far in the over. Yeah, my my colleague Dave Bradley is uh, wondering around. Just gave me a bit of paper saying the last player who's the last player to play first class cricket for Durham and Worcestershire. I thought it might have been Phil Weston, but he James Brinkley as uh, he's just come back with. He came back with question mark. He played in the game here for Durham in 2001. Played here in 2001, James Brinkley. For Durham. For Durham. There you go. 20, yeah. 22, 23 years ago. You're beyond, you're beyond my realm of research there, <laughs> I've got to tell you. <laughs> well, that's why I love working with the, all the commentators who know this county game inside out. Rain in and driven defensively up to mid on by Finch and there's no run. Yeah, Rain got the sun uh, reflecting off, off his head, shining brightly. Good stint from him so far. Three for 48. He's got one ball left in his 18th over. I actually like it when, when players... Uh, are a little sparse in the hair department because it makes them easier to spot. <laughs> Next delivery driven again for a single. Uh, mid, -off, mid off was back and that allowed Finch to drive all along the ground and hit it too hard. Pick up a comfortable single. So the end of the over, 162 for nine. Smith has scored 26 from 40 deliveries and Finch is on five. Mm. Yes, the great thing about uh, the, for me, being able to go around the different grounds and and with the different commentators is that I always learn so much because everyone has so much ingrained knowledge from from their watching over the years, seeing players come through, make their debuts all the way. Oh, I said it in the Australian way, debut. <laughs> 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 right, time for some more pots. He's in. And the ball just pushed back to mid wicket by Finch. I so. think what I what I struggle with is just thinking of James Brinkley there and saw him come through as a young player at, at Worcestershire and then go up to Durham and that was twenty three years ago that, that he played in that game. Scotland as well. Yeah, Scotland, yeah. Good call. And Potts, he's in from the railway end again. He gets some bounce out of this. And Finch, who is a tall man, he managed to get basically down on one knee to get underneath that ball. So nose and toes stuff. Is it for the tail enders? What's, What's going happening? on here? The umpire Smith signaled to the pavilion. Did he get, did they clip him on the helmet? So we've got to go through the protocol. So perhaps it clipped the helmet and they've got to go through the uh, concussion protocols. Because there, there was a half appeal from behind. So it must have, yeah, it did uh, it. I think just it Just clipped the helmet. Just, just clipped the helmet, perhaps. Well, he did. He was literally on one knee uh, when he tried to get under that ball. He is a tall man. Just trying to see how many overs we've had today. It was 26 when they started. What are we on now? 53.2. So, yeah, be a, yeah, I've kept up with a decent decent over rate this morning. This will just slow it down a little bit. Yeah, the uh, medical staff on at the moment, just asking the you see the replay questions. now. So Potts put everything into that one. He ducked down and it was a... Glancing blow, wasn't it? It just, just brushed as it as it went past. Uh, it looks like he's okay. The medico's happy with the responses. I've always wanted to know exactly what questions they ask. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose it depends on the state of the game, doesn't it? We, we, do we want them in, or do we want yeah, in a, in a, in a one-day game? Actually, we could do with someone that can better strike rate. Here's Potts again, and again, it's a short ball. He's not letting up. Finch ducks under it, this time more successfully. 
I think Finch might remember that one. He's been hitting the head and then he bounced him next delivery. Mm -hmm. Right, well, we'll make a note of that one. <laughs> and see what he dishes out when Worcestershire come to bowl later. Could be quite soon. Just one wicket remaining. Here's Potts is in, and this time it's a length ball that's played out to mid wicket, no run. Played with a very straight bat on that occasion. Just how much has he been discomforted from that, the tail ender? I think the lunch trolley's coming round. Oh, oh, way to our left. It's exciting, the lunch <laughs> trolley is coming around. What 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 do you uh, what do you get for lunch at Kidderminster? Here's here's Potts uh, again, just defended with a very straight bat by Finch to the leg side. No rum. I don't know. I wasn't here yesterday. Actually, it's normally very good at uh, at New Road. Get something hot. We're very spoiled, aren't we? <laughs> they've got it. I was very happy to discover they've actually got like. A proper coffee pot, you know, the, yeah. the two, I don't know even what you call them, the, the one where you have two jugs and one sits on the heater on top and the other one below. So that's me sorted. Pot's in again, final ball of his over and it's just clipped down to mid on by Finch. He'll take the single and I'd say Durham will be quite happy with that because they want to keep pummeling Finch and it's just that one off the over. So there's a lunch trolley. If you're watching the stream, you can see it on there. It's disappearing into the press tent. 163 for nine it is now with Smith on 26, Finch on six, being uh, really peppered with a fair bit of short stuff. So see if they can remove him. Yeah, uh, good facilities. No biscuits, I notice, which is quite good because I tend to dig into those. Oh, no, there are biscuits. Oh, I miss those. No, so so what they do here, I'll tell you what they do after you describe this ball. Rain starts a new over and it's uh, tickled down to fine leg. Won't get to the boundary, being chased by Jones and they'll come through for two. Are they hidden? Yeah, basically. <laughs> I, I was I was told that um, apparently so they, they, they bring them out if people ask for them uh, because otherwise they will just disappear people like me i mean <laughs> although it does seem to to go against the purpose of biscuits <laughs> not to eat them <laughs> oh well if people just, well, what are you saving them for no i, I do understand it's a bit of rationing yeah. basically a bit of rationing so um if you like i'll go and i'll go and ask a gentleman and find some for you <laughs> well i it's quite fortuitous you being here because the next ball is driven up to mid-off and there's no run. I was trying to rack my brains the other day when I was in Oz. Mm. Well, not when I was in Oz. They're equivalent to the penguin. What's it called? Tim Tams. Tim Tams. Yeah, and they're oh, far superior. Very much. They're far It superior. grieves me to say it. Yeah. But they are far superior. People try to tell me <laughs> no. And uh, did, did, you do, did you do the Tim Tam suck? No. Or the Tim Tam slam? No. Okay, because I'm sure you can do this for the penguin. Rain into Finch again, plays defensively up to mid on, no run. So what you do is is, is it, it's pretty much the same biscuit, just with yeah. slightly different chocolate. But you you bite just the end off each one, so it exposes the the cream chocolate inside, and then you stick one end into your tea or coffee. And you have you suck it through; it becomes a straw. But then you've got to shovel it in your mouth before it collapses. And it's known as the Tim Tam Sam or the Tim Tam Suck. So I'm sure you could do it with a penguin. <laughs> Next delivery is pulled. Nice looking shot by Finch, straight down to Jones, who's at uh, deep backward square. Good looking shot that. Got hold of it, but straight to the fielder. Yeah, just kept it down nicely. Played very easily. Tim Tams, that's it. I shall sleep better tonight <laughs> remembering that. So it's funny you talk about biscuits because we were talking about, you know, the ones that, that go first at Edgebaston. So the custard creams go first. Yeah. And then the, the bourbon, bo bourbon? Bourbon? Bourbon. 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 I'd spell like bourbon. There's no alcohol in it, <laughs> unfortunately. 
Smith leaves the next ball outside off stump. Yeah, so you see which ones. And the ones that are clearly... I, I just... I'm not a big biscuit fan, but I, I always watch to see which ones go first. And the poor old digestives are always neglected. Uh. But when I first came to this country, I saw, I saw these digestive biscuits and I actually thought they were like a, a digestion aid. <laughs> like that, that, there were special ingredients in it that helped you digest your food. Uh. So I, I think there's a naming problem. <laughs> Next delivery, it's Smith on his toes, bringing it to wide mid-off, and there's no run. End of the over, 166 for nine, with Finch on nine, Smith on 26, Worcestershire trail by 78. Because, I mean, nobody... I, I, I think that that's the issue, because people aren't going to flock to to a, a piece of food that that is named after or related to yeah. the, the body's internal workings. <laughs> As, you know... The Jeffs is good with butter and cheese. Did a what, sorry? Butter and cheese with a di di digestive. No. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I, like I said, I'm not a big biscuit eater, but I, I actually, I tell you what, I have had a digestive with... Do you know what's really good with? Is, is with a bit of butter and Vegemite. <laughs> Vegemite. And first ball of the new over. Potts is just squeezed out on the onside, no rum. Yeah, with a bit, with a bit of Vegemite, trust me. Do you, you're a fan of Vegemite? No. Oh, or, no. It's fantastic. No. It's but your Tim Tams, your Tim Tams though. Uh, honestly, that's probably the only way that I would enjoy a digestive. In fact, just made me my sister's coming back from ours next week. She lives in uh, Perth. Potts is into Finch. He defends that one well. It's mid on. No wrong. And I might put an order in. For, for some Vegemite. For, no, no, no. For <laughs> Tim Tam, a couple of packets of Tim Tams. Yeah. So meeting her next Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, get, get some of those. Uh, and, and here's a, another controversial one the Violet Crumble. <laughs> have, you, have you had a Violet no, Crumble? No. Get her to pop those in. I'm putting this out there. It's better than a crunchy. <laughs> is it's it? It's honeycomb in chocolate, but. It's, oh, it's, it's got to be good better. to beat a crunchy. Yeah, it's better. I'm telling you. Finch waits and he drives that beautifully all the way past the diving fielder at mid on. Well, that is a fantastic shot from the tail ender who's been pummeled. He's been hit in the head. He's, he's really been under the pump and he responds with as handsome a drive as we've seen all day. I think I'd put that second to the, the, the caress from Holder was a lovely mm. shot, followed by that one as being second best shot of the of the, 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 the day. He's quietly moved on to 13 as Finch. So he's handling things pretty well. 170 for nine now. Next ball's full. And he just taps that one around the corner. And I'll get another single. So... Really handy little innings here from Finch. He hasn't shied away from being on strike. And he's uh, played some nice shots. Taking the pressure off Smith, who is back on strike now with two balls remaining of pots over. And uh, no idea when we're going to be having the break for lunch with just this one wicket remaining. Smith waits as in comes Potts. Oh, he goes for a little bit of innovation. <laughs> he was he was trying to, to ramp that, almost like a reverse ramp. It was an odd-looking shot. Uh, and in the end, it didn't connect. Well, we might have one ball to lunch. We might have 25 minutes, so uh, I'm going to have a little break and Martin Emerson will come in to join you. Well, that could so easily have been the final wicket to fall. In the end, Smith survives. Potts has one ball remaining in this over. Five runs off it so far. And that's all it's going to be is the ball goes straight through. Missed by Smith on that occasion. So five runs off that over. 171 for nine now for Worcestershire in their reply to Durham's 244. 
They would dearly love to at least be able to get up to 200. Just oh, it doesn't really matter what it is. It's just get the deficit to be as small as possible and hope that they have a similar run of wickets as Durham have had here today. Martin is back with me. Ham salad. That was what we had yesterday. <laughs> it's, it's always a good way to open. Yeah. Could open, open your commentary stint. Mm. Ham salad. Here's Rain. Comes in and bowls. And that's off. Does that come off the inside edge under the thigh pad there? It's ball drifts across and away towards square leg. Finch on strike. He, he's actually done really well, Finch, hasn't he? He's been... Uh, after being struck and everything else, he's he's been tested. At the moment, he's managed to stay out there. Played a couple of nice shots along the way. What's Beautiful he on? Drive. 14 from 24 deliveries. And the lead for Durham is 72, which is, uh, I would say, invaluable on this, uh, this ground. Rain balls. Ball played back up towards the mid-off. No run there. Potts collected. This is a tight game. I think every run precious. Yeah, I think Durham will be feeling pretty good at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're feeling very good. Well, I was just doing the maths before I did my one o'clock update, and uh, I made it that Worcestershire lost five for forty-six in seventeen overs. Mm. Yeah, rain was particularly good in that period. Comes in and bowls, and that's driven by Smith. Out towards the cover boundary, Clark slides in and cuts it off in front of the car park area on the far side of the ground. They run two. So that uh, takes the score to 174 for nine here on the BBC. Extra half hour, eight overs to try and finish off this innings, which means a slightly delayed lunch. Because of rain yesterday, they didn't go to lunch until half one anyway. And this is a slightly longer day today. Extra four overs being played today. This is uh, clipped away late by Smith down towards a long leg to Coglin for one. How many overs? Were, sorry, two, extra two overs lost uh, added on today. So 98 overs being played today. You do, of course, lose two for the change of innings unless you go into a natural break like... A Lunch or tea? Well, there's a few more balls being played this way. I'm, I'm going to be a bit nervous if it comes in. I'm hoping you're going to do the fielding. By the way, I'll be, I'll be under the desk. Rain to Finch. That's an edge. It's gone past first slip and away for four. It was wide of the slip cord and I wouldn't what's the point of going under the desk because the ball's probably <laughs> going to hit you under there isn't it because there's no nothing in front of the okay, desk okay that's so. that's a fair point yeah. I, I hadn't really thought that through no. I'm just seeing what l lunch is an omelet oh it's a, it's we've got a vegetarian with us he's having an omelet with salad is he oh that, that looks very nice and uh, finch again Done it. He finds some of the, sometimes he finds the boundary more convincingly than others, but every Two one of them valuable. 18. Rain from the old pavilion end. Finch looks to pull that through the leg side and whacks him on the body somewhere, and he hops around on one leg. That is the end of the over. So 179 for nine, 57 overs gone. Hasn't been a change of the ball or anything today, has there? I, I can't remember one. No, no. They, they looked. They did look at it, it earlier, didn't they? I, I haven't seen them change it. Yeah. But uh, eight runs coming from that last over. This this pair have done a pretty good job. A lot of it has been Finch. He's been on strike for most of the time. In fact, it's not been a case of farming the strike at all by Smith, who we know is a, a very capable batter. But this pair, the last, the last one standing as Potts prepares to continue from the railway end. Starts his running, his distinctive orange soles into Smith. He just lets that one. 
it just dropped down. In fact, he played at it and dropped short of the slips. Lancashire were bowled out of Chelmsford yesterday on day one for 146. Essex today, 172 for one. So they lead by 26. There was quite a bit of rain around there yesterday, so they didn't get a full day in, I don't think. Uh, Warwickshire doing well in Southampton, 442 for eight in their first innings. Potts is in. And this time it's just defended out to mid-off by Smith. No wrong. There was a bit of weather at Canterbury yesterday, so still the first innings of the game in that one. And it's Kent on 192 for five against Surrey after Surrey put them in. Somerset now have a one-run lead at lunch at Taunton against Knotts. They bowled Knotts out for 193. They're now 194 for four. Pots in. And that ball, that ball, has he got he something bit, on it? I don't think he did. And boy, oh. that just, that absolutely swing after a pass shagged the stumps. in. Yeah. Yes. So good work by the keeper to actually get it, but and, uh, Smith didn't know where that one was. Found some real movement very late. In Derby, Leicestershire 305 for three. 78 overs gone there against Derbyshire. Pots in again. Um, this time it's outside the off stump. It's just really making I think Smith uh, this feels like nervous. a matter of, it's a matter of time now doesn't it this yeah. it's he's Smith has just been discombobulated I think by that one jagging in and this time he had a little waft outside the off stump at Lords Middlesex have a lead of 53 in their first innings they're 218 uh, 212 for eight having bowled Yorkshire out for 159 Potts in again. This time it's defended more solidly out to deep square leg and they will jog through for a single. That will keep Finch on strike, one would imagine. Glamorgan all out for 271 in Northampton. Northampton's now 32 for one in reply. And Gloucestershire made 417 at Hove. Sussex now 25 for one. Potts does his slow turn and starts his run up. Finch waits and just lets that one go. So uh, it's the one run coming off it means that Smith will be back on strike. 180 for nine. Now with Smith on 30 and Finch hanging in there on 18. How many overs had gone when we got the one o'clock? Did anybody write that down? No. no. That was clever then, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't write things down. I, I type them on my dirty laptop. Yeah. <laughs> Once you've got a hammer and chisel and you chisel all the dirt <laughs> off that screen, you'll be able to see what it says. <laughs> we, th we say it looks like a scenes of crime. You could get the <laughs> CSI officers to do fingerprint training on that screen alone, couldn't you? I, uh, it's not good. I used to put... I, what I used to do is put a sheet of paper... Uh -huh. uh, an A4 sheet of paper so that when I closed it it didn't put marks on it and uh -huh. then when I stopped doing that I was all over Red Rover change of bowler here past the later into the attack to replace Ben Rain from the old pavilion end and the first ball is flicked away by Smith to deep mid wicket for one uh, the Thunder are playing the Northern Diamonds in Chesley Street in the Rachel Hayhoe Flint Trophy that's a 50 over game Thunder batting 165 for nine Central Sparks, Chloe Brewer, who was with us on commentary yesterday, is playing in that one. They're playing the Blades in Birmingham. Central Sparks, 162 for five. The later up to the stumps, right arm over. Driven by Finch down to Potts at mid-off. No run there. Um, just looking at the full score, can't they? See if she is playing. She got 22. Opened the batting and got 22. Excellent. Big news in the women's game this week. Mm. With announcing uh, the new counties that have been successful in getting a tier one side. Delayed it. 
to Finch. Finch plays the ball back towards the bowler's end. Rain collects it. Sun's just gone in momentarily. Durham, one of the uh, the new franchisees on yes. new, new tier one side. That's what I was uh, just about to say. So it's uh, huge for Durham. Worcestershire didn't, I think it was one of the two counties that didn't apply. So they've got their priorities in other areas at the moment. Delayed it. That's off the pad as Finch looks to go big through the leg side there. And the leg by his signal. The ball ran down to backward square leg. The keeper chased after it and then threw it at the stumps but didn't connect with the, the target. Southern Vibers are playing at Beckenham against the South East Stars. Southern Vibers 211 for five. Western Storm in Cardiff 114 all out. The Sunrisers have just begun their innings. And uh, the big game today, the derby match. Nepal 139 for eight against Hong Kong who are two for none. In Al Amarat. The later in, it's left by Smith. That bounces again before it reaches the keeper as well. I um, was actually over in, well, I, I had to get used to saying Nepal because that's how they said it there. So I find myself saying that, but I was there for two weeks. Over Christmas and New Year, and it was such an incredible experience. They had thousands and thousands of people every match for this club, pro club championship, it yeah. was called. And it really was something else. The later turn by Smith to Coglin for one backward square leg. These are all good runs for Worcestershire's point of view because they're chipping away. Partnership now, 27 I think it is, and 183 for 9, and that also means the deficit is dropping and it is now 61. Oh, when I said if they could get to 200, that seemed like a, a long, long way away Yeah. Uh, at the time, so I went, you know, 156 for 9, but it's... Been really dogged stuff from this pair, particularly from Finch, who really tested with short stuff. Pots in, that's uh, driven, driven nicely through the covers. Fielder running in will make sure it's just one. It's another one to the total, it's another one off the deficit. So, how long can these two? keep this going it'll, it'll start to get to a point where it'll frustrate Durham if they do get to 200 and it's Finch on strike now as Potts is in over the wicket just presses that one into the covers no run he defends with a very straight bat pretty composed so far although he has been ruffled up a little bit right it's thought this is the fifth extra over since we should have gone to lunch so if there's no wicket in this then there'll be three more overs to play if there isn't a wicket before they go off for lunch well, now look at it as a mini victory on a tough morning Worcestershire if they can do that Potts is in and oh there's a big shout this time ah. him on the toe That's and that much. is it he's out so he does break through pots in the end. Finch, who has battled hard, is the last wicket to fall. So Worcestershire all out for 184 pots, taking his third wicket. And it was a fighting effort in the end. Nathan Smith is the last batter remaining, the not out batter, as you can hear the ground staff head out there to start rolling the pitch for Durham's second innings of the match. So it's been a tough run from Worcestershire, but some real fight at the end. Smith undefeated on 33. Finch with a handy contribution of 18, but it was that period where they lost five wickets rapidly this morning uh, from the time that Ben Rain broke through taking the wicket of Jason Holder. It became very difficult for us to mm. So they trail by 60 runs. And uh, as a result of that, I'll take you through the uh, the 
bowling figures. Ben Rain in the end bowled 20 overs and took three for 59. And of those 20 overs, six were maidens. Potts in the end with that wicket halfway through the over has bowled 17.3. There were two maidens and he has taken three for 40. Basta later bowled 10 overs, one maiden and took one for 41. And then Paul Coglin, uh, three for 42, his figures in his 12 overs, in which two were maidens. So the lead is 60. Story this morning, Jason Holder bowled by Ben Rain for 18 in the 35th over. He'd added 35 at that point in time with Libby. Uh, Matthew Waite went for a six-ball duck, edging a ball from Ben Rain to the keeper in the 37th over. An element of luck when Libby was out. He'd been batting nicely. He was on 61 and he left left a ball from Paul Coglin, which uh, jagged back and hit the stumps. So he was out. He was out for 61. I'll fly him a throw there. Baker went for two, Leach for seven, Finch for 18, <clears throat> and eventually Smith not out 33, 184 all out. So that is lunch. We'll be back with you in 40 minutes. Hello there, and welcome to the Worcestershire County Cricket Club 2024 season preview and kit launch. Coming up, we're going to have a catch up with some of the players, have a look at the new member benefits program and find out what the club is doing in the community. Well, it's a packed show, so let's kick things off by speaking to the CEO of Worcestershire County Cricket Club and England legend, Ashley Giles. Ash, great to see you. Thanks very much for your time. Let's start with the difficulties that are facing the club as we stand at the minute. Flooding. How bad has it been? How challenging is it going forward? Yeah, really bad. Um, this winter will be one of the worst in history. We've had, I think now, six full floods mm. of the ground. An absolute nightmare for the ground staff. Uh, every time they get, get around to cleaning up, it, you know, we get another one. And that situation doesn't really look like it's improving. The, the stats of the last 24 years versus the previous 100 show that the, the situation's got worse. Uh, and the floods are getting more regular. So, yeah, for us, it, it's becoming a, a real challenge at the ground. And a real challenge for the ground staff. You've got to doff your cap to what they've been trying to do. Yeah, Stephen, our head groundsman, is um, is doing a great job. He's been on the so, boat, hasn't he, out in the middle of the ground? Yeah, he, he's, he's found inventive new ways to stir the, uh, uh, you know, when these waters come in, there's so much silt and dirt lays on the grass. and. And he's found a method of sitting in a dinghy and, and blowing a, a leaf blower into the into the water to stir it up. But he's doing a great job. We're very lucky to have him and, and the rest of his team, of course. So you're moving games away from New Road, not something you want to do, but born out of necessity. Absolutely, yeah. So we always request of ECB that we start the championship campaign away from New Road. So the first two games are on the road. Um, we were hoping that we would be ready for um, what is the 19th of April was, was set to be our first home game. We're not going to be. So we've made that decision to, to move to Kidderminster. Kidderminster are, uh, you know, we've had a relationship with for a, a long time and they are our backup uh, and they've been a fantastic partner. But we've got a great team and I'm sure we'll work it through. Frustrating for the ground staff, for you, for the players and the members and supporters as well who want to watch cricket at New Road. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got a great supporter base. We've got great members and, and we've got a fantastic ground. You know, in all the questionnaires, when you ask cricket supporters their favourite grounds, uh, New Road always comes up. So is it sustainable for that beautiful ground to remain the home of Worcestershire County Cricket Club, given that perhaps these floods are going to become more prevalent as the years go by? Well, we have to think maybe it won't be. For me as a CEO, I need to keep all options open and one of those options has to be thinking about moving away at some point. One immediate injection of cash could come to the game via the sale of the 100. What have you made of some of the comings and goings and discussions and rumours that have sort of whirled around that? Yeah, I mean, it's the, it's the biggest talking point in the game. I think this year is potentially one of the uh, biggest moving years in cricket that we've seen, um, or we will have seen for, for generations. 
I think the 100 has played an important role in the game already. It's brought different audiences. What it's done for the women's game has been absolutely extraordinary. Um, but I think we're all coming to the, the, the reality, to the, to the sense that the, the 100 offers us probably the best opportunity to grow revenues in the game, particularly right now. We're seeing a shifting market worldwide between what was the England v Australia, the bilateral sort mm -hmm. of cricket that, that we've seen you know, throughout history to more of a franchise sort of state. A lot of these franchises popping up all around the world, led by the IPL, but we're seeing in America, we're seeing in UAE, uh, South Africa, and who knows before um, Saudi come online. You know, that, that could also happen. And I think for us, it should be, well, how can we make the 100 as good as we possibly can? And I think that's going to take some investment. Um, I'm sure there's some working through to do there. There's been a lot of consultation. ECB have worked really closely with us, which has been great. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure something's going to happen within this next 12 months. The 100 completely divides opinion. It'd be fair to say that one thing we perhaps can all agree on is what it's done for the women's game in this country. Where are Worcestershire County Cricket Club placed in terms of growing the female game? Yeah, so we're seeing in the game a big change again. Um, we've had a regional system, which we sort of partner with Warwickshire on, with the Central Sparks, which has worked very well. But now there's a move to further professionalise the women's game, which is great. I was having a chat with Chloe earlier. Where would you say the women's game is in the county at the minute? What are the strengths? Well, it, it's growing. We've got a successful team. Last season, we won the West Midlands Cup again. But as I just said, you know, I don't, I don't think we're we're doing enough in terms of support and resource. You know, it's one of the things I'm, I really want us to do is to to pump more support in that area. That's what we've got to be in the business of is producing players who go on and play for England teams, whether that's the men's or the women's teams. You mentioned the men's, a successful year on the field, promotion challenges now to stay there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it will be a huge challenge. I mean, last year was fantastic. Off the field, we had lots going on. We, we had a number of players leave the club, which is always disappointing. But again, they go with our best wishes. These guys have been great ambassadors for the club for, for long periods, and, and we wish them well. And again, we've got to, to replace them. But the way the team was able to stay focused on, on the goal, um, particularly that of getting promoted, is huge credit to Alan Richardson, his team and the players, and the senior players particularly. I've said a number of times that I think if that were at some of the other clubs I've been involved with, that's, that's sort of losing five senior players that they could have imploded those dressing rooms and, and we didn't. So they should be very proud and, and getting promotion and two quarterfinals in mm -hmm. the white ball competitions. I think it would be close to the club's most consistent season you know, without winning anything, but mm -hmm. um, to, to compete across all formats is, is brilliant. How strong is the talent and the pathway that you have in place to allow those cricketers to flourish? Yeah, really good. Uh, and again, I keep making the point that we've got to continue developing players through our system. Even if they leave at some point, as I say, that's, that is just part of the game nowadays. You know, the, the, the gap does seem to be widening between the, almost the haves and have nots, mm -hmm. but that shouldn't change our strategy. Um, we've got to keep developing players. That's a, that's a big part of our, our role and purpose. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm happy with, with where we are on that front because it, if someone like Worcestershire isn't that, what are we? Yes, of course, we want to challenge for trophies. Yes, of course, we want to entertain our fans, but we've got to develop players as well. What about the role that the club has in the community? How strong are the ties? Yeah, really strong. And I think then when you, you, know, it, when you start talking about things like the ground and the flooding, and, and I know when, whenever I mention, well, you know, we have to think about perhaps leaving New Road at some point. Um, you know, it's an emotional and emotive subject for, for people in, in Worcester and our members. We are very much at the, the centre of the community. I mean, we're only second on the Monopoly board to the cathedral, so we must be, <laughs> we must be pretty important. And it's been there for generations. I think sometimes people think I've come in from, from the old enemy and I'm, I'm here to sabotage the whole, the whole club. Um, far from. You know, I've lived in Worcestershire for 25 years. I'm very proud of that. Kids are born in Worcester, married in Worcester. Um, and so if anything, it's about time I worked for Worcestershire and I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Um, and again, I, I, you know, I know it's a big challenge, but that long-term sustainability, making sure 
if we get the opportunity that Worcestershire can almost eat at the big table, if you like, mm -hmm. and compete with those, those bigger teams, as well as maintaining that community feel that we are a different sort of club to Warwickshire and Lancashire. And earlier I talked about sponsors. I'd much rather talk about them as partners. And, and that's what we should be. We should be welcoming. We should be warm. Um, and ultimately, you know, my vision is for us to be sort of the destination of choice for life sport, for entertainment and hospitality in, in Worcestershire. Now, some would say, well, there's not a huge amount of competition at the moment. But in some of those areas, we're not quite getting it right at the moment. We know that but, and we can be better. But that's what we're striving for. And I, and I think we've got the team that, that can deliver that. So despite the challenges that we've touched on, is your overall view of the county going forward one of excitement? It is, or yeah. trepidation I mean, well, at what might change. There's a there's a bit of both, if I'm if I'm totally honest. And I think the game stands in a very interesting yeah. place. There are the challenges, whether they be financial, whether they be ground. But then on the other side, I look at those opportunities and, and, and I am excited. Um, I, I love this role. It's my first CEO role. Um, it's a fantastic club. And all of the roles I've taken on, I've, I've always said I'm very proud to be part of that legacy. And nowhere more than, than Worcestershire. You know, it's got a really rich history. It's been through some rough periods, but um, you know, I still think we can, we can do some really good and exciting things. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Now, to talk us through the benefits of becoming a member of Worcestershire County Cricket Club and what sort of customer experience you can expect, I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Joe and Keely. Welcome along, guys. Joe, can I come to you first? How are you going to improve yourself and improve the customer experience at Worcestershire County Cricket Club? I think the customer experiences and giving a great experience to everyone we deal with is just actually absolutely central to everything we do at, at New Road and at, at the club, whether you're a supporter, whether you're a member, whether you're a sponsor, a corporate partner, um, whether you're just coming in for a meeting or an event there, it's our kind of role to deliver those great experiences to everyone in the community, um, adding value wherever we can, just giving over everyone we deal with that great time, really. How do you come into all of this and how does your company come into this, Keith? Yeah, so we're Pluxy. We are an employee benefits provider, but in this case, we do member benefits. So we're supporting the cricket club in enhancing their member benefits this year. That kind of works around three pillars. So we've got mental well-being, physical well-being and financial well-being. So there's a whole broad range of things that we're doing across those three pillars. So it's really exciting just to try and get new members, create amazing experiences both on and off the pitch. Explain about the card, though. Yeah. So that's linked with Visa. Yeah, so the card's the really exciting bit. So it's a financial well-being tool. So they can use the card at local supermarkets and different retailers and merchants that we work with. But they can also use it in the cricket club to save off their merch that they're buying or the food on the day that they're going to watch a game. And then a contribution of that as well also goes back into the Grassroots Cricket Foundation mm -hmm. and the community. So, yeah, we're really thrilled to be involved in that. And just to be clear, this card is, is your, your membership card. That's what you come in with. I mean, has this been done before in cricket? No, um, it's first in cricket. So there's an all-in-one card, which works your membership card, so that gives you access to the, uh, the ground. You can then preload it, spend money anywhere. There's a massive range of benefits in terms of cashback through Pluxy with around 100 UK retailers. You can get some cashback, and every time you spend in one of those retailers, there's money going straight back into the foundation, into the community as well. I, I think it's something we're quite proud of. It's given a lot back to the members. Yeah and something we can really build on. I think we'll probably grow throughout cricket as well as Worcestershire. Ashley mentioned community. Keeley's mentioned community. You've just mentioned community. It's such a big deal for Worcestershire, isn't it? It is, yeah. And I think it's got lots of different meanings. It's got the community in terms of what's around us in terms of people. But I think we see ourselves as the centre of it, um, the centre of the community of members, supporters, the centre of the community of partners. We've massively grown on that side of it. We've doubled the amount of corporate partners the club's got. This year compared to last, membership's growing. It just feels really, there's a really good feel, really good atmosphere around the place at the moment. And we're kind of growing what we call that kind of uh, community uh, ecosystem, really, around New Road and Worcestershire. Just expand on the health and well-being yeah. side of this. What, in practical terms, does that mean? So as well as the card and the financial side of it, there's also the mental well-being side. So we're supporting them with 
a 24-7 helpline. So whether that's for um, a member calling about how they're feeling, if they're feeling a bit down or wanting to get over a life hurdle, but mm -hmm. it's also an information helpline as well. So to help with legal advice or any support they may need, we've got trained counsellors and trained support service. And then we also have the physical wellbeing as well. So that is gym memberships, fitness club memberships, everything locally as well as nationwide. So again, the local community, like a local gym that might be down the road, mm -hmm. or you might be traveling up to Wales and going on a holiday and you want to join a gym there as well. So if you want to become a member then, how? Um, online in the ticket <laughs> office. Um, there's the guys are there to speak to take the um, to take the membership. We're always welcoming more members. I think the whole the membership product, it, it's more than just a season ticket. You're part of the club, you're part owner of the club. And actually this is given a whole lot of value back in really important ways across those financial health and wellbeing pillars as well. And I think in particular the mental health wellbeing side. On that's something we're really super proud of to give that kind of counselling support, that loneliness support, especially when you look at the traditional demographics of um, county cricket members. I think that's a really important element to it and groundbreaking in certainly cricket, if not sport, to be that sort of thing back. Brilliant. Great to speak to you guys. Thank you for your time. Now, I don't have to tell you, cricket is an incredible sport and it can bring so many people together. And it's always been the aim of Worcestershire County Cricket Club to contribute and work within the local community. Let's now join Foundation Director Craig Oakley as he travels around Worcestershire to show us the amazing work that they've been doing. I'm here at New Road, home of Worcester County Cricket Club, but as the Executive Director, I'd like to take some time to speak to you around the community work we do out in Worcestershire. As a foundation, you'd be surprised how far afield we reach from New Road. We engage with over 40,000 participants a year with our wide-ranging programmes, from walking cricket and our half programme in the community, through to our school delivery and recreational cricket club support. Our mission is to offer opportunities to every individual across all communities in Worcestershire empowering a county that is active, inclusive and supported through Cricket for All. Today I'm visiting the heart of Worcestershire College in Redditch, where this evening we have two of our programmes running. There's Walking Cricket and the Chance to Shine Street programme. I'm going to find out just what these programmes mean to some of those taking part. Elsa is our Community Development Manager and oversees all community delivery for Worcestershire Cricket Foundation. So the Chance to Shine programme is fantastic. It's a free programme that runs most weeks of the year. We do it inside during the winter, outside during the summer, and it's just great for those girls that they've got a session every week. Talking to some of the parents, it's, it's quite difficult for them to get into sports. So, you know, we go into the schools with the Chance to Shine programme, and then the Chance to Shine Street is the exit route for the school programme. I've been playing cricket here for a year, and I like the batting because it's really good fun. I like coming here because I like meeting new people. It's fun. It's good for your for physical health. It's good for your mental health and to learn how to play cricket at the same time. It's a really fun club and you can do a lot of things. Walking cricket, exactly what it says on the turn, it's a walking version of the game, typically for over 50s, but we're not exclusive to over 50s. We have a few people that have got injuries and stuff. Started with only a handful of people, three or four, but we're now up to about 15. There's great camaraderie. We all have a good laugh about it. And the, the way we rotate the game, um, you know, with a pairs of batters, a change of field positions, we all get a chance to actually do every bit of the game. Us going out into communities, especially the underrepresented groups, the disability groups, the low socioeconomic groups, I think the fact that we've got offerings for everybody now, it's amazing. And that's it for today. I hope you can see how much fun we've had at the session. None of this could be done without our passionate and positive staff, and we have lots of opportunities coming out over the summer, so keep an eye out. But for now, it's back to the studio with Ian. Fantastic stuff. Thanks for that, Craig. And if you want to get involved, go straight to our website for more information. So now the time has come. It's time to launch the 2024 kits. Take a look at this. In Worcestershire's embrace, we stand tall. A vibrant tapestry woven by the threads of all. In the shadow of the majestic spire, the roar of a captivated crowd inspires. 
where Elgar's notes dance upon the breeze. Through winding valleys, hills and trees. Along the Severn, the railway winds, capturing and enchanting hearts and minds. Our culture and heritage in history steeped, a passion for community upon which we reap. But now, a new season about to be born. Here's to fearless warriors, ready to face the storm. Looks incredible, doesn't it? What a great way to launch a new kit. And two of our models are here alongside me, Brett and Chloe. Welcome along. Right, well, let's start with the cricket and let's look back to last year. County Championship, promotion, Division One. How proud are you and the team to have achieved that? Yeah, look, extremely proud. It was um, you know, a massive moment for the team last year to get that promotion, obviously going into Division One, as you said. We know that's going to present some challenges, um, but it's something that we're really looking forward to and I can't wait to get going. What did you do well last year then to have that success? I just think we did the basics really well for long periods of time and that was it. And I think what we've got with our group at the minute is a great environment, um, great people on the bus and, you know, we're all pulling in the same direction, which has helped. It does go up and down though, doesn't it? Promotion, relegation. So what's the key to staying up when you start with that easy trip down the road? <laughs> yeah, great question. Uh, yeah, the history tells you that we've been up and down a little bit in the previous years. So, you know, one of our goals is to get up and stay up. So I think, again, we're going to have to go up and play good periods of cricket for long periods of time. So it's something, as I said, that I'm really excited about. Chloe, how would you sum up last season for you and the girls? Uh, yeah, it was a bit hit and miss. T20, <laughs> T20 obviously, um, the rain massively affected that competition side. So um, pretty much washed out the lead up to the finals day, which meant for us that unfortunately um, we, we did get knocked out by, uh, i would call it the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then, yeah, 50 over campaign, that was a perfect campaign for us, especially last season, finishing runners up in the 50 over campaign to come and come back and win it um, and bring the trophy back home. What did you learn then? What, what was the good things that you want to continue doing in that campaign into this year? I think it's the youth that we're bringing through right. um, from the pathway, um, the young cricketers coming through. Uh, they step up straight away into the senior side with bat and ball. It's just exciting to see, see what's coming through and in that generation. How strong is that pathway, would you say? And how has it changed over the last few years? I mean, I think I've been at Worcester now 10 years or so. So when I was first in that women's side, the pathway or the youngsters in that side, there wasn't, there wasn't 17, 16, 17, 18 year old girls. It was all 20 plus. Um, whereas mm. now we're seeing, 50, we had a 15 year old girl make her debut last year in the 50 over comp and she took the ball and got five for in one game. Mm. And so just seeing that talent come through now, it's so exciting for the women's game. The women's game is expanding extremely quickly, extremely exciting. I mean, now do you see like a 15 year old can look at cricket and think, I can make a career out of this. And also the support is there for her to do that. Yeah, I'd say so. I'd love to be 15 years <laughs> old again, for sure. Um, seeing how exciting that their journey they've got ahead, they can make a living, finish school, look at their qualifications and go, look, I can make a career in cricket now, off I go. Where would you say that the, the youth is in the men's side of Worcestershire County Cricket Club, what's coming through? How excited is the are you for the future? Yeah, extremely excited. I think we're a club that probably prides ourselves on producing our own players. And I think you've only got to look back in recent history. I think we've we've been able to do that. You know, Josh Tung obviously going on mm. to play Test cricket, product of the Worcester Academy. Obviously, Jack Haynes who's obviously moved on as well. But myself, like uh, myself, Joe Leach, Ben Cox has moved on as well. But all those guys have come through the system. So, you know, I think history tells you that that system's really good, and I think it's in a really really good spot. How's preparation going? Because uh, it'd be fair to say the ground is a little damp. <laughs> yeah, you won't want to have a bat at the minute, that, that, that's, that's for sure. But yeah, it's obviously been a challenge, but it's something that we're, we're really adaptable to. And we've obviously done it over many years now. So we're out at Malvern College and um, at school there training. And then obviously the first couple of games might be looking elsewhere to play. How frustrating is that? Yeah, I, mean, I know Kidderminster is sort of like your second home, but you'd love to be at New Road. I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. It is what it is. But how do the players have to cope with that? Yeah, obviously it's a little bit disappointing, um, but as I said, you know, we're, we're pretty much used to it now. Um, as much as we like to be back in front of all our members at New Road, what we have got is a great membership that, that will follow us anywhere. So we're excited to see those guys at Kidminster. What's your preparation look like ahead of this season then? How does that work for you and the girls? 
obviously the women's structure at the moment, as we know, it's a bit it's a bit in the air with women's mm. county cricket. So Worcester have set up a great um, structure that we've got pre-season training available to the girls um, to cater around, obviously, at county cricket at the moment. It's not their full-time jobs. So we've catered the training around the girls to make sure that they can get their training um, and get to train alongside their own work. Now explain a bit about the Sparks Academy then, for those that don't know. Yeah, so the Sparks Academy is, um, so the women's domestic um, structure side that is a product of Worcestershire, Warwickshire, Shropshire, Shropshire Staffordshire, um, basically covering all the West Midland regions and you get all the talented young cricketers and the senior sides going to make one big team of Central Sparks uh, and, and they go and represent as a domestic pressure. Which is hugely exciting. Yeah, I know we've had a few youngsters that have made um, that transition from Worcestershire County into also the Sparks EPP, the mm -hmm. Sparks Academy and the Sparks Seniors First Team now. So that's even more exciting. Switching codes from red to white, what are your hopes and aspirations with white ball cricket this year as a, a side, would you say? I think just to compete in every game of cricket that we play. I think um, two years ago we went through a bit of a, a revamp with that and um, changed the way that we sort of tried to play the game of cricket. Obviously, mowing, mowing was a huge part of how we played our game of cricket mm. and we were very successful at doing that. Obviously, he's moved on now, so it was about taking those reins and trying to push the team forward again. Um, but it's just about trying to give the guys freedom to go out and play and try and express themselves, really. We hear that a lot now mm. in cricket. It starts, obviously, with the test match side. That's the, yeah. the, the headline act, I suppose, with basball, if you want to <laughs> call it that. They hate that, by the way. Um, <laughs> Do you take inspiration from that? Do you take any sort of direction from the freedom that McCullum and Stokes have given to the test side? Does that filter down into the county game? Yeah, I think you'd be lying if you said you didn't look at that and, and try and do something similar. I'm not saying we try and mimic, mimic that completely, but um, to give the guys freedom, it's more about trying to allow them to take risks when they feel like they can um, and encourage them to do that. And if they fail, it's not berating them for that. It's, it's actually encouraging them to do it again and again because I think I believe that's a successful way how to play cricket, especially one-day cricket. Sounds obvious, doesn't it, to just allow people to go out and play with freedom with no sort of consequences. There are consequences because members want to win and players want to win. But back in the day, my old day, it was like you played a big shot and you got pinned up against the wall by the coach. Things have evolved into a better place, would you say now, in terms of the management and the style of play you want to create? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's something that Alan Richardson and Kadir Ali have done extremely well at our mm. place is creating an environment where guys feel wanted and they want to, they want to be a part of that team. Um, and that comes through, you know, that fear of failure has gone a little bit. So it's about, as I said, going out there and expressing yourself. So they've managed to do that really well. And it's something that I've really enjoyed captaining. And John Lewis and, and Heather have, have sort of tried to bring that in a little bit in the women's game. Are you taking note of that? Yeah, definitely. I think the women's game is... is copying that sort of trademark, what we're seeing in the men's game and the women's game. I think that's the way that we want to be playing our um, type of cricket. We want to go out, like we say, express ourselves and play with freedom. If a batter goes and tries a shot and fails, mm. it's OK. Mm. We don't want to look at that and pinpoint them and say, why did you do that? Because we know it's their strength. Your name is synonymous with Worcestershire County Cricket Club. Your lineage goes right the way through. So where would you say the club is now? What's the buzz around the the ground now, obviously wet at the minute, but <laughs> what's the, the general feeling about where the club is going, what you've achieved and what you want to achieve? Yeah, there's a real excitement about the club. I think you've only got to walk around the ground with the personnel that are walk, uh, working there, sorry. Mm. Um, yeah, as I said, everyone's excited to be going into Division One. Um, the members have always been great at the club, so they're really excited. Um, so to get them back at New Road eventually, hopefully, <laughs> um, and, and playing some Division One cricket is something that we are extremely excited about. And Chloe, what about the atmosphere and the buzz around the club from your point of view? Yeah, I know that the women are so excited when we get to come and play at New Road. And obviously there's, there's loads of um, Sparks fixtures being held at New Road and obviously the England matches as well. So yeah, it's just exciting to see that women's cricket is back at New Road this year and a lot of it. Well, good luck to both of you. Great to see you. Thanks very much. You look resplendent in your new Thank kit. You. Thank you very much <laughs> indeed and good luck. So there you have it. It looks like 2024 is going to be a very exciting season. And if you'd like to know more about how to become a member, where you can get your hands on the awesome kit you've seen today, or just come to watch some great cricket at the ground, then please go straight to our website at wccc.co.uk. It only leaves me now to give a huge thanks to everyone involved in today's show. And finally, a massive thank you to you at home for watching. Bye for now.
Welcome back to Chester Street, Kidderminster, where we're just about to start the afternoon session with Durham batting, having bowled Worcestershire out right on the luncheon interval of uh, for 184, leading up by 60. And the first ball of the innings has been bowled by Joe Leach, played defensively by Alex Lees. And they start, as I say, Durham with a lead of 60. Good uh, morning session for the visitors, taking six wickets. Worcestershire resuming on 78 for four, all out for 184. The uh, top score, Jake Libby, 61 he made for uh, being bowled without playing a shot. Here leaves, the left-hander pushes into the offside and there's no run. There's a 18 from Jason Holder, 18 at the end from Adam Finch. He was the last man to go, LBW to Potts. And Nathan Smith, uh, a good effort from him, 33 not out. But uh, wickets fell after the first half an hour, uh, regular intervals. And Worcestershire have got it all to do with the ball here in bright sunshine, lovely conditions. And need to make some early inroads, you would feel, to uh, with that uh, first innings deficit. Next delivery, pushed into the offside where Jones fields and there's no run. My name's Chris Williams and uh, this afternoon joined by Mal Farrell and with me at the moment Martin Emerson. 64 overs left in the day when this innings began. So a long day. going to be here, you would feel, probably after 6.30 but uh, credit to the Durham bowlers, they got on with it this morning. He only had one brief hold-up for uh, when Finch was uh, struck on the helmet. Next ball is punched up to D'Oliveira at wide mid-off and there's no run. The, uh, they went off at 5-7 to seven last night for bad light. Came back on at a quarter past seven. Played till about half seven. Oh. So that was a late finish. That is a late finish. I would say too late. Yeah. And these days, why why we still have the 11 o'clock start? I really don't know. Bring it forward to half ten. Leech balls, and there's no run. Problem is, even with a half. -ten and we've start, just started the know. second the uh, afternoon session, and it's Durham batting, having bowled Worcestershire out this morning for 184. Worcestershire resumed on 78 for, for four but uh, lost six wickets. They saw through the first half an hour or so without losing a wicket, but then Jason Holder went for 18, quickly followed by Matthew Waite. Libby was top scorer with 61, out bowled without playing a shot. Uh, Baker went for two, Leach seven and Finch 18, uh, leaving Nathan Smith, a good knock from him, the New Zealander making 33 not out. That meant uh, Worcester trail by 60 on first innings. Durham just come out to bat. We're in the first over of their innings and they're yet to score their first run. And they do score their first run, just as you say that. And Lees plants the ball from Leach back beyond the bowler. And it rolls up and over the advertising hoarding next to the sight screen at the far end of the ground. So I've got to do an update anywhere between 2.25 and 2.35. <laughs> handily. Uh, 5 to 4 during half time and then uh, about 5 past 5 in the full time roundup. Yeah, so you will hear, hear us uh, giving updates uh Various times throughout the afternoon, I've got a few to do for <coughs> BBC Hereford and Worcester into their Sport on Saturday programme. The Hereford United and Worcester City playing this afternoon. Kidderminster Harriers, 12.30 uh, kick-off for them. They were 3-1 down at Barnet last I heard. Sunderland are playing Millwall at 3 o'clock. And uh, Gary Bennett, the former Sunderland captain, is our Sunderland summariser. And it will be his 1,000th game on commentary today. <sighs> Here's Nathan Smith down the hill from the railway end and uh, is left alone by Borthwick. That on top of the games he played, how many how many games did he play oh, for in, in his hundred. career? Try to think. He, he, he was born in Manchester, but he came to Sunderland from um, Cardiff, I think it was. Has an MBE to his name now as well.
Smith, right arm over to Borthwick. And more histrionics from the uh, yeah. Worcestershire players. That angles towards the keeper's right hand after it's past the stumps, but I think there's a bit of kidology going on here. Uh, Scott Borthwick was 34 yesterday, opened the batting and got a second ball duck, so we want him to put that behind him and get some runs on the ball today. To say the sun is so strong at the moment, I can hardly see the the screen that we've got. If you pull it round a bit more, I tell you, part of the reflection's your white pieces of paper, isn't it? I think. But yeah, it's uh, it's very bright. Smith bowls, both with bat and pad, trickles out to the offside. When we commentated at um, Southport in 2016 in the middle of a heat wave and we were on the steps of a pavilion with no cover whatsoever and all the equipment just started to turn off because everything was overheating so the ground staff went and got boxes that programs had been carried in and we were trying to cover laptops and iPads and everything with boxes and frazzled that week Durham four without loss fourth ball of the Second overs turned away towards the leg side by Borthwick, who gets off the mark. He had a little sit out outside on a bench, and uh, you could do with a cap on. It was it yeah. was very pleasant out there, not too not too warm, but the sun was strong, or is strong. Yeah, it's been that wet that um, we yet to sort of see anything resembling pollen in the north. But I'm feeling a bit polleny today. It's certainly a lot greener down here compared to back at home, especially the trees. Smith to Lees. Lees plays the ball to point. No run. Had a little video home last night at the end of the day. He's playing. It was my niece's uh, birthday, so the, the family were having a get together. And the comments about how green it was here. And how green the trees are compared to the northeast at the minute. Mm. Yeah, you're in the area for pollen. Mm. One ball of this over left. Five on the scoreboard. The lead is now 65. Smith bowls. Edged and gone. And Lees is absolutely livid with himself. He's been caught at second slip by Holder. And he swings his bat furiously through the air. And he's out for four. Durham five for one. So he went for just a few runs in the first innings yesterday, didn't he? What did he, what did he get yesterday? He was out for six yesterday. Got 145 last week in the first innings at Edge Baston and then was out for one in the second. And he's already heading off here really angry thick edge to Holder at second slip yeah he was really really angry with himself there it's uh, red, red do you see a batsman really show histrionics like that and uh, swish the bat whether he feels he just shouldn't have played at it but a uh, smart catch and just what uh, Worcestershire were looking for early wicket that's the end of the over so Baldwick is on one, brings in Ackerman. Lees, what, what did Lees go for? Four. Four. And the lead 65. Very really difficult to see anything on this screen at the moment. <laughs> I just can't make. <laughs> he faced eight balls. And the score is five for one. So Leach starts over number three. We round the wicket to the left-hander, who uh, stretches out. Does Borthwick pushes the ball into the offside, and there's no run. Two slips in for Leach. There's a backward point. Extra cover mid-off, mid-on. Mid wicket and fine leg. Leach with the sun shining brightly on his head. Bowls 
and is driven up to Dolivera at wide mid off. Wide enough for them to pick up a single. It's also a third man that's just uh, Nathan Smith who's way to our left. It was hidden behind the uh, the screen, the, the, the side of the marquee that we're sitting in. That brings Ackerman on strike. Well, Gateshead are playing Bromley today. I think they're winning 2-1 now. They were a goal down. They play each other in the playoffs next week as well. Commentary of that one on the BBC website at the minute from Radio Newcastle. Leach is bowling from the pavilion end to Ackerman, wearing 48. Who remains in the crease, plays defensively up to mid-off, and there's no run. I think by the end of tonight, this game is going to be so far advanced that uh, there's already talk of a poor weather forecast and quite a bit of rain on Monday, but that might ne might be negligible in the longer scheme of things. Leach comes over the wicket and Ackerman. Not sure he's in total control of that defensive shot. Might have been a lot of outside edge onto it and uh, all out onto the offside and no run. So that lead 66. 60 on first innings with Durham bowled out for 244. Top score was Robinson with 55. Worcestershire all out 184. Top score Jake Libby with 61. Leach bowls and Ackerman stretching forward drives defensively into the offside and no run. Another season for Joe Leach. He's, he's seen a few now for Worcestershire. It's going to be a busy one for him with his uh, benefits events that will take place throughout the summer. Be a long season as well. Starts we started in early April. Bowl short for length and it's guided to backward point where Libby fields and there's no run. End of the over, tight one from Joe Leach. One run coming from it. Uh, Borthwick has two. Ackerman still looking for his first run. Durham lead by 66, they're six for one. Doug Rain emailed before lunch asking what the cameras are on the uh, the groundsman's jacket and the groundsman's the umpire's jackets. They're not CCTV, so they're not recording the players as such. They're they're more of a ball tracking system. So give an idea of where balls are pitching, where they're going. He says I'm off to the first Cloud Arena soon to hopefully cheer on the Mariners. So there's South Shields into the National League North playoffs because I'm a disillusioned Sunderland fan. As uh, Nathan Smith starts his second over of this Durham second innings, coming in from the railway end, our end of the ground, and this is played away by Borthwick back up to the bowler's end. He says, hopefully, he'll be back at the Riverside next week. Durham against Essex starting on Friday. The snood wearers of the south, he says. <laughs> well, local uh, people. Full time Kidderminster Harrys were beat by four goals to one at Barnet. In comes Smith, that's left alone. I passed Barnet's ground on the underground last year. Um, so we had an email earlier from Eric the Stanmore Mackham. So we drove down to stay at Elstree, got the bus up to Stanmore, and then it's only three or four stops to Wembley. We went to see Blur at Wembley. And uh, it's a tidy little ground, Barnet's ground. My initial thought was it was um, one of the Premier League club's training grounds with a few seats in, but uh, then I realised it was actually Barnet's ground. The Hive, isn't it? Yeah, it's right next to the uh, underground line. Smith bowls. This is turned off the legs and down to long leg to Leach by Borthwick for one. Leach fielding with his back to the bar at the far end of the ground. I commentated at the old ground, <coughs> uh, Underhill, I think it was. It's uh, had a slope on it. 
Didn't that have lots of different little stands all the way down? Yeah. yeah. Who were you covering then? Uh, it would have probably been Kidderminster. Covered them for a few years, did a couple of years with Hereford. Yeah. I remember Hereford being in the league. Yeah, well, they were when, uh, when I used to cover them. I'll I take anybody down. <laughs> I was down here for a, a weekend years ago, and I decided to tick the ground off as... Uh, Smith comes in and bowls. This is defended by Ackerman. Um, come down to visit relatives. I don't think Sunderland had a game that weekend. Might have been an international break or something. So I realised Hartlepool were playing Hereford. So I thought, oh, I'll drive over to Hereford. Got there, sitting in a bar having lunch before the game when these Hartlepool fans came in and said, can't believe we've driven all the way down here for the game to be called off. <laughs> so I think I ended up in bookshops in Ross on Wye or Hay on Wye instead that afternoon. Smith to Ackerman. Ackerman leaves that one and springs up sharply to the keeper, Gareth Roderick, taking it on his left hand side. I did a game at uh, at Hartlepool some years ago, and I remember the, uh, the, p the press guy coming in saying, Please don't say this is the coldest ground <laughs> in the country. It's not. Well, it, it did a good impression, though, that night or that afternoon. The coldest I've been at football grounds Oldham and West Brom yeah West Brom's the highest isn't yeah. it Smith bowls that's a Yorker length ball dug out by Ackerman quite a bit of dust coming up there as he played that one no run though goes to mid on it's a no ball so two runs Paul Pollard signalling that yeah we, um, we were in Birmingham for Christmas 92 Sunderland were meant to play Birmingham City on Boxing Day and the game got frosted off so we drove up and was watched West Brom against um, Chester would have been the third division then and it was an absolutely bitterly cold day Smith in this is played up towards mid on no run there end of the over but West Brom had under soil heating so their game went ahead and just as the game kicked off this freezing fog came in you couldn't see a thing Somebody ran down the, f the pitch along the touchline in front of the stand shouting, I've scored, I've scored, <laughs> and, no and nobody knew how. It turned into a 4-3 thriller in the end when the fog lifted, but it was bitterly cold. And From memory, the electricity was off, so you couldn't get any hot drinks in the ground either. Yeah, not far from here, the yeah. Hawthorns. Yeah, I drove around past there the other day, and then the back row of the away end on a freezing cold February night at, at Oldham. Joe Leach starts a new over, round the wicket to Borthwick, drives into the offside, and there's no run, fielded at wide mid-off by Dolivera. I have to say, though, everybody thinks about the frozen north, but in terms of cricket commentaries, the coldest I think I've been. The opening day, the opening round of matches in 2021, when nobody was allowed in the ground, and we were commentating at Trent Bridge, and it was snowing, and we had to have the window <laughs> open for COVID protocol. And then the next game after that, down at Chelmsford. Absolutely bitter that was that week. Leeching again from the pavilion end, turned onto the leg side, and there's no run. Sitting with the windows open at Chelmsford with the heater on, in a coat, with a body warmer on, gloves and a hat, indoors. Well, that's the thing about the cricket season. You get all seasons, yeah. don't you? You, see, you start off with gloves, hats, and uh, everything else. You go through it where you're complaining it's too hot, and there's... Uh, and then finish off again with your fleece at the end of the season. Mm. Long old season. Yeah. Leach in on his toes. Ackerman punches, takes on Dolivera, who uh, throws at the stumps at the bowler's end. And uh, surprisingly, from uh, where he was, doesn't uh, hit. I think Ackerman would have been home. Set off very quickly. Slightly risky run though, taking on uh, taking on Dolivera. Score moves on to ten for one. Ackerman off the mark, so perhaps that's why he just. Uh, in fact, it wasn't. It was uh, Borthwick was the the man on strike. Ackerman's now on strike. The right-hander. Leach in bright sunshine, bowls, Ackerman, big stride forward, plays defensively up to 
mid off and there's no run. The week that Durham were at Chelmsford was um, there were two significant events that week. Firstly, it was the week where pubs were allowed to open again in an outdoor setting only. So on the Friday night of the game, me and Don Topley drove up to this pub in the countryside that he knew and we sat and had a meal in the beer garden and it was absolutely perishing. I think we sat there for maybe 15 minutes, walloped the food down and back in the car. Next delivery short for length, Ackerman plays defensively. No run. And then on the uh, on the Saturday afternoon, it was Prince Philip's funeral, so all, all cricket stopped for about two or three hours on the mm. Saturday afternoon, so we were sitting having sort of a little picnic on the terrace at Chelmsford in the open air. And it was a bright day like this, but there was northerly, northerly winds, and it was just... I don't think it got above about four or five degrees that week. It's difficult to... You look back at the yeah. COVID now, and it all seems it weird, yeah. doesn't it? Did we really do that as Leach bowls full length and uh, bump ball back to the bowler. Take it took a, a neat return catch did Leach there. That's uh, no run. End of the over. Ten for one. So uh, Leach and Smith keeping it tight at the moment. Borthwick has four. Ackerman still looking for his first run. The one man out. Alex Lees caught at second slip by Holder off Smith for four. When we went into the ground they would take your temperature. You remember those temperature yeah. guns? Yeah. And, um, at Chelmsford, the guy showed me the temperature and I said, if that gun's working properly, then I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> I've been cryogenically frozen, judging by the thermometer score you've given me there. Somebody I knew, uh, they were involved with the Working Men's Club in the North East and they used a temperature gun, which is used on the, real, the railways to test how hot train wheels are when they've been braking. And that was apparently far more accurate, supposedly. <laughs> Borthwick's retaking his guard here. Before this uh, next over gets underway. The sixth of this Durham second innings. They had a 60-run lead. And they now have 10 on the board in this for the loss of one. Plays this away. Down towards the third man boundary. In front of the T-bar. Mobile T-bar. Far corner of the ground for one run. We had a, an extra half hour taken, as it was, I think it was five and a half overs of the eight that Durham used up before they bowled. Worcestershire out for 184, a lead of 60. Nathan Smith in, Ackerman plays the ball back to him, along the ground. Yeah, noticeable that uh, Worcestershire are getting through their overs more slowly than Durham did. They were very much on it this morning. I think they were on at 15 an hour. It's already had a couple of little hold-ups. Smith certainly takes his back, his time getting back to his mark. In comes Smith. Dug out by Ackerman. Played up to Dolavira at mid-off. No run there. Important part of uh, session, this isn't it? Because it'll, I think by by tea time, we'll have a good idea of where the game's going. With that lead of sixty, they can do, Durham can build on that with that with perhaps losing one more wicket. I mean, a very strong position. Drive from Ackerman and bobbles up to Dolavira at mid off. It's a dot ball. And of course, if Worcestershire can make some some inroads, it's often the the third innings is the is the key one of the four. Have a good idea where we're going. I want to keep it tight, keep probing away. Smith to Ackerman. Ackerman flicks that off the hips and that's away through mid wicket. It might have the legs to get for four. It does. It reaches the boundary. Yeah, just drifted there, didn't he? Down the leg side. Bit of a gimme. 
but nicely played by Ackerman. Just went back in his crease onto his toes and flicked it away. Fifteen for one. Last ball of the sixth over. Then Mel will come back in. Inside edge there from Ackerman. I don't think he knew where that had gone at all. He was looking down at his stumps. He was looking across towards the slip corner and the ball had gone behind him. He gets a single. He'll keep strike. So at the end of that over, Durham 16 for one. And uh, they lead by 76. Ackerman has five. Borthwick has five. So steady start by Durham in this in their second innings losing that early wicket of Lees caught by Holder at second slip uh, for the bowling of Smith he's probably still uh, chastising himself in the changing room now he was so angry swishing his bat violently as he was caught Leach starts new over bowling from the pavilion end Played back up the pitch by the bowler to the by the batter to the bowler. Get there in the end. Ackerman and no run. I should be doing an update uh, in a few minutes' time for listeners to BBC Hereford and Worcester Sport on Saturday program. Fifty seven overs after this to be bowled in the day so as I said long long day ahead still and there's a ball that just moved away from Ackerman and he may have taken the bat inside and well, it looks like he's playing and he's actually just playing inside and, and playing towards the leg side so it's taken low down by Roderick but certainly uh, Got a big shout from Bowler and Slips. Jason Holder is at second slip. He took that catch in Smith's first over. Leach probing away here. Bowl short of a length. Ackerman comfortably plays back to the bowler and there's no run. I think the umpires have changed around. We've got Paul Pollard at square leg Tom Lungley at the bowler's end I'm uh, rejoined by Mel Farrell Afternoon uh, Nicely replenished with you Well yeah I, th I went for a lap of the uh, of the oval here and very nice that was too and I had a little bit of lunch it's Mediterranean chicken Next delivery is driven I'm taking on the half volley and uh, throw that hits the stumps at the bowler's end, but uh, Ackerman was comfortably home there. Good bit of fielding, though, nonetheless. One more to the total, 16 for one. And I tell you what I discovered. So they really have, obviously, there's limited facilities at, at an outground like this, but they've made an effort. They really have. And do you know how I know they've made an effort? They've got really posh portaloos. Have they ever? They yes. have. Uh, they've got, like, glass... Basins yeah. where you wash your head. There's there's moisturiser. It's I, I was really impressed by that. Let's tell what effort have they made. They've impressed those. us both on those though, because <laughs> that was that they're, they're not your festival type toilets, are they? No. Leech bowls round the wickets and Borthwick shoulders arms. Let's it go through to wicketkeeper Roderick. I mean, to be fair, I'm easily impressed. <laughs> so. Having having nice loos at a ground, that's that's an absolute bonus. Uh, they've got they've got a nice coffee jug in there to keep me replenished with caffeine. What in the I toilets? No, no, <laughs> not in the toilets. In the uh, in the little press tent next door. Uh, so. I say that is upmarket toilets. So they got it, got the coffee going in there. <laughs> Leach runs towards us and bowls full length at. Again, played defensively by the left-handed Borthwick, and there's no run. I think it might have been a no ball. Uh, did I see the umpire signal there? Put his hand out. Uh, I mean, do you know what the one of the most amazing things I've seen in a, in a loo more than once in Indian hotels? 
uh, they will have on the, the back of the door into the bathroom uh, a bottle opener for your beer bottle. <laughs> Just in case you're really thirsty. <laughs> Borthwick again plays defensively into the offside off the front foot and there's no run. End of the over and 19 for one. Borthwick has five and Ackerman has six. Yeah, so so basically it's just on, mounted on the door, a little thing where you can open your beer bottle. And I just thought, well, that's... Sometimes you really want a beer. It doesn't matter what you're doing. You really fancy a nice cold beer. So that's that. That they were some of the most impressive uh, loos that I've seen. But no, no coffee. No coffee in these ones here. But they they are very nice. Uh, I'd be very happy to see Nathan Smith continuing from the railway end. He's over the wicket and he's sharp and that. As a full delivery right on the money to Ackerman, who does get on top of it, dribbles out to the offside. I've been uh, I, I, lucky I've, I've got Nathan Smiths over this end because he's been fielding right in front of us when he's been at fine leg. You always feel a bit funny commentating <laughs> when, when a player's that close, don't you? Uh, well, it, it, we'll have to say nice things when he comes back out here and that won't be difficult to do because he's been bowling well. He's giving the ball... Uh, a really solid shine in between each delivery. He's in again. This time it's more comfortably defended by Ackerman to mid on, no run. Yeah, the, the ball early in the over, I think, hurried Ackerman a little bit, got him back in the crease. Mm. He, he played it comfortably enough in the end, but it did force him back. And difference now with this shining, of course, switching back to the Duke's ball. One of the the things about the Kookaburra ball, it's all about dry shining. So no moisture on it. But a Kookaburra takes takes more moisture. He's in again. It's another full ball. That's driven beautifully. Beats a diving fielder in the covers. That's going to go all the way over the boundary rope. There's a lovely shot, nice timing and enough power to beat the fielder as well. So that's another boundary for Ackerman, who goes to 10. And Durham, 23 for one. Yeah, just over pitch there, didn't he? Trying to pitch it up there, get the ball moving away from, from the batter. But uh, that was meat and drink. Played it nicely. Placed it well. He's just lifted his shirt again. He's desperately trying to get as much shine as he can on there. Pitching it up, trying to make it swing. He's in, and this time it's played off the hip, but straight to mid wicket, no run. See the sun reflecting off the windscreens of the cars away to our, our right on the Chester Road mm. side of the ground. It's hurting my eyes. Yeah. It's so making it hard to see the screen. Uh, it's, I, I, I brought woolies, I brought a scarf, I brought. A big winter jacket, all of that. Do you know what? I didn't bring my sunglasses. I think you'll need those come five o'clock, mind. The uh, the wool is. <laughs> I thought we meant sunglasses. Here is Smith again, and it's up in the block hole, just defended back past the bowler. No run. Yes, but it's quite bright. But was doing doing my little turn around the the ground. Uh, Everyone seemed to be enjoying themselves massively. I'm just watching Jason Holder warm up in the slip, so we might see him coming on for a bowl quite soon. Took a terrific catch to dismiss Lees. So good in the slips. Here is Smith, and just bangs that one in a little harder, but again defended straight, very straight bat by Ackerman, and that completes the over from Smith. So just... One boundary and a whole heap of dots. 23 for one. Borthwick on five. Ackerman now on 10. Smith has one for 14 of his four overs. And I imagine he, they'll be looking to him to make more inroads if they're going to have any chance of clawing this back Worcestershire. They need... They need a little collapse, don't they? They do. That lead at 83. Jason Holder's replacing Joe Leach at the pavilion end. Um, and other than the wicket, they've looked untroubled, haven't they? they? I don't think they've been hurried at all, these two batters. Um, it's been pretty accurate. They're scoring at 
just under three and over. But not looked troubled, hadn't looked rushed. Just perhaps the one delivery to Ackerman that, that got him back in the crease. But other than that, it's been pretty plain sailing. So I'm going to have some extra height to contain, contend with here from Holder. It's Borthwick who will have first look at him. And it is going to come down from a big height, isn't it? Certainly is. Hadn't taken any wickets in his two previous matches, Holder. He certainly looked uh, much happier with the highlights I was watching of the wickets. Big celebrations. Here he is, Bowles and Borthwick comfortably. Plays into the offside and there's no run. I suppose there's a lot of adjusting to do in terms of climate, etc. Where when these overseas players come, depends where they've come from at the time. But I can remember um, being at Derby, uh, was it last year or the year before, when Nathan Lyon came over and played for Worcestershire, had a, had a few games. And he'd come from, straight from India. <laughs> mm. And it was so cold and wet at Derby. Holder, bowls outside off stump, taken down by his boots by Roderick behind the stumps. It's it's a big ask for people. I mean, you know, they've paid the big bucks and they've got to come over and perform, but it's easy for people to think, oh, they haven't done this, they haven't done that. And for the first couple of weeks, you, you're acclimatising, aren't you? Well, I think for Holder, it's it's also, it's been a long time since he's he played Red Bull cricket, cricket. He opted out of the West Indies tour to Australia. He was playing in the ILT20 in the UAE. Here he is now. And he's flicked away down to fine leg. That's going to go for four. There is a fine leg down there. Joe Leach, but he's squarer. And uh, Holder just drifted down the leg side there. And Borthwick just helped himself. Flicked it away, fine. And he moves on to nine and the score 27 for one. And Holder just slapping his thigh there in frustration. But yes, he opted out of that that test series, he had the contract in the ILT20 and uh, he wants to really get back over there playing in the T20 World Cup. Next delivery turned onto the leg side and there's no run. Durham in their second innings are 27 for one. That's a lead of 87. They uh, started their, their second innings straight after lunch, after bowling out Worcestershire this morning for 184. First innings lead of 60. They lost an early wicket. It's uh, Alex Lees that went, caught a sharp catch at second slip, taken low down by a holder off the bowling of Smith. They were five for one then, but uh, since then it's looked pretty comfortable for Ackerman and Borthwick. Uh, change of bowling has brought on Holder in place of Leach, but they're looking to build on that uh, first innings lead of 60, and it could be that they can leave Worcestershire a big target to chase in the fourth innings. At the moment, 27 for one Durham in their second innings. That's a lead of 87. There's an update for listeners to Sport on Saturday on BBC Hereford from Worcester. And beautifully given as well. Yeah, so he, so Holder, he, he wants to get back into the West Indies set up for T20 World Cup in the Caribbean and the US in June. And then, of course, West Indies here in England after that playing tests, a test series. Next delivery played into the offs up to uh, mid off to Dolivera by Borthwick and there's no run. So the end of the over, 27 for one with Borthwick on nine, Ackerman on 10. And you can understand getting a, an offer like that. There, there are a lot of times, you know, when he took on the captaincy at such a young age, uh, he probably for, for, was, was prepared to do without some of those big contracts and very much part West Indies test side. Uh, in leading that at a really difficult time. So that was a huge ask. But So he opted to take take the money, but uh, he really wants back in. I bet he would have hated to have missed that wonderful series. West Indies winning the second test. First time in oh, is that something like 24 years, I want to say. I'd have to look that up. Shamar Joseph emerging as the hero. He was absolutely brilliant. So I imagine there was a bit of FOMO on behalf of Jason Holder. We have a change of bowling. Joe Leach has changed ends. So he is now coming in from our end, the railway end. And 
is Ackerman on strike and leeches in over the wicket, driven straight past the bowler. But a wonderful diving stop. I think that's Dolivera uh, mid on. No, is it mid, mid off or is he just swapped? Uh, Dolivera is at mid off. Mid off. That was Nathan Smith on that side, but I thought it was Dolivera diving. Anyway, they should be able to tell the difference between those two. They quite different. Nathan Smith, yeah, he's been fielding right in front of us, but he's just moved away. You can tell him by the little um he's got a baby mullet. Leech is in and that's got an edge, but it's it's managed to beat the fielders, including a diving fielder, very fine on the boundary. And that's four runs. So it was a little bit streaky from Ackerman, but the result is another four to him. He moves on to 14. Yeah, runs just starting to come a little bit too easily from a Worcestershire point of view. Looking, starting to look well set, these two. Not in any any trouble at all, um, which is why well, you can see Dolivera has just switched things around a little bit, not trying to uh, not let them settle into the bowling Two slips in place as Leach runs in and driven straight down to Dolivera at mid off. Gives the ball another shine, meticulously working on it. In fact, Nathan Smith prefers his own jumper. He's just taken the ball from Dolivera and he's taking on the shining duties himself. He was saying about uh, Jason Holder, and, and they're paid well, but it's very nomadic life, isn't it? For, for quite some years. Well, it's not a long career. Yeah. Uh, 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 once it's all over, bustling in is Leach. He's on the back foot and defending this time Ackerman. Nowhere to send that one. You can hear the applause coming from the slips. Jason Holder, particularly vocal. It is, and unfortunately, it's that, that summer period, Australian summer period, and that sort of November, December, January, February, where all the trouble is. You had South Africa sending well, probably mm -hmm. a third string, you'd almost say, test team to New Zealand. Uh, particularly controversial. and So a real worry for the game. Leach is in. Uh, it's just pressed back past the bowler again. No run. That, that, that you can sort of understand why South Africa had to have had to prioritise the SA20 in that it's it's brought a lot of money to them, but the fact is the decisions made, the scheduling decisions, everything, it, it just can't be right when you see a team, you know, the third string team being sent on a test tour. So that is definitely a worrying signs for test cricket. So they've all got to make difficult decisions. Here's Leach, he's in and whistles past the outside edge of the bat. Zackerman presses forward. Uh, so that is the end of Leach's over. Again, just one boundary coming from it. Seems to be a bit of a pattern. They bowled tightly, but just there's that one release ball in each over that's keeping things ticking along for Durham. They're now 31 for one with Borthwick on nine and Ackerman on 14. Good delivery, that uh, the last ball of the over from Leach there. But... Uh Unfortunately, from a Worcestershire point of view, it didn't take the edge. But we did see spells this morning when uh, the Worcestershire batters looked well set, didn't they? Not, mm. not a lot was happening, and then just ball from nowhere would would do for, for one of them. It's Holder to continue from the pavilion end. It's the arms pumping, big stride and bowls outside the off stump. And Borthwick has nothing to do with that. Just almost with disdain, just left it and went marching off towards square leg. Two slips in for Holder. Backward point. Cover mid off, mid on. Uh, let's have a look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's one. There's, there's, there's one down there. Yeah, deep cover. Deep cover. And he's actually, uh, he's got fine leg as well. Ball outside the off stump that Borthwick thought about playing at and uh, 
They started to go towards it and then just took the bat away. But just got him thinking a little bit there, which is what Holder will want. Big shoulders as well, and he's very wide shoulders, Holder. Ah, uh, yeah, he is. He's a big, powerful, big, powerful boy. It's, you know, it's funny you talk, when you go through the fielding positions. You're so used to looking from an elevated yeah. position. The first time I commentated over here was for the BBC in at Wormsley. Holder. Round the wicket to the left-handed Borthwick, who plays into the offside and no run. We were in a similar position to this in a tent, but there we didn't. The, the internet was so bad that couldn't get on to the internet. So you couldn't couldn't get an online scoreboard. The only scoreboard was a tiny little thatched uh, cottage at one end that I, I'm not quite sure how often it was changed. So <laughs> that was really challenging. First up, it's for a women's match. Oh, that was, is that John Paul Getty's place? Yes. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't yeah. it? Lovely. Beautiful, beautiful ground. The red kites going above, were they? The, the yeah, the red kites. I loved the fact that, they were, because it, near there they used to film the Vicar of Dibley, so you, you had the Dibley end. I desperately wanted the other <laughs> end to be the Dobley end. It wasn't. Holder bowls and is driven up to mid-off to Dolivera by Borthwick and no run. Yeah, that was... Um, that was something I ticked off my, my list of, of places that I that I'd wanted to commentate from. I uh, did a minor counties game, I think. It was uh, Herefordshire were playing down there. Uh, but it was just the, a gorgeous place. Uh, it was. It, you know, it was funny. The first time I went there, it was my yeah, first time. I wasn't commentating. But I was over here just when I started reporting. Hold it. Bowls and Borthwick just... Drops a dead bat on it and runs the ball out to the offside and they get a comfortable single. There was a, an Ashes match, women's Ashes match, and I was staying at a nearby village and had said it was about 25 minutes walk to the ground or to, to Wormsley Estate. So I set off and I'm going through, you know, climbing stiles and, <laughs> and along hedgerows and all this sort of thing. And I got to the gate and and told them I was there for the match and the guy looked at me like I was the world's biggest idiot I, I was on foot and he said it's three miles to the ground from the gate <laughs> <laughs> hold it over the wicket and driven but uh, feet were planted there uh, Ackerman but uh, drove straight to Jones at cover and there's no run end of the over 32 for one, a lead of 92 now with Borthwick on 10 and Ackerman on on 16. So I, so he stopped at the, the first car that came along and and basically said, there's this idiot Australian who's walked here. Would you mind driving her to the ground? I didn't realise the estate was that big. Anyway, I jumped in the car and turned out it was Anya Shrubsoll's parents. Ah. <laughs> so uh, they obviously... <laughs> Bit reluctant to have this Australian in their car. Uh, they were very, very kind about it, <laughs> but uh, I had no idea how massive that estate is. Yeah, it's a long way. Me cheerily think, oh, it's only a 25-minute <laughs> walk. No, it would have taken a lot longer than that. It's a, it's huge. There's an opera. There's an opera theatre there, outdoor opera theatre right. as well, I believe. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a magnificent place. Joe Leach. He's in and he's around the wicket and that's just clipped down towards long leg by Borthwick. They will get a single. Hang on, is that Borthwick? Or they swapped around. Borthwick's <laughs> the left-hander, uh, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, that was him then, because yeah. that was the left-hander. Yes, that's Ackerman on strike now. I definitely should have brought my sunglasses. Yeah, Squinting. our screen is getting worse than useless yeah. at the moment, isn't it? The screen is. And it, no. It's, uh, it's, it's very, very difficult to see. Bright out there. Well, I think uh, I'll give the listeners a break for a little bit and uh, Martin Emerson will come in to replace me. Oh, you can never be replaced. <laughs> Not at all. So it continues to shine, the sun, and it looks like it's a good time to be batting possibly perfect conditions for batting it's a little bit hard to tell just how much the ball is might be moving 
from our position here, it's not doing enough to really trouble the batters, it would seem. Here's Leach. That's a attempted cover drive by Ackerman. It sort of squirted off the inside part of the bat, went very straight. They won't get a run. There's, uh, I'm not sure there's a little bit of a discussion going on. I see we've got we're back to it to our funky fielding and can't see who the fielder is, but he's basically standing right in front of the non striker in Scott Borthwick. Right next to the pitch. Here's Leach. Oh, and he slashes that one away. Backward of point. That's going to go all the way. He waited for it and it sat up nicely and he punished it. So another boundary to Ackerman. He's seems to be dealing in those at the moment. He moves on to 18. It's 37 for one. Can you see the screen a bit better now? Not really. No. <laughs> it does look a bit, it's quite reminiscent of the bacon fat all over your computer screen. Isn't <laughs> That's it really? not bacon fat. Yeah. It's just, just general life grime. Life grime. That sounds horrendous. <laughs> sounds like a nightclub you never want to go to. <laughs> yeah. Life, life grime. grime. Yeah. In comes the leech, and that's pushed up to Dolivera at mid-off. You yeah. can get cloths and cleaning fluids and stuff yeah, for computers. I you know. know. You can, can't you? Yeah. I, I just have a mother who does it for me every time I go home. Yeah, but well, that's not for another six months or so. I know. I'll have to fly her over to yeah. clean my screen. No, I, mu I must find something. I think some of those are... don't think they're going to come off, some of those. Mm. But yes, yeah, you're right. It's... um. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Life Grime, the yeah. nightclub. Yeah. Bet you get two for one shots there, don't you? Probably three for one. Here comes Leach over the wicket to Ackman, who just punches that one into the covers. No run. I think there's probably all kinds of things you could get there. <laughs> it's a bit warm in here now, isn't it? I'm just taking my body warmer off. I'm, uh, I'm thinking we'll about... We'll be freezing by six o'clock and complaining. Well, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm considering... Taking my fleece off yeah. and going down to the, the double T-shirt. Right. But that, that way, maybe I will feel the warmth more when I have to put it on later. Mm. This is just with the layers. Or do I take off one T-shirt and put the fleece back on? It's, it's hard to say. Choices, choices. In rumbles leech. And he's beaten the batters. He knows he hasn't. He's found the edge. And there's the breakthrough from Leach. Much needed as well. Ackerman. He's flashed at a couple, but this time gets the edge and departs for 18. But more importantly, it's the second wicket to fall for Durham just when Worcester should need to get quick wickets. Ends a partnership of 32 and the lead is 97. I said at the start of this innings, this this game felt like it was running along at a, a rate of knots, and uh, indeed it is. There's a bit in it for the batsmen, but there's still plenty in it for the bowlers, and uh, it's just ref after last week, it's just refreshing to see wickets falling and things happening. Uh, it's certainly. Tom Lungley's uh, that, yes, that demonstrating his keep you up skills. Eh? He's uh, playing keep you up with his knee with the ball. Yeah, that's quite impressive, really. Mm. Nice. So Durham 37 for two. That was the end of the 12th over. It's amazing how many wickets have fallen at the end of overs. The first wicket fell at the end of the second. That was the end of the 12th. Oh. Libby was out for 61 at the end of the 44th. Dolivera was out at the end of the 4th. Oh. One, two, three wickets falling in Durham's first innings at the end of an over as well. I suppose there's normally there's like a one in six chance, isn't there? So. Yeah, you, now you say it like that, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's for the remarks about my screen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a one in six year chance your computer might be cleaned. Oh, no, there's no, no coming back from that. Uh, <laughs> no more questions, Your Honour. <laughs> well.
Holder starting a new over then from the pavilion end. He's coming round the wicket and he's bowled that one at uh, Borthwick, who looks to cut, plays and misses. David Beddingham's the new batsman at the non striker's end. And the question for Worcestershire is can they prove the old cliche of one brings two, just force a little collapse here? Holder in, that's left by Borthwick. The sun continues to shine here in Kidderminster. It's a lovely day. At the minute, it feels a bit warmer than the 12 or 13 they said. I, I, I never know. OK. Um. Paul Pollard has uh, its square leg, but he's got his back to play because he's staring at the car park and the sun is glistening on a lot of car windscreens now. Yeah, notice that. It's like when someone has a little mirror and they flick it in your eye. Holder in again. Borthwick goes for a quick single. He just pushes that one off towards the covers. A mirror. A, m a, a mirror. A mirror. A mirror. A mirror. A mirror. Yeah. The, I thought we going to start talking about that Amir of Kuwait. There. No, do you know? Yeah. It's quite funny. When I uh -huh. when I go back home to Australia, I, you're not going to believe this. People say you sound too English. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, get, I get a lot of um, stick for what they say is my... English twang. Wow. And then people here find that hilarious. Yeah. So it uh, doesn't matter. I'm on a hiding to nothing either way. So when you get back, do you find you talk down at the end of a sentence rather than talk up? <laughs> <laughs> Hold her in. Beddingham defends this one. Rolls short on the offside. I mean, they're not from Queensland. No. Uh, he tends to get more of that in Queensland. But yes, that is a, a real thing with Australians when they talk like this and go up at the end of every sentence. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to leave you for a little bit. OK. Durham, 38 for two here. A lead by 98. In comes Holder. Bellingham leaves that alone. Goes through towards the keeper in front of first slip. And you're up there. Uh, now, so if I can't hear on this one, so you might have to... Uh, well, I can't hear on this one either. You need your headphones in, I think. Have you got your cue turned up? This is played by Beddingham out through mid-wicket. Dot ball. Should be doing an update for listeners to BBC Hereford and Worcester any moment now. It's real trouble seeing that screen now, so uh, I haven't got a clue what the score is. Two. 38. Yeah. As Leach runs in from the railway end, balls the left handed Borthwick, turns it on the leg side, and there's no run. I think. Uh, Doing commentary from Edgar Street on Hereford United this afternoon, so uh, they're coming across. It'll be uh, imminently. Still two slips in for Leach. Important that they keep prodding away. Bedding on the new batter alongside Borthwick. That lead is up to 98 now. It's Leach bowls and is driven through the offside that'll go all the way for four no point in chasing that one as uh, well having said that I think that was that Rob Jones that's dived on it and, and flicked it back from the uh, right on the edge of the boundary really good fielding the outfield has looked quick today and I thought that was going to go all the way but a uh, really good bit of fielding there and they're through for three. 
The lead has gone through the 100 mark though, 101, 41 for two. The 14th over. In the 14th. Leach. Starting to look, look a little bit warm now with that sun uh, shining brightly on top of his shaven head. Bowls and there's no run. Worcestershire have made their second breakthrough. 41 for two now. Durham in their second innings. That's a lead of 101. Borthwick is on 15. Beddingham has just come to the uh, wicket. Uh, uh, he's come in to replace Colin Ackerman, who was caught behind off Leach for 18. They lost the first wicket at five with Alex Lees caught at the second slip by Holder off Smith. Five for one. And then a partnership of 32 between Ackerman and and Borthwick before Leach changed ends and uh, bowled a, a smartish delivery that he just got a little edge to and was well taken behind by Borthwick. But another four to the back to uh, Durham now and they're stretching that lead. They're up to 105. They're 45 for two in their second innings with Borthwick on 15. Beddingham yet to score. So uh, another boundary there is... Nicely driven through the offside. Yeah, the reason you couldn't hear output was they hadn't sent you any. That was why. So <laughs> frantic changing of headphones, but in comes Leach again. This is about leg stump and just steered by Beddingham. And uh, they brought a, a fielder in at short mid on for Beddingham. Which is something that Durham did earlier in the day as well, actually quite quite early in the session, brought in that short mid wicket. Leach one for twenty seven. This is his seventh over. And he gets an inside edge to the next delivery. Wolf squirting to square leg, no harm done, no run. Petting him on four. Still got 50 overs to go today. They're scoring at three and a half an over at the moment. So if they keep on going at that, we're looking another 160 on top of what they've got now. Lead of 260 if they're still batting the end of the day, probably more than that, It'd be closer to 300 you'd have, you'd have thought. It's going to be a big ask in the fourth innings as Leach bowls and driven square on the offside. And that will go all the way to the boundary despite the chase by J Jack, uh, by Libby. And just stretching that lead now. Nice looking shot, but it was there to be, there to be put away. And there's the jumpers, are, they're starting to uh, peel off at the moment. Twelfth man has just taken a couple off. But the end of the over, it's 51 for two. So that uh, boundary brought up the 50. Lead of 111. Beddingham has eight. And Borthwick 15. The men out. So far, Lees went in the second over for four. And Ackerman in the 12th for 18. Just trying to reconnect my uh, laptop here. It's lost the internet and everything else. I think we're back in business. Borthwick facing hold around the wicket here. Back into the crease, turns this one towards mid wicket. No run. Beautiful sunshine here in Kidderminster, it's right above us now. High, high banks of cloud, but lots of blue sky on show as well. Holder comes in and bowls. Borthwick flicks it in the air and away towards the square leg boundary, and it's uh, cut off by Leach, who slides in, coming round from fine leg. Good work from him. Two runs. There have been some big uh, fourth innings chases on this ground in the past, but uh, probably not in April. 
Well, yeah. Just talking to the uh, the ground staff about the the floods across the winter. Holder in again. Played by Hawthorne out towards the covers. No run there. And um, a surprising amount of fish that they found swimming around as well. It's you just don't think of things like that, do you? Just seems to have been constant this week, this uh, winter. Eight floods. That's probably got to be more than the, the wettest two years prior to the last 18 months, 2007 and 2012. I think 2007, that was when Tewkesbury was cut off, wasn't it? Yeah. Hold a bowling to Borthwick. Borthwick turns this to mid-wicket, no run. And David Bradley will tell you of his tale of heroics as he got a lift on a fire engine to become the first reporter to get into Tewkesbury and Upton I think it was after it had been cut off yeah it doesn't take much to cut up to not off uh, well I've got those flood barriers in there now haven't they yeah. like the glass screens down yeah. the, the river front I'm a member of the rowing club in Worcester and we've just lost so much time yeah this, this winter I've never known anything like it in comes Holder and this is pushed away by Borthwick down towards third man for two. Well, my daughter's joined Sunderland Rowing Club. Um, so she did a first heads race a few weeks ago in Durham. And you could see where all the flood water had been around uh, the race course cricket ground and Durham City cricket ground. A lot of the grass was flattened where the water yeah. had been up. Oh, it's been just been awful. Even last summer, I went up the river, quite a long way up the river on my mate's boat, and there were two guys coming down on a little rib. There's Holder Bowles. This is uh, cut out towards uh, the cover boundary by Borthwick for one. And um, they were from Lampton Rowing Club near the cricket ground of Chester Street at Durham, and they'd lost something like 14 oars. There'd been a flood that the mm. previous day in the washed down the river and they were miles down the river and we found a few of them in the you know on the edge of the river bank in the bushes and stuff yeah some uh, just by the very nature of their rowing clubs it's uh, you, you're always liable to having some damage caused and this it's just been constant uh, case of moving boats ready for when the flood comes in and yeah. so they don't smash on on racks so are there? Is that the bolt house near the cricket ground? Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. that one is. But uh, Birmingham University used that now. All oh, right. It used to be years ago. It was the the blind college. Was the blind college? All oh, right. Used to uh, have that boat club, uh, boat house. Because on the other side of the river, you've got the school's boat house as well, haven't you? Uh, got King's School on the far yeah, side. Yeah. yeah. Change your bowler. This has gone down the leg side, and it is uh, Finch. Finch who's come into the attack. So he's replaced the leech from the railway end. Meanwhile, David Beddingham's re. He's uh, trying to adjust his uh, protective wear. So he's uh, currently got his whites down on. He's trying to replace his thigh pad and varying other bits and bobs. Well, we are cricket at yahoo.co.uk if you want to drop us a line on email at Marty Cricket on Twitter. Yeah, it's just been a little bit more stop start this uh, this afternoon, hasn't it? L little hold ups, nothing, mm. nothing drastic, but just that we didn't see this morning. Finch in. And uh, that has gone away inside edge, I think, from Borthwick, wide of the keeper. And down towards the far boundary. Didn't quite make it for four. They run two. Bit of an inside edge as you look to cut the ball. Big man, Finch. Broad shoulders. Looks as though his, his shirt could be a couple of inches, just a little, little bit longer. Exposing yeah. his back as he runs in. 
Durham's lead 118 at 58 for two. Borthwick on 22. Finch comes round the wicket. Borthwick leaves that one. Keeper takes it, tumbling across to the leg side. Yeah, hasn't found his radar yet, has he, Finch? Down the leg side again there. He's been talking to uh, Jason Swift, the match referee, who was with Jason Gillespie a few years ago as part of the coaching setup at Sussex. Jason's just uh, landed the Pakistan job, apparently. In comes Finch again. Borthwick turns this towards mid wicket. There's something electrical causing quite a noise on on this system, isn't it? Right, it's all this Australian stuff. You know. <laughs> I tell you what, you know when she's been, don't you? Yeah, don't you? Just. <laughs> I've only cleared away seven cups of coffee so far today. <laughs> Finch again, round the wicket. That's gone to the keeper. So I think I, I don't drink coffee because it disagrees with me, but if I did, I think if I drank that much, I could jog back to Birmingham <laughs> in about ten minutes. <laughs> uh, are you a coffee man or not? No, I'm a no, tea man. Tea, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've start my day with a couple of cups of tea. Yeah. Last ball of the 16th over. Finch in. And that is a leave under the over. So Borthwick remains on 22. And uh, Beddingham on 8-2 from the over. The lead 118 here on the BBC. Yeah, just striving for... His line and length there, Adam Finch in that first over. But no harm done. A couple of runs coming from it. But a change of bowling at the pavilion end. Matthew Waite coming on. So the fourth bowler to be used by Brett D'Oliveira. Waite earlier today made a, a quick naught. Came out after... Holder and Libby had seen it through, through the first half an hour. But then uh, the second man out of the day caught behind off rain, as I say, for naught. So looking to have an impact on the game now with the ball. First innings. Nine overs, one for 53. Here bowls outside the off stump. Taken low down by Roderick. With Bellingham having nothing to do with that. So didn't play in the first two games, wait. I think he played in did, one. Did he play he? one of I them? I think he played one of them, yeah. To just looking at it. It's normally very pretty tight, but going at uh, five and over in the first innings. You've got more info to your hand, your fingers there than than me so trying to do it by memory which is never the best thing to do his next delivery is played defensively into the offside and no run has uh, had a good first season last year did uh, Matthew Waite first full season and quite a turnover of staff in the last couple of years at New Road and he comes now, with stride to the wicket, and driven up to mid on, and there's no run. Just look at the field for weight, two slips. It's got deep cover, backward point, cover, mid off, mid on, mid wicket, and deep square leg, who's just taking a swig, Adam Finch. He played in the opening game at Birmingham and got 37 and took none for 37. Yeah. Next delivery, driven. Up to mid on again by Beddingham. And no run. It's important that they're not taking wickets, they keep, keep it tight for Worcestershire with that lead building, 118 at the moment. 
plenty of time left in the game, although, as Martin was saying, the forecast for Monday isn't great. This ball is full length, cut away, down to Joe Leach at deep cover. And they'll come through for two comfortable runs, lead up to 120, betting them into double figures on 10 from 13 deliveries. As I say, four bowlers used so far. Uh, five, actually, now, with uh, weight coming on. Leach, Smith, Holder, Finch and Wait. Just the two wickets to fall, though, on five and 37. This is on leg stump, flicked away by Beddingham. Down to Finch. At deep backward square. And that's the end of Wait's first over. And Durham, as I say, with a lead of 120, are 60 for one, for 60 for two, with Beddingham on 11, and Borthwick on 22. Three three runs from that first Matthew Waite over. How many overs left in the day? 47 to go. The lead is 121 here on the BBC. So T at 32. It's got a fair way to go to that. Finch comes in. Right arm over. Balls. Betting and plays it out into the covers. Didn't look as if he was actually flowing then, Finch, when he ran up to the wicket. He almost put a yeah, half not, stride in. Well, he's not happy with it. With the foot marks, as he was just showing Paul Pollard there something. Probably still a little bit greasy underfoot. They've uh, they had plenty of sawdust out there yesterday. I see the sawdust on the field again today. Yeah, I think I saw Holder uh, bring some up um, early on in the innings at the pavilion end. Jason Holder brought some when Joe Leach was bowling. Bowler comes in. And that's played to Leach by Beddingham to mid on, no run. Yeah, that, that run up was smoother for that delivery from Finch. I think he just lost it the previous previous delivery. He's changing the field, pushing point back onto the boundary. Finch bowls driven by Beddingham down towards third man in front of the bar at the far end of the ground. One run. It really is a, a traditional cricket setting, isn't it, today? It's very quiet and respectful around the ground. No, no singing, jeering or anything like that. It's just more nice old and style. Yeah, yeah, it is. And we've got your rowdy Chelmsford T20 crowd on a Friday night. Or oh, Leicester last year was a astonishing the noise there. Finch comes round the wicket this time. And balls. It's defended by Borthwick. Borthwick on 22 from 46 deliveries. Beddingham 12 from 17. And uh, this partnership at the moment Sturham lead by 122 runs is currently 25 from around about 35 balls Finch past the umpire he balls and that's a short one Borthwick ducks out the way of it it's gone through to the keeper a little ripple of applause there for that delivery There were a couple of buzzards circling around above us earlier on, but I can't see if they're there anymore now. Riding round and round on the thermals. Finch. Round the wicket comes in and bowls. Forward comes Borford. He plays that to point. No run there. One ball left of the over. 
Finch took three wickets in the first innings, three for 37 in ten and a half overs. Came back, didn't he? Took uh, took the wickets of Rain, Parkinson, and delayed her. Let's wait to start the new over from the pavilion end. Ball into Beddingham outside the off stump, and uh, has nothing to do with that. There's this, well, as you always get from slips and fielders close in the, the U's and the R's but uh, Bettingham had nothing to do with that he was almost walking away towards square leg be, uh, before the ball had gone past him it was uh, wide enough for him to uh, have no concerns about it still the two slips in wait bowls one off stump and just guided to backward point by Beddingham and no run. This weather really is a bonus today. I was uh, yesterday in the knowledge I was coming here. I was walking the dog at lunchtime and it was cold. I thought it was going to be a long day in the in the cold there. Yeah. It? But uh, very pleasant. Wait in again. Beddingham just plays. Back to the bowler who deflects it. I think did it go onto the stumps? It yeah, did. Yeah. But I think he's in this over looking more comfortable. Way to that first one was very much a loosener, and trying to find his his radar. He looks as though he's running in with a bit more purpose now, which means he'll probably drop the next one short and be pulled away for four. Beddingham right-handed, goes down and waits. And this is cut away down to Leach on the cover boundary. And they're through for two more. Takes the score on to... 64. 64. <laughs> oh. I mean, my eyes aren't, aren't the best at it. At, uh, uh, I'm going to take a photograph the next time you do that. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, trying to... Get over towards the screen to see it because you can't see the the, uh, the board on the far side because that's just uh, you can see there's a screen there and you can see there's yellow yellow print on it but what it says I haven't got a clue. Wait into Beddingham again, outside off stump, and Beddingham has nothing to do with it again. So could you we'll just get him to play a little bit? My untrained ear, I think I can hear a great tit in a tree nearby. <laughs> And South Shields are leading 1-0. I can't even remember who they're playing, but they're trying to reach the playoffs, aren't they? So. They came up last year, didn't they? Yeah. It's Kevin Phillips left, didn't he, in the, at the yeah. end of the season? I did see where he ended up. He's gone to Hartlepool. Uh. Hartlepool? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Next ball again outside the off stump and taken down by his boot laces by Roderick. And end of the over. Beddingham remains on 14. Borthwick 22 weight has bowled two overs for five runs at 60 four, four for two yeah right I'm going to jump off now and uh, Mal can come on and don't leave your cups on there I've already removed <laughs> nine of them <laughs> yes don't <laughs> don't, don't, don't no don't plead in it no that's, this is my desk area <laughs> don't plead innocence <laughs> So as one goes out and one comes in, prepare for the carnage of tripping over and <laughs> as Finch starts a new over from the railway end, rolls a short delivery that Borthwick just ducks out of the way of. I think it didn't go as high as he thought he was going to. He, he ducked down and in the end, the, uh, even in the ducking position, the ball only went through at about shoulder height. Oh, pass you your laptop and... Wash my hands afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Must be some sanitizer around somewhere. This is basic. This is basically <laughs> bullying at this point. Finch in a game, and it's run down very fine to third man for four runs. And I think he lost his run again. Then Finch, he's uh, 
he was almost decelerating as he got to to the crease. Oh, it's not quite the same. Am I coming through there? Yeah, I can't yeah. hear myself. Yeah. But, uh, it's not quite the same situation as it was when they kept losing their run up at uh, Edgebaston in the first week where the wind was so bad. I saw, I saw bowlers pull out of their run up more than I've seen in any other game ever. It's Finch again. Right arm round. And it's punched out to point and there's no run. Not at the moment looking threatening the bowling. And they picked up those two early wickets, two, 37 for two, but now 68 for two. Borthwick's the man on strike, he's on 26 from 51 balls. Finch was probably one who bowled some of the better spells with the Kookaburra ball. He's in again, round the wicket, driven up to Leach and mid-off, no run. But of course he, he spent last summer in Adelaide playing uh, club cricket for Sturt, uh, which is one of the Adelaide clubs. So he was just living at the, uh, in the foot of the Adelaide Hills, which is a, a beautiful spot and uh, really enjoyed his time playing in club cricket there. He said to me, he doesn't know why more players don't go over and do that in December and January. Next to the breeze, pulled away. Uh, Jones is down on the square leg boundary and uh, restricts them to one. There used to be a lot of it, didn't there? Used to be yeah. a lot playing uh, club cricket over there. Yeah, that's certainly uh, not the worst way. I mean, now you've, there are more for a lot of players. There are opportunities for T10 tournaments or T20 mm. league stuff around uh, at that time of year, but be worse things to do. Rob jo Jones doing the fielding there. He is every man. I don't know if you've seen the video that uh, Worcestershire yeah. put out. Absolutely brilliant uh, little bit of social media stuff. Finch bowls and Beddingham just plays him off his toes. Lovely shot for four runs. Just through mid wicket. Over pitched and uh, didn't, didn't hit it hard. Just timed it, guided it. And it raced away for four runs. End of the over. That lead now 133, 73 for two, with Borthwick 37. Yeah, just nice, nice wrists on the that shot. Not too much, just a little bit, and uh, just really kissed the ball with his bat. Uh, yeah. So the, the video was essentially uh, Brett Dolivera welcoming people and showing them around Kidderminster, and he arrives in his car, and Rob Jones is there directing him to park and the next thing is look at he's in the shop and uh, Rob Jones is in the shop uh, displaying all the merchandise then the next thing is out in the middle Rob Jones is on his hands and knees in the pitch trimming the grass with the uh, with great precision actually Giles has just walked past us and given us the royal wave and there, you know he's all over the place yeah. he's, he's he's everywhere um so very very entertaining yeah. video brilliant stuff from from the media department at, at Worcestershire a lot of people have, have mentioned that little video but Rob Jones he's <laughs> every he's everywhere does yeah. everything I, he looked like a man that didn't need talking into doing it <laughs> yes well it's a, a actor as well <laughs> but he uh, did a, a good job and it was very entertaining I think it's really good because I over the years have been very critical of how um, clubs have just almost ignored supporters, um, but this, you know, the social media age means they've had to change that. In comes Finch, and that one's punched out to mid off where the skipper Dolivera is patrolling, gives a, a shine as he gets up. Um, but it has changed in, in recent years, not just social media, but uh, stuff that I know from a Worcestershire point of view, doing you know, meet. Uh, fans forums or, or members meetings and it's um, a lot more open than, than it used to be. You have to move with the times. Certainly social media does give fantastic access and insight, insight I think for fans as Finch is into Borthwick. He's just up on his toes, clips that 
towards mid wicket. And a diving save means there won't be any runs there. And yeah, no, there's some great things. So it uh, was, I think, Knots used to do those brilliant cricket. Cricket has landed. Do they still do those? I've not seen it. I don't know. Uh, they were fantastic. Uh, they do a big production at the start of the the blast. So I have to look out for that this year. I used to see those in Australia and think they were really impressive. Borthwick waits. Finch is in and he's just whipped that away fine. That's four runs. It was four runs almost before it left the bat. So Borthwick continuing to find that rope. And a score swelling. That lead swelling. Uh, now 77 for two and Borthwick moves on to 31. 11 boundaries in the inning so far in uh, just over 20 overs. I imagine it will make Worcester, Worcestershire reflect. They probably had some of the best of the batting conditions yeah. this morning. And uh, I guess they were, were into the sort of middle, lower order. Yeah, I think that was the problem that... Um, being four down overnight, mm. that was a big fifth wicket uh, that they needed to break. In comes Finch, and again, that's turned to the leg side, just behind square leg. Diving stop prevents the runs on that occasion. I'm looking at the scoreboard. Uh, I didn't see the four that fell yesterday, but uh, they weren't rushed shots. I said Libby was the one, really, that uh, was out without playing a shot. Other than that, you know, it's, it wasn't rush batting or anything. They yeah. just... Kept, kept it tight and induced the odd mistake and, and the odd delivery and the odd good ball this morning. It was just disciplined bowling. Well, when you've got one, one batter hit on the helmet yeah. and the ball ricocheting onto the stumps, in comes Finch. Press forward and defence is Borthwick. No rum. Yeah, that was a particularly unlucky one, but well, I say unlucky, but they were able to extract some life from yeah. the pitch. We saw s some judicious shall we say short bowling short pitch bowling and it was uh, it was effective what it means now is it Durham has got themselves into a very good position 77 for 2 Finch in over the wicket and just gently turned to mid wicket by Borthwick scampers through for a single that man who's everywhere Rob Jones does the backing up yeah, another over it ticks by. We've got 43 remaining today, so uh, 11 to go until the tea interval. What are we now? Half, half past three. Five runs from that Matthew Waite over. Three overs for ten. Hasn't asked too many questions of the batters. Uh, and probably the same you could say for, for Finch at this end, at the railway end. So he'll be striving here. Just not too, not look really comfortable in his run up. Now, as I said earlier, right early in the innings, there's often just five dot balls and a boundary. And it set that tone early on with that release ball. Borthwick on strike now, as Finch is in around the wicket, plays it with a very straight bat to Dolivier at mid on, no run. So, yeah, it, right from the start of their innings it just felt there was that little release it meant they were just sitting back and waiting for the ball to be over pitched or perhaps just be given a little bit of width straight down the leg side and those were the balls that they would put away can they dry things up a little bit more here Finch is in and that's driven but only as far as the bowler's foot. And drops from his hand to his feet. Does a little bit of soccer. Oh, sorry, I'm not allowed to say soccer. I'm in England. <laughs> sorry, I do get just do do get confused sometimes. Football. Correct. <laughs> You're just lucky. I've been saying 78 for two and not two for 78. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I heard Martin Emerson chortle behind me. I did do that a few times last week. I, I will confess, Borthwick taps his bat and waits as Finch is in. 
And he's up on his toes. Sends that ball down to mid on. No rum. So how many weeks have you been over here now? I got over here in mid-March, which was early for me. I don't normally come over here. I'm really struggling with the cold. I realise my flat does not have great heating. <laughs> and I'd be sat there at night, wrapped up in wearing a beanie hat and and wrapped in a blanket, thinking, gosh, why am I here? <laughs> Here's Finch. Bowls that one, and it's sent out in front of point. So no run again. And what did you left behind? What kind of... That was lovely when I left Australia. I came via New York. I was commentating on a very interesting little tournament. A guy called John Boy, who does all these breakdowns of different sports, loves cricket. It's always interesting hearing an American breakdown cricket. As Finch is in, those sharp elbows pumping. That uh, is driven firmly, but only as far as cover. Uh, so he's he does all. He's fascinated by cricket, and he's invented this this sport that's kind of a mix between indoor cricket and baseball. Uh, Darren Sammy had commentated on it the first time they did it last year, but he was at the PSL. So for whatever reason, they asked me to go and commentate with a guy who usually commentates on baseball. So it was all a, a big hybrid thing, and it was absolute mayhem, but an awful lot of fun. Here's Finch bowls, and it's a full delivery, but Borthwick is on top of it quickly. It was a, a better ball, though, just angling in. Might have nipped in a little bit, too. That is better from Finch, because that yeah. is a maiden over. There was no release ball there, so that's what they've been looking for. Can they replicate it at the other end and just try to build something? I see uh, Stuart Laws going over coaching mm. in the States. Mm, yeah, coach, new coach of the, the men's side. Uh, Julia Price, the Australian, was over there coaching the women's side there for a while. But yes, Stuart Law heading over there. So. Um, what was the appetite like when you were over there for? I know it was hybrid. You would you would look at, but did you? We were able to gauge what the what the appetite is. Well, it was interesting because uh, the, some of the players involved were major league cricket. So every major league cricket um, franchise over there had contributed at least one player. Wait starts a new over and just dropped into the offside by Beddingham a no run. And and there was certainly curiosity. Uh, from from the people who were involved in it, from the the non uh, cricket side, and I guess what it was doing because it was this hybrid, you know, they had two batters in at one time, and they they had running between the wickets, and they had wides, um, various things like that, and and overs as well. So so it was sort of introducing, I guess, some cricket mm. terminology as much as anything else. Wait, bowls, leg stump, and flicked away. Jones will chase it down towards the boundary and they're through for two takes a score on to 80 for two lead of 140 betting them on to 20 but I guess it's, it's, it's interesting just in that John Boy has um, got a very baseball heavy um, audience so it's I noticed that when he when he put something up he did an, an, a remarkable breakdown of the of the um Glenn Maxwell 200 at the World Cup. Next delivery, full length and driven through the gap on the offside. There is a man out on the boundary and Hose is the man there and restricts them to one. And uh, he did one of Shamar Joseph of the, the final moments and the, the whole builds up to the end of that test match. So, and then I'll, I'll see him put up stuff, of, you know, some village fielding at the European Cricket League. So it sort of covers all sorts of things. Yeah. But uh, I'm sure it's, it's, he, he cares about it passionately and takes such an interest. And that tends to rub off onto your audience. So I notice that when he does things like that, there'll be a lot of comments from people saying, I've absolutely no idea what's going on in this sport, but I'm quite interested to find out more. It's a big question, isn't it? If, with the US, first time the that they're hosting an, an ICC tournament. Wait, game full length that uh, 
might have just beaten the batter outside the off stump, the left-handed uh, Borthwick. Not sure if he played it or not, difficult to tell from our angle, but again, didn't get up a great deal there, taken low down by Roderick behind. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a big question for the game. You know, they'd love to make inroads into the US. Whether or not they can move be beyond the expat uh, population where it is still very, very popular. Borthwick on his toes in next delivery. He's punching to Jones at uh, cover and there's no run. But of course that expat population is, is much bigger than people realise. Absolutely huge. You'd be amazed at, at the number of cricket fans there are in the US and might have their roots in other countries but are a huge consumer of all things cricket. There might be people listening right now in the <laughs> US or watching on the stream. You just never know. Wait to complete the over. It's turned backward a square on the leg side. They're through for one. They'll come back for a second. And at the end of Wait's fourth over, Durham are 83 for two. Borthwick 34 going along quite nicely and comfortably. Benningham is on 21. From 27 deliveries and that lead now is 143. Yeah and that five runs coming from that over it, it just has released all the pressure that was created by Finch at this railway end so they need to try and find a way to just squeeze perhaps for a couple of overs and just keep that on not uh, not relent. You've just seen it. The helmet being yeah, a bit Run of spin on. for the first time today. Baker yeah. coming on at the railway end. Yes. So maybe this is a change. Is this the first time we've seen spin today? Yeah. I think it is. Yeah. Was there any spin? First I don't know innings, yes, there was a little bit. I don't think he took a wicket. No, uh, three overs for nine runs. Okay. So not too much. And it is going to be Josh Baker now from the railway end. First ball is swept and swept hard. <laughs> and in fact, it's gone all the way. Well, that's one way to greet a spinner when they come into the attack. And Beddingham just dispatched him nicely. Yeah, you can't bowl outside leg stump like that. He's come straight on as a, a spinner. And the indications are given we didn't see uh, any spin in the, the Worcestershire first innings that... To date, there hasn't been much in it. So you've got to be accurate, if nothing else. Here comes Baker again. And again, he's gone down the leg side. Again, he has swept. And again, it's four runs. So that's back to back. And Baker is going to have to adjust his line pretty quickly. Full toss, wasn't it, I think? Full, full ah. toss, leg side. Well, that, he's got to adjust his length and his yeah. line then. <laughs> Her <laughs> eyes are better than mine. I can't watch the whole thing in my... Yeah, just just met it on the full. Played it well, though. OK, Baker around the wicket is the left armour. This is a better ball, and he just pushes this one into the leg side. They'll run a single. So it was Baker that was out. The ball running down to the stumps off his... His helmet earlier on today. Obviously, no ill effects from that, given that he's out there bowling now. They might say that's where his <laughs> radar's gone. <laughs> it's a blow on the head earlier. Yes, I'm sure. I'm sure he won't be making that excuse. I tell you what, that sun's gone in. It goes a few degrees cooler, doesn't it? I'm thinking about putting my fleece back on. I, I actually got brave and, and <laughs> took it off for a wee while. So Borthwick, the left armour, and he's over the wicket, the left armour, Josh Baker. So it's lefty to lefty. He's played into the offside, no run. Yeah, Bellingham's going at runner ball now with those uh, nine he's picked up off the first three balls of the over. Baker in again. It's a full ball, and it's just driven, beats a diving fielder at point. They have got protection in the deep, so it'll just get the one run. It's expensive over so far. Ten runs coming off it with one ball remaining. So this is not the uh, increase in pressure that they were looking for, but maybe they're hoping. 
some aggression, all-time aggression might work. Bettingham, he's off the back foot and pressing that one back to the bowler. So a dot ball to finish, but 10 runs after Baker is introduced into the attack. And is that it? That's T, is it? Uh, is it? They're all walking off. Has that come back come from nowhere? I was just yep. happily going along, but no, it's T. It is. Uh, took us all by surprise, I think, <laughs> I think that one. So 153 is the lead. Borthwick 35, Beddingham 30, 93 for two. So uh, after T, we will have another 40 overs to go. So a long final session, but uh, it's been very much Durham's day so far, having uh, bowled Worcestershire out uh, before lunch this morning for... 184 lead first innings lead of 60 they lost a couple of early wickets but Borthwick and Beddingham have uh, steadied the ship and built that first innings lead uh, second innings lead now to 153 and at T they're 93 for two so we'll have a little break here and we'll be back with you in around 20 minutes Thank you. 
Okay. in their second innings 93 for two that's a lead of 153 and uh, after a good start to the uh, second innings where Worcestershire reduced the visitors to 37 for two a partnership of 56 unbroken so far between uh, Beddingham and Borthwick has put Durham into the driving seat uh, 37 for two after Lees went uh, with a score on five he was out for four caught by Holder at second slip off Smith and then Ackerman caught behind off Leach for 18 that's after Worcestershire were bowled out uh, just before lunch for 180 84. Top scorer there was uh, Jake Libby, who was out uh, without playing a shot for 61. He'll be annoyed with himself for that, but nonetheless, a good innings from him. Rob Jones made 32 yesterday. Today, Nathan Smith, 33 not out, and 18 from both Holder and uh, also from Finch at the end. So 60 was the deficit on first innings. After reducing them to 37 for two, there would have been high hopes for Worcestershire, but that partnership unbroken so far of 56 means a T. Durham lead by 153 on 93 for two.
Welcome back to Chester Road, where we're set for a 40 over final session of the day, all being well, as long as the weather holds off and there's no uh, indication that's going to change on what's been a, a bright sunny day here in uh, Kidderminster. And uh, an interesting last session it should be. And uh, we'll have a good idea of where this game's heading, you would feel, by the close tonight, with uh, a lead of 153 for Durham at the moment with eight second innings wicket standing. Uh, I'm Chris Williams and with me is Mel Farrell and Mel it's uh, just got away from Worcestershire a little bit in the uh, the latter stages of that afternoon session. Yeah it did I think the thing that has um, been clear is just that they've been unable to build consistent pressure. They've got a couple of wickets but just too often or not, they might have bowled a good over but for one release ball. And uh, that has, has just allowed Durham to cruise along into a pretty good position. OK, well, I'm going to leave you for a few minutes after that quick introduction <laughs> and uh, you'll be joined by Martin Emerson. Here's Nathan Smith and Borthwick lets that one go straight through to the keeper first up. Smith, a New Zealand import who really has been impressive since joining Worcestershire this year. A New Zealander. He has, uh, he's taken wickets, he scored runs. He batted quite nicely earlier today. It was the not out batter. This time he's strayed down the leg side. That's going fine. I think that might go all the way. My vision is obscured, but I can see the umpire signalling that that's another boundary. So this is very symptomatic of what has been happening. They've just been allowed the luxury of waiting for the bowlers to give them a bit of width, straight down the leg side, or over pitch, and then they're putting those ones away. Nathan Smith with that distinctive baby mullet. He's in again over the wicket. And that's a big, big drive. A strangled shout. He ended up on one knee, did Borthwick. He had a proper flash at that one, playing a miss. And, uh, I think the appeal was coming from Baker in mid-wicket. Oh yeah. Eh? Good afternoon, Martin Emerson. Did you see the cake that they brought around? Yes, I did. Did I, you have any of it? I, well, what I did, someone in there, I said, I can't, you know, I, mm. I can't, I can't do that. And then someone said, would you have half? And I said, can I have the sm a small half, which was basically about a third. Mm -hmm. So there's the end little triangle bit. Smith is in over the wicket. Again, down the leg side, tries to flick it away, does Borthwick, but doesn't make contact. Uh, so I just had the little bit so yeah. that I could taste so it. So that was still probably about 350 watts worth of power. <laughs> well, then I did. I actually did another lap of, uh, the, right. of the ground, so uh, which probably it, uh, worked off about a crumb. <laughs> it was a heavy piece of cake, that. I only had a little bit, but uh, it, uh, had, it had all kinds in it, didn't it? It was pretty spectacular, I have mm. to say. So, yeah, I, I just had a little bit at the end just to have a little taste. Here's Smith, and this time he does make contact. He's clipped that off his toes behind square leg. They'll come back for a comfortable two. These two had put on 56 by the time T came. Just realised that four earlier on in the over was leg buys as well. I was craning my neck. I can't see around that corner. Mm -hmm. I was craning, trying to see. He didn't see the umpire's signal, so... But you can the same. look at the monitor. I, I, I mm. can, except it's not always very clear either, no, as right. we've discussed it. One it's of the camera crews on it. Got a camera on a tripod just at the side of the pavilion down there. Smith in, bowls, and that has played nice late shot. and beautifully. Just caress that one uh, behind point. It's going all the way down to deep third for four runs. So four more coming to Borthwick who is now absolutely racing along. He's on 41, approaching his half century at the end of the over. Has that brought up, I think, the 100? It has. Yeah. 103 for two. 
So for taking it into three figures and the lead is swelling rapidly. Borthwick so on... 25 overs gone. Yes, 25 overs gone. So they were going at a decent clip, just over four and over. Borthwick on 41. Betting them on 30 off just 31. So that leads 1-6-3 now. New over, and it's Finch back into the attack from the railway end, and that's away down the, the pavilion boundary for four. Off the bat of Beddingham. Going to drive out to the boundary. It's just too easy to get, just too easy to find that boundary at the moment. Mm. They're rattling along here, Durham, playing with intent. Finch. Bolden made an over just before T. Comes in again now and bowls. And that is uh, played out towards deep mid wicket by Beddingham for one. So Durham move on to 108 for two. Well, 39 overs remaining today then. This partnership now is uh, worth 71 from 81 balls. And in fact, that maiden over from Finch just before T, and I'm able to look at it, is the only maiden over of the innings so far. Yeah. So in the 26th over, so that really does tell you the story. In comes Finch. Borthwick plays the ball up to mid off, no run. This is a 213th first class match. Scott Borthwick, 34 yesterday in terms of age. This is his 153rd for Durham. So uh, he started it with 8,099 runs for Durham. So he's added 41 so far today. Someone else, oh, David Beddingham's birthday's on Monday. Mm. David Beddingham. And Alex Lees was last, was it last week, I think, Alex Lees? No. That one's driven out through the covers. And that is four runs from Borthwick. Beautiful drive, quite square. Lovely timing on that one. That's five boundaries in the last three overs. Mm-hmm. So as I said, it's too easy to find them at the moment. Got to find a way to dry this up somehow, just as a a starting point. They said they're not having to take any risks. That's the thing. It doesn't feel like they're having to take any risks anyway. Finch in again. Borthwick up on his toes. Plays the ball to point. No run there. Yeah, better ball that time. Angling in and just targeting the stumps. But it they're just yeah, they're not they're not having to go out of their way. They're they're just while well, they're playing, yes, with the intent to score and and being re reasonably aggressive. I think they're being offered enough balls to be able to do that without too much risk. Finch around the wicket. Borthwick leaves that one alone. It bounces off the keeper and they're going to get a bye here. Yeah, it was an unusual leave. Yeah. Both elbows in the air. The ball just strayed down the leg side. So, end of the over. 38 remaining today here on the BBC. Borthwick on 45. Betting him 35. Durham lead. By 173 against Worcestershire. Day two here at 113 for two. And uh, 10 runs coming off that last over. So that really isn't helping Worcestershire at all. Just seeing those runs leaking so easily. I'm just wondering where they might turn. They tried a, a little bit of spin with Josh Baker. That proved to be expensive. He came in and bowled. 10 runs coming off his first over. I saw Callum Parkinson uh, bowling when I went for my little turn around the ground at tea time. Had a little hurdle uh, as he was uh, bowling, just to leap over as he approached the crease, which is interesting. He was getting it to turn two. Here's Nathan Smith. First ball, just played late. Uh, there's a fielder at backward point. So it doesn't get past him. Yeah, he bowled a lot of overs last week in that 
game against Warwickshire for very little reward. David Parkinson, but I thought he actually bowled quite well. <laughs> two, two for 206. First Doran player to go for more than 200, but he, he was basically Oof. taking one for the team on a lifeless yes. wicket, wasn't he? With the ball not doing anything. Smith is in and bowls. Again, that goes to your backward point. No rum for Borthwick. But he was out there. He was actually really getting it to turn quite, quite a bit uh, when he was bowling at tee. I wonder if we might see him. Will he be needed at some point at the moment? Everything very much going Durham's way. Smith in, bowls over the wicket, left alone by Borthwick. It's just angling that one across the batter. Not tempted. Hear the chatter there. Jason Holder, very, very vocal. He's the only one in its slip at the moment. Took a terrific catch at second slip earlier to dismiss Lees. And now he's the only one still in the slip. Smith in again. It's short. It's pulled watchfully, but there's a fielder down at fine leg, so they'll just get a single. This is better from Smith. It's the first run off the over. The question is if they can sustain any of that pressure. Rejig. And for field at the moment, is the Worcestershire not wearing all their cable knits? I think that's a bit soft. It means that they don't have numbers on their bats. Mm -hmm. Expect a better. I've lost my fleece. You've lost your fleece? No, I mean I've lost as ah. and I've taken it off. Right. <laughs> I was going to say, it's on the chair behind you. <laughs> Smith runs in. This time it's a fuller delivery. It's just turned around the corner. Just probably on a length. Turn around by Beddingham. Just got, a, just got a bit of cloud cover at the minute and it means that the sun's gone in. It's just taking the temperature down a few notches. It might be... Dos tres noches. <laughs> I might be um, putting the fleece back on. Yeah. I'm not yet the case where no. I've pulled out the the fluffy ear warmers. No. Smith in again. Down on one knee, trying to drive, but it's actually just come off the outside edge of the bat. He's flashed, and it's gone all the way to the boundary for four. Vacant third man once again. So there's that release. Smith had given up mm. one run in that over, and then on the final ball, they managed to get a boundary. So Scorton continues to rattle along for Durham. A colleague tweeted from the Stadium of Light at halftime. There's a game of association football going on at the Stadium of Light at halftime. It's Sunderland nil, Millwall nil. Events nil. So sounds like nothing much has happened there. <laughs> Here's Finch, railway end bowling to Borthwick, who whips this off his hips out towards deep square leg. Just the one run, there's a fielder on it pretty quickly. So uh, a couple of my daughters have gone with one of their friends to that one, and the little ones there so she didn't want to go initially because she said she was that bored the last time so she'll be really bored today. Oh dear. <laughs> bored to tears. I hope they've taken plenty of sweets with them. I don't think people here would be bored. They're enjoying yeah. sitting sitting around watching this today. Mm -hmm. Decent sized Moving along. Crowd. They've seen plenty of action. I think they'd rather Worcester should be on the other side of it. But a long way to go of course. Finch comes in and bowls to Beddingham. Beddingham plays the ball safely back up towards Dolavira at uh, mid-off. So Durham 119 for two, lead by 179. So they bowled Worcestershire out earlier for 
184 to give themselves a 60 run lead and uh, Libby was the top scorer with 61 but left a delivery from Paul Coughlin which crashed into his stumps Coughlin taking three for 42 Potts took three for 40 and the last man to go was Finch LPW to Potts for 18 Finch right arm over now to Beddingham who drives at that and is driven it wide of third man where there's a good piece of fielding way down in front of the the bar far corner of the ground so they run two but uh, Holder was the first to go never really got forward to a ball from Ben Rain and he was bowled for 18 then Wait was caught behind off Ben Rain for a six ball duck Libby bowled by Coughlin for 61 Baker was bowled by Bastelader and he got a short one which was a bit quick a bit too quick for him and he I think he just lost sight of the ball and was taken by surprise and tried to turn away from it it crashed off the grill of his helmet and smashed onto the stump so he was out for two Leach was caught by Beddingham at deep mid-wicket uh, diving for seven this one's played away towards the covers no run there and that was off the bowling of Potts and then finished the last man out so uh, three bowling points each in this game. Nobody's picked up a batting point and Durham had a 60 run lead. At the start of the Durham second innings, end of the second over, Alex Lees was on four when he edged a ball low towards second slip and Holder took the catch. So he was out at the end of the over. Durham five for one. And then Ackerman, 18, was on the board against his name when he was caught behind off Joe Leach. This is a drive from bedding him out through into the cover area for one run. And uh, we have our first loser of the day, as Chris has put his coat on. Oh, that's, you know, that's yeah. pretty soft, isn't it? You yeah. should, you're hard because you're yeah. from you know, where, where it's really cold. But I'm still fleeceless. Yeah. Hey. Eh? These, these southerners, <laughs> what are they like? Eh? Finch round the wicket then. Borthwick on 47. Pulls at that. And uh, that might go for four. No, there's a man cutting it off at long leg. He'll just get the one. Mm, thought about the second there. That would keeps the strike though. So the partnership creeps up to 87 from 98 balls. Another five runs coming from that over. There's just no pressure anywhere. You've got to find a way to apply it. It's going to be very difficult. It feels like it's a bit, a bit more of a hush come over the ground at the moment. It's really have yeah. pay a lot of tribute to. Maybe it's everybody falling asleep after that cake. <laughs> yeah, well that well that'll do it. But they've done such a good job. Short notice, getting this place ready. Mm. It's a lovely ground, and they've really done well. I mentioned you weren't here earlier when I was talking about how impressed I was with the posh toilets. Yeah. Posh portaloos. Um, Chris did say that. Was it Chris saying or you saying that there was a, a television in the men's? Is it? It wasn't in the women's. Yeah, apparently. There's I, I haven't a, seen that. A TV in the the, the men's portaloo. Wow. So you can watch the stream. Ah. Watch the stream. <laughs> That's yeah. the stream. Uh -huh. The live stream. The live, st That's the live take stream. That's going to Oh, no. Uh, first ball from Smith is just punched <laughs> into the covers. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, Are you my. Right? Yeah, I'm fine. Um, so there you go. Uh -huh. <laughs> Of course, there are better views to be had in uh, in the men's toilets in various really? places of the world. <laughs> no, I think you want to stop now while you can. <laughs> no, this is... No, hang on a second. Stay with me. Stay with me. Here's Smith. He's around the wicket. That's just punched down to dive here at mid-off. No run. No, Where so do you go on all day? Well, I've been wanting to get into uh, the men's toilets at the MCG really? in the committee room for years. Oh, yes, right. yes. Because I had been told it, it had the best view from a from a loo in, oh. in the world of cricket. Right. So I finally managed to 
to let them to get them to let me go in there and and film something <laughs> during the last ashes in Australia. You went into film men in the men's time. No, in comes Smith. Mm-hmm. And that's just outside the off stump play. Late beats a diving fielder. And uh, they're going to pick up There's a couple 50. of runs. And that does bring up the 50 for Borthwick. 89 balls. He's got there at a rapid pace. It's been pretty classy, but it's also been pretty trouble free. Uh, five fours. And that is the 87th time in first class cricket he's reached 50. So that's a lot of times. So. Let me just make it clear. I did not go into the men's toilets when there were men in there. Like, they were empty. 64th time for Durham. We were we were filming. Oh, here comes Smith is in, and that's again gently pressed into the offside. No run. And the thing that makes it great is there is a, a urinal right there against the wall, and there's a window, and it looks right out. You're basically behind the bowler's arm mm-hmm. at the MCG. How good is that? I presume it's uh, mirrored glass, is it? No, I, but I don't think. I think it's at a height that right. no, like it's not like anyone walking past can see no. in. So that, that was a, an ambition I'd had for a while to to get in there. there you Here's are. Smith. Oh, and he's played pressed forward at that one, and completely missed it. So a little bit of a way movement that Smith is finding. Been a good over from him so far. I wasn't meaning to. If anybody to. else has an ambition to visit a toilet, feel free to get in touch. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> you can go in the toilets and watch the live stream. <laughs> Heard it all now. Oh, Chris dear is being dear. attacked by a hoverfly. <laughs> Smith, final ball of his over. And it's just defended into the covers. No rum. Oh dear. Ah, oh, Borthwick is on 50, betting him on 42 of just 39 balls. And what was the uh, how long did it take to come over here on the train this morning then? Oh, it was not long at all. Half an hour, um, 20 minutes? Half an hour. Yeah. Going from the jewellery quarter um, so does station. Does it go out past West Brom's ground? I don't know. I didn't see that. I was looking around. Can I was you remember any of the stops? Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Hagley. Yeah. Um, That's on the edge of the Clent Hills. Dow Bridge. Yeah. Uh, so you've come round in a bit of an arc. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so now a few of them. I was I was preoccupied because um, I've I've picked up a pamphlet at the station uh, uh, with a a walking tour of the jewellery quarter. Oh, right. Josh Baker back into the attack to replace Finch. Left arm round from the railway end. First ball is played away by Beddingham. I had a cousin who used to work at a jeweller's in the jewellery quarter. It's a wonderful part, mm, Birmingham. I love nice it around, around there. there. Lots yeah. of fantastic buildings, lots of uh, pubs. Baker in again. This one comes in and stays fairly low on Beddingham. He plays it off to mid-wicket. There's some good... So you go over the sort of top from up past uh, the City Hall and back down the other side, isn't it? And uh, There's some decent bars around there as well, yeah. This is cut by Beddingham to backward point. I think the legal areas around that neck of the woods as well, just before you get to the jewellery quarter. Mm. Yeah, with it, I, I mean, I've been there a few times. I've been to the Coffin Works Museum mm. and the, the, the Pen Museum, but I must go to the jewellery quarter museum as, as well. Faster delivery this time from Baker, played away by Beddingham up towards that long on for one as a train comes rattling past the back of us. But... Uh, yeah, there's, uh, they had an interesting display about the history uh, at the Jewellery Quarter Stadium. And I went through a list, like a lot of things were invented in Birmingham. A lot of things. Uh, everything, the electric cooker, the kettle, the skateboard, all of these this things. This skateboard wasn't. <laughs> That's a sweep skates. shot out, out towards uh, Deep Square Leg from Borthwick for two. The mass spectrometer. The what? The mass spectrometer. I bet you any money the skateboard came from California or somewhere like that. It would have been uh, mm. invented by surfers you'd for something to do in the winter. You'd, you'd be amazed. And so one of the things that was invented was, was Brooke, the whistle, the police whistle. Saddles, Brooks saddles. <laughs> Baker over. The wicket. 
This is pushed away by Borthwick out through the covers for one. Now, I already knew this. I knew the, the whistle was, was invented in Birmingham. But what I didn't realise that I found out today was that uh, when they've, they've done uh, explorations of the Titanic, they have found the whistle, whistles made in Birmingham. So they right. made whistles for the Titanic. So that that scene at the end of the movie where Kate Winslet is on the is on the floating board, and then poor Leonardo DiCaprio goes off into the the sweet night, and she gets the whistle and blows it. That that would have been a whistle made in Birmingham. Huh. Not that it was real. Anyway, I'm absolutely convinced that there was enough room on that board for him to get on. Really annoys me. Here comes Smith. That's driven firmly, but only as far as Dolavera runs across from mid-off. There was enough room on why that board. And why didn't the camera crew help them? Oh, hey? the, the, I, that, yeah, I, I don't think he had to die. They didn't try hard enough for him to get on that board. Oh. Always really annoys me, that movie. Poor old Leo. Paul Wilson has emailed, and it's entitled Toilet Conversation. <laughs> of course. <laughs> he is Paul Smith to Borthwick. He's just pressed into the offside. Is it, is it a complaint? He said, well, the excellent commentary has now gone down the pan. <laughs> there you are. Paul from Harleypool. <laughs> so. Oh, dear, oh, dear. All right, well, I'm going to bail out in a minute because uh, I'll, uh, I'll have to be doing an update on Radio Newcastle in the next... Can't be far, what, it's about ten minutes to full time, is it, something like that? In the footy. So Chris can jump back in. Here can come Smith, it's driven hard, at back at the bowler who tumbles and um, gets as far as mid-off. You know that scene in The a Great Escape where they're getting on the bus, Chris, and the German says, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you mean. <laughs> uh, three dot balls so far in Nathan Smith's over. So it's a good start and it's what they want to do, create a little bit of pressure. He's been shining that ball so hard on his shirt all day. He's in and that's just clipped in to the leg side. No run there. Another dot ball, though. So four so far. Good from Smith. Hello, Chris. Hi, Mel. I've just been at the back laying bricks with the cream from the cake that they had in the uh, in the media tent. <laughs> My life, I'm about three stone heavier. Uh, that's why I only had the little <laughs> corner, like the bit at the pointy <sighs> part. I just, I just had a little bit cut off there. I've never eaten anything like that. Oh, there's no <laughs> way I could eat all of that. Here's Smith again and just... Nerdled in a way, or defended straight back out to the covers. No. The, uh, the catering manager went past with another one, and he was looking in. We just kept keep walking, keep walking. <laughs> yeah, uh, just uh, just having a couple of mouthfuls was enough to <laughs> ascertain that it was very rich, very very nice. Uh, washed down with some coffee. That they've got the coffee pots going, and yeah. uh, I've enjoyed that. Five dot balls, and this is the last delivery. And it's uh, spoiled his figures for the over by being driven into the covers. There's a fielder in the deep. So they will just get the one. So well, it might not have been a maiden. It's still a very tidy over from Smith. He's bowled eight overs, one for 30. They've just been having a look... I don't know if the ground has shifted a bit soft. He was just giving it a real nudge just about where his front foot would land near the crease. So maybe a little bit concerned just about the uh, softness of the ground there. Yeah, it's just starting to run away from uh, Worcestershire, isn't it? Lead of 192, eight wickets standing. It's going to be a, a big chase, you would feel, in the final innings. Well, it's a big chase already, you think, really. I've just realised that was a no ball. There you go. So he's going to bowl it again. That's why he was having a look at the, the crease. I thought it was the over. Here he is again. And uh, just played into the offside. So he recovers. No run. Um, in the end, he's now bowled eight overs, one for 30. Borthwick, 54 off 100. 
balls. So he's faced 100 balls. That's a dentury, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. Um, we used to call him like Joe Denley. He's very dogged, and he would face 100 balls so often. All right. So, so we started calling it a dentury ah. when someone faced 100 balls. But to be a real dentury, <laughs> he probably, he's probably scored a few too many runs. Proper old school dig in. I like Joe Denley. It's uh, Finch bowling from the railway end and just forces Borthwick back in the crease, but had plenty of time to drive into the offside and pick up a comfortable single. Uh, sorry, did I say Finch? Baker. Uh, Baker. Baker Finch. Ian Baker Finch yeah. was a very good yeah, golfer, was, wasn't, wasn't he? he? <laughs> you're, you're part of the world. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Not for 15 of two overs prior to this. Dragged that one down. He's been driven, but straight to the fielder. Uh, Tolivier is at deepish mid-off. Uh, I think that uh, Baker will be grateful for that because he over-pitched and really should have been put away. Just didn't uh, get the placement with that. Next, he'd, oh, that's a poor delivery down the leg side. And I don't know if he got anything onto it. Well, bye has been given down to the boundary for four. That was a, a really poor delivery. Struggled with his line and length. Well, he did. When he came on, his first two deliveries were down the leg side, full toss, and uh, was swept to the boundary quite convincingly. Then he came back and bowled a much better one. Uh, at that, Those byes have, have brought up the 100 partnership. And... Went for the uh, the big hoik over uh, Cow Corner with that one. Uh, did Beddingham. But I think he, he'd forgotten to watch the ball. <laughs> Head was up there and uh, just got wrapped on the pads. Coming round the wicket is uh, Baker. It's a better delivery. Just turned onto the leg side and there's no run. Since T, I think they have had a little bit more energy out there. A bit, bit more vocal, the... Uh, Worcestershire players getting on with it quickly and it's, it's been cut good bit of fielding there at point really good fielding by Smith and he's got through that over quickly hasn't he I've just, <laughs> you know, I've just, I've just started and he's, he's finished the over uh, three overs now for 15 the lead is 197 Durham 137 for two and that hot, as you say, the 100 partnership came up in that over with Borthwick on 55 and Beddingham 43. And Just looking at who's bowled what. And if, uh, Holder's only bowled four overs in, in the inning so far. Yeah, where, where, do, they, where do they turn? It's unless they make something happen very quickly... And it spiral out of reach. Here is Smith, and he's just pulled that one across the line firmly, and that's going to go all the way to the boundary. Fielder in the deep can do nothing about that one. So another boundary to Borthwick. And that's very much going Durham's way at the moment. Yeah, it's coming on uh, quite nicely for for the batters, isn't it? I wonder if that. Um that little bit of nip that was there earlier on, whether it's just that the, the, the bowlers are tiring, but uh, it looks very comfortable out there. Seem to have a lot of time to play the shots. Smith is in, and this time Borthwick just defends that one into the covers. No run. Yeah, it does feel like maybe, I don't know whether it's just flattened out a little bit. Again, lots of sunshine here all, all day. Not hot, but it certainly felt a bit warmer than the forecast top. One of those feels like when they say it's this temperature, but it feels like something yeah. else. It's felt warmer. Smith is into Borthwick, who just punches that one down to mid off. No run. Another 31 overs today after. This one, so a long session, 98 overs today. A couple of extra ones. They, they played on for you know, half an hour in the first innings because there were nine wickets down Worcestershire at that point. Finally losing the last wicket. Smith. He's 
giving that one real effort and it's just clipped up to Joe Leach at mid on. Just looking around the other scores, uh, Warwickshire have been piling them on again today, 455 all out, Hampshire 58 for one, Essex 302 for five in reply to Lancashire's 146 and uh, Surrey 45 without loss replying to Kent's 244 all out. Somerset 368 for 8, Nottinghamshire 198 all out. Smith bowls to Borthwick, who just hurried him a little bit that time. And uh, it's just able to jam the bat down, dribbles off to the offside, no run. And in the IPL, the Sunrisers Hyderabad are at it again. They've got nine balls left and they're 237 for five. Travis Head got 80 odd. I think he was, he'd made 50 after three overs. I'm going to be controversial here. That Sunrisers Hyderabad kit is the worst kit in the, the world right now. It's, no, it's not orange. In comes Smith. It's just turned around the corner. Goes past it. Square leg umpire and down to the fielder in the deep. Leisurely one. So five off the over from Smith. 142 for two. Borthwick 60. Beddingham 43. Well, I used to like it when it was sort of the orange and... And sort of gold and black. Now it's it's almost like red, but mm. a, and not a great red. And it's it's basically got a, a really 1980s pattern. And I was watching it with a friend, and we decided they look they they look like <clears throat> they're extras in in a, like a 1980s breakdancing <laughs> movie. You it's, see, you're talking good. to a man of the 80s, so <laughs> still dresses that way. It's Baker starts a new over and turned square by the left-handed Borthwick. No run. Yes, I'm, I'm definitely not one to, to talk about fashion or to give an opinion on fashion. Oh, well, I don't know. That's a very stylish jacket. <laughs> Sweep from uh, Borthwick here down to the backward square just for a single. All looking very comfortable out there at the moment. Yeah, they're, uh, they are in that comfort zone, these two, aren't they? Yeah, just just looking untroubled every time. There's a little bit, uh, some tighter bowling. There's one over that's just a little bit loose <coughs> or a couple of loose deliveries in an otherwise good over. So just having the consistency and the control is, a, is proving to be a real challenge. Adam Hose just came across to have a word with Baker there. Fired that one through a little bit quicker outside the off stump. Bit of turn too, I think, away from the bat. So maybe Baker is starting to find something. Uh, just yeah. uh, squares him up a little bit with that next delivery. That was a quicker one as well. Yeah. So just about... Getting his eye in, getting getting loose. Only three overs in the in the first innings. Immediately put himself under pressure in his first over. And that's again better delivery. Driven to hose in the covers, no run. That's been a good over so far yeah. from Baker. Can he get out of it? Tight delivery last up. Because wide of the crease and Driven for a single to D'Oliveira, halfway back at mid-off. And end of the over, 143 for two. Borthwick 61, Beddingham 44, 144 for two actually. Lead 204. Yeah, just two singles coming off Baker's over there. So that's the, the kind of thing that they want to keep replicating from the other end as well. I think we've got a change, have we? It's Joe, yeah, Leach Joe Leach coming back into the attack. So, Brett Oliveira having a bit of a word with him. He's trying to find a way. They so desperately need to break this partnership up. There's a little, little triumvirate down there with Nathan Smith having a bit of a discussion between the three of them. We've got today th still 30 overs to go. So we've had 10 overs of this session. Uh, two hours from here. What's that? Uh, 20 to 7. 
probably about 10 to 7 I would have thought when we get yeah how was the light I wonder how the light was here yesterday I think we finished at quarter past 7 oh yeah I forget because daylight savings has sort of changed everything hasn't it so Joe Leach he's bowling to David Beddingham he's right arm over and that is just slapped into the covers that's not going to go all the way though ball just slowing up as it gets to the deep but he didn't quite get all of it but it does add another two to the total so Leach has one wicket so far one for 33 uh, now after 7.1 overs Can he find a way through where others haven't? Hold up. There's another one who maybe we might see come into the attack again soon. Might be one of those ones where it just has to come out of nowhere. Here's Leach. Oh, it goes for a long, languid shot. It's in the air, but I think it's going to go all the way. And oh, Ooh. my goodness, the fielder has gone into the advertising hoardings. Not a great pace, thank goodness, but he has knocked it over. I think he's okay. A hoarding, maybe not so much. <laughs> Yeah, he's more interested in repairing the hoarding than he's about himself. It, well, yeah, he just knocked it over. Luckily, the Matthew Waite it was. Well, the only old end result was that it was six runs. Yeah. <laughs> it was touch and go, wasn't it? He, he was certainly interested. Waite thought he might just get to it. Uh, Dolivera was interested at one point. Uh, he r was running at some pace and just, he almost rode it like a, like he was, was going over a, a little hurdle. Leach is in and this time it's just carved into the offside by Beddingham. Bit of irony there in that he nearly did himself some damage in the hoarding he went into, says health and life insurance. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> We're nearly paying out. <laughs> Oh, that's a worry. I mean, it was a, a lovely looking stroke. It's just lofted straight down the ground. It actually showed intended because they've, they've brought Leach on to make the breakthrough and then mm. was it second delivery? Put him away for six. Leach in again. And this time on the back foot, just squirts it out to point. They won't get a run. I think the, the position they're building with a lead of 2-1-3 is see it through tonight, see where they are. But they're going to be in a position tomorrow if there is weather around on Monday to really go and attack tomorrow early. Mm. Well, in such uh, a good position. Yeah. 153 yeah. for two. Put, uh, that will throughout the game and then give themselves a real mm. real chance. I only run one result in the... County Championship so far. We're in round three. Here's Leach. That ball is just clipped nicely by Borthwick down to fine leg. Get a single. But if it's anything like last year, regardless of what the uh, what the target is, the Worcestershire will go for it. It's more exciting that way, yeah. isn't it? Why not? Why not? Just looking around the field, there's there's some tall lads, aren't there, in this uh, this Worcestershire side? Some, well, some shorter ones too. But I was going to say, <laughs> there's there's basically there's not much in between. No. As some very tall players, and there are some less so. Leach, final ball from him, and he has got hold of that one. That's gone all the way. Well, that's a huge, huge stroke by Beddingham, and. Uh, Two sixes in that over. A very expensive one, Leach, coming back into the attack. 16 off his over. It's 160 for two. So they have decided to put the foot down. Certainly Beddingham has. I think the life has just gone completely out. The pitch seemed to have so much time to play that. It's a great shot. But it just seemed to have forever to play it. Yeah, I mentioned that. 
perhaps it had flattened out a little bit. Yeah. I but, think uh, that might be the case. Well, I think if that's the intent they're going to show, then uh, Baker, who's starting the new over, is going to have to really tighten things up. Bowls outside the off stump, and Borthwick leaves alone. Well, they just come back a little bit, that one. He's, uh, he's bowling with a fair bit of pace. Next delivery, big stride forward by Borthwick, and there's no run. He actually seems to have been causing more problems when he's been darting them in Yeah, a, a bit quicker. But I thought in that last over it looked like he was perhaps getting a bit of turn. Sweeps, and it's in the air. Fielder trying to get round, but there's two of them oh. there, and they collide. And uh, just kept the ball in. Oh, that there's was Finch, lucky. Finch was one. I couldn't, is the other one? There's a lack is of communication. They're just talking Smith? to each other now. I think it might be Smith. It might be Smith. Yeah, look for the baby mullet. No, I think uh, he's he's not too happy. I think he, he feels he was going for it. It was just, just signalling to the uh, the coaching staff on the on the balcony that uh, that Finch got in his way there. He got two runs for it anyway. I, d I don't actually think either of them are going to make it. It's a good sweep. Uh, next delivery. It's played defensively into the offside, and there's no run. It can be horrible though when two fielders oh. collide like that, and which is why Tom Taylor isn't in the side at the moment. Yeah, that's that's right, Tom Taylor. Next delivery sees the that's a going back into the crease, and there's no run. Collided with um, Ben Gibbon taking a return catch in a seconds match, and been uh, monitoring his shoulder and knee. Of course, having signed from North Ants at the end of the season. Last ball of the over. It's turned square on the leg side. And Finch does the fielding through for one. 163 for two at the end of the over. 223 is the lead with Beddingham 59, Borthwick 65. The two men out in this second innings who will now be feeling that they've missed out. Lees for four and Ackerman for 18, one wicket for Smith and one for Leach. Baker just giving up three runs in that over, I think two singles in the previous over. So he's he's actually, after being very expensive in his first over, he was well, he went for 10 off his first over and he's bowled four overs and given up 10 mm. off four overs. So it's actually been a really good recovery from him. Now Leach, last over went for 16. So he won't want to be the release of pressure. Can he build some here? He's in, a first ball to Borthwick. It's just sent to mid-wicket, no run. Yeah, that would have been uh, dented his pride a little bit, Joe, Re Joe Leach. But uh, credit to, uh, to to Baker, got to show some character, and, and he's done that. And I think just bowling that that little bit quicker just shows his mm. you know, just trying to find his his range. Each turns runs in again to Borthwick, off the back foot again just punches that one into mid wicket, no run. One for 47, Joe Leach is in his ninth over. Well, 16 came in that previous mm. over, so uh, that's done the damage a bit to his figures. But two dot balls to start off this over, so lots of encouragement still being shouted out there as well. You get that, you hear it more at grounds like this. In comes Leach. That one's down the leg side and flicked away. But there's a fielder down at fine legs, so I have to get up and, and lean over because that part of the the ground is a, is uh, obscured by the side of this tent. So a single coming there, bringing Beddingham onto strike. Now, Beddingham was the one who did the damage and uh, struck a couple of sixes off Leach in the previous Leach over. So. Here we go. Might be, might be time. I'd say Beddingham will want to keep it going. Leach will have been a bit stung by that. 
and see how he responds as he runs in, bowls to Beddingham. First ball just clipped away down to deep point. They'll just get the single, so no real continuation of the ding dong battle we saw in the last over. 18 fours, two sixes in the inning so far. Mm -hmm. oh, it's, it's been the real feature of it. Too many four balls. This partnership building and building, isn't it? Came together at 37 for two. Bettingham has been the most aggressive, but here's Borthwick, and there's a bit of a shout. As, uh, Borthwick, was he trapped on the pad? I think it was too high. But it's been a much better over from Leach. Yeah, much better. You've just got to keep coming back, haven't you? You get hit like that. Just head down, just keep going. Sounds very chumba wumba. Something about being getting <laughs> knocked down and getting up again. Leach, last ball of his over. It is just played straight past the ball up to mid on no run. So much better over from Leach. Just the two singles coming from his ninth over. And it's 165 for two with Borthwick now on 66 off 122 balls. While Bettingham is 60 off 58. So just giving you the idea of just how aggressive Bettingham has been. I think it's demonstrated there in that run rate, four and a half and over they're going at now in the second innings. So helps. Ticking along very nice, nicely. Helps when you start off with a, enough of a lead, doesn't it? Yeah. You just know you can put the foot down if you lose a couple. It's okay. So Baker to continue from the railway end wide of the crease and that's in the air but safe it's over the the fielder that was inside the or in the covers and jones couldn't get round to it well placed just had to clear hose which he did comfortably he's got long off in that dolivera and then a big gap round to rob jones who's at deep cover she's really impressive timing and placement on that shot so Baker's under pressure now having uh, conceded runs early on in the over concedes another one there which is just played very comfortably all along the ground to deep mid wicket that's it isn't it once you get the boundary yeah. away first ball yeah <laughs> you, you almost know you've won the over yeah and the fielding side know they're going to be chasing chasing a lot don't they so it's mm. it, the, the mood shifts Gets him back in the crease here. It's a good delivery from Baker. Just turned onto the leg side to Hose. Who's uh, got a green green T-shirt underneath his shirt. Oh, so he's layering like me. Yeah. That's the thing, layers. <laughs> Stretches forward to the next delivery. Finds Hose again. And there's no run. It's... Uh, Not cold by any means, but definitely cold than it was earlier on. There's a sweep and an appeal, uh, but the ball's beaten batter and wicketkeeper and gone all the way for four. Actually, four leg buys he signalled, did he? Or buys, I didn't know. Oh, he, he did tap his leg. Did it? Yeah. So, uh, so it's leg buys in the end. But the runs keep on coming, no matter where they're coming from or via. Well, that is really frustrating. Just he's shaped to go for the stumping actually. Did the keep up, but in the end. One seven four for two. Last ball of the over. Hose is the man that finds the ball coming his way again on the leg side at uh, shortish mid wicket and end of the over. One seven four for two. Borthwick sixty six. Beddingham 65, that lead now 234 and 26 overs left in the day. They're going to be 26 very long overs mm. for Worcestershire if they can't find some way to break up this partnership. Joe Leach is going to continue from the pavilion end. An expensive over followed by a much tighter over, but they just can't. Baker's bowled some tight overs. 
Leach has bowled some good ones. They just can't actually get them yeah. all in one clump. Yeah, in tandem. Yeah. Leach is in over the wicket. He whips that one away. That's four runs. Another four runs to Beddingham. He's been super aggressive in this period of play. Anything bad, he's punished. I'll tell you what's impressive is the placement. Mm. They found the gaps. And there's yeah. two, two fielders on the boundary there, on the leg side. Um, Jones is quick, but had no chance of getting around to that one. In fact, they're just plugging that gap now. And, uh, and it does make you think that, that it has flattened out a bit, the pitch, and that it's just a, a little bit too easy for the batters to sit back and send the ball exactly where they want. I'm, I say that, that's not meant to take anything away from some really lovely shots being played. It just does look a little bit too easy. Here is Leach. That one's just delicately clipped square. They'll just stroll through for a single. Yeah, on the defensive big time now, aren't they? It's like a one-day field. With, they had three, four on the leg side boundary for that last delivery. See left-right combinations. So bit of side-to-side -side stuff going on here. Just to hate that. I didn't play much, but when I did, always go going from one side to the other and always a long distance the old fine leg to fine leg yeah yeah because I wasn't very good chuck him <laughs> <laughs> chuck him out <laughs> oh, where does Leach go from here so much experience at the moment being carted around a bit. Borthwick on strike. He just leans back and cracks that one straight to extra cover. Hose, long way to go down. Does have a long... He is another one. He is a long hose. Yeah, <laughs> he certainly is. Uh, he, he's one of the ones that you can take all the way around the house and water the <laughs> beds right at the back corner of the garden. The long hose. Uh, Holder into slip. Searching for something. Might just bowl this one across the left-hander. And he does. And that one's just slapped away, though, by Borthwick to Jones at deep backward point. I think that shows the, p the pace has gone out of the pitch in that uh, Roderick is standing up to Joe Leach. He is indeed, yes. Yes, all signs are that... There's suddenly not a heap in this for the seamers. It's where you really love to have some extra pace. So they might look more, try and get some turn out of it. Here's Leach. He gets hold of that one. Absolutely smashes that. Again, Beddingham versus Leach. And it's Beddingham coming out on top. That's heaved that one away. So another six. That's the third that he has hit off the bowling of Leach. Have they lost that ball? Yeah, I think it must have uh, cleared the uh, the bar on the far side. I think that's 12 off five balls in the over. Isn't it very cleanly, isn't he? Certainly is. And it's... Uh, ball lost. They're bringing out new ones. Isn't it? it wasn't agricultural, was it? It was a nice swing mm. of the bat. Quite an elegant shot, that. He looked absolutely brilliant. He's flying at the moment. Beddingham, that's taken him to 76. He's faced 63 balls. I think probably shows that it's a missed opportunity in that first innings for for Worcestershire. Those four wickets they lost yesterday. Mm. Just put them on the back foot yeah. as soon as they came out yeah. today. And there was so much pressure on that partnership between Holder and Libby. Yeah. to stay out there and once that was cracked whereas if they if they'd been two or three down I mean it might not have made any difference yeah. but if they could have got past the the tricky period in that first yeah. hour yeah. that's when batting has been at its easiest and, the and you felt they did the hard bit didn't they because mm. they didn't lose a wicket in the first 35 minutes and then lost the two quick ones but yeah that that was 
the missed opportunity in that in that first innings generally, and and of course being a batter down in Kashi Valley not playing to in this match. Yeah, and Kashi Valley suffering a back injury in the gym, although I'm told that it's not too serious. Final ball of Leach is over. Now they've got a new one. He's in, and it's just pushed into the covers. No run. Maybe, maybe change in ball can bring a change of fortunes, but that's another expensive over 12 off that one from Leach. He's one for 61 after 10 overs. It's 186 for two uh, for Durham. They lead by 246 now with Borthwick on 67 and Beddingham is absolutely flying on 76. He has been outstanding. Well, they're going to add another 100 today, aren't they? If we have the 25 overs, that puts them 3 4 6 ahead. Say so 350 by the end of play. And they can have a real thrash in the morning. And uh, have Worcestershire in by lunchtime if, if they do look ahead to the, the weather. It's, uh, it's Baker starting a new over. It's been a difficult afternoon for Worcestershire with the ball. They were bowled out at lunch for 184, trailing by 60 on first innings. Uh, made a couple of early inroads into the Durham second innings, leaving them 37 for two, with Smith and Leach accounting for Lees and Ackerman for four and 18, respectively. But since then, it's been the Borthwick and Beddingham show. Those two have taken it on from 37 for two to 187 for two. Borthwick on 68, Beddingham on 76. They lead by 247. And with best part of 25 overs left in the day, you can see that lead being around 350 by the end of play today and an awful lot of work for Worcestershire to do on the remaining two days of the game. So very much going the way of the visitors at the moment. They lead by 247 with Durham 187 for two. Update there for listeners to BBC Hereford and Worcester Sport on Saturday programme. And uh, as I was doing it, Finch uh, Baker, I should say, has been uh, struck for six by Beddingham. He's on to 82 now. It might have been off a, a spinner as opposed to medium fast, but they need another ball because he's just absolutely played another monster shot, very similar to the one he played off Joe Leach, just anything in his arc yeah. absolutely clatters it over the long on boundary. So that's two new balls needed in two new overs. They'll yeah. be running out if uh, David Beddingham keeps on going the way he is. Well, that last one might be on the railway line. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very possible. This is quite an interesting time of late, Beddingham, hasn't he? Because you almost thought... He was committing his future mostly to England. And then he made his debut for South Africa in the series against India. And that he actually played in that, that win that they had in the first test. Um, Dean Elgar's final series. He uh, made 185, I think. And then played in that... Uh, tour of New Zealand where they sent a very very inexperienced side he actually batted pretty well got half century made a century well, he's gone for it again he's hit it flatter this time but it's gone for six more uh, of in probably towards the scoreboard it's uh, obscured from our view but that, that was a flatter one uh, in fact onto the sight screen I think that one but uh, six more so consecutive sixes and they're definitely going for it here these two I've said 350 by the end of the day. It could be well beyond that. He's gone for it again, but uh, drives this good uh, stop, half stop, by Baker in his follow through. And he's now gone for 38 in uh, one ball short of seven overs. 13 from this over so far. Yeah, so it's just been an interesting time for Beddingham with South Africa. Those couple of tours, where does he fit there? Where does he fit here? So an interesting career thing to watch, but he's certainly an interesting innings to watch right now. There's a change in the field being directed by Dolivera, who's at long off. He 
He's not right on the boundary, though. In he's fact, walking he's, back. he's walking backwards now, but he's still not on the boundary. He's about 10 yards in. And Beddingham waits for the next delivery. Just uh, called the bluff there, really. Everyone thought he was going to go for it again, just <laughs> waited and guided it down to third man and picks up a comfortable single. We'll keep the strike at the end of the over. Brings up the 200 as well for for Durham. Yep. It's Lead of 260, 200 for two after 40 overs. Yes. So going at five and over, Beddingham 89 and Borthwick 48. Yeah, just it just looks a bit too easy now and conditions easing, pitch just flattening out a bit, sun shining, great time for batting and Beddingham has just decided to make hay and uh, put his foot down, take on the bowlers. He's forced them to change the ball twice in two overs. He's now going to be facing Jason Holder. So coming back into the attack, wondered when he might do. They're, they could certainly use his international experience right now, Worcestershire, because they desperately need to break this up or it's going to get very, very ugly for them in their third match back in Division One. So Holder from the pavilion end. He's in over the wicket to Benningham. Short ball first up, strays down the leg side. Not enough to be called, but definitely well left alone by Benningham. Not interested. Yeah, that's where the bowler says, thanks, Skip, for bringing me on at the moment. Well, you know, he's, if, if he'd got anything, if he'd decide to go for that one, there's a massive space right in front of us. Uh, we're, we're basically at Beddingham's fine leg. There's two fielders out deep in the leg side, one at deep backward square and one at deep mid-wicket. In comes Holder. It's full and it's driven straight past the bowler. Dolavera gets one hand to it. So runs across and uh, prevents the boundary. Don't think he picked that up, Dolivera, initially. He was uh, slow to move and he's one of the best fielders around. Um, so I'm not sure where that came from in terms of uh, out of his eye line. But it uh, didn't cost him anything. Yeah, just one run coming from it in the end. Could have been a boundary. So it brings Borthwick on to strike. A left-hander. Change in angle for Holder, perhaps. He's just directing traffic at the moment. He's uh, often seen out there giving his ideas, chipping in with ideas uh, to Dolivera about how he's going to go about it. So he is around the wicket to Borthwick, and that one's just punched into the covers, no run. There's a much better line angling it into the left hander. It's just hard to see where a wicket's going to come yeah. from at the moment. Yeah. There's one fielder in the slips, but he's very wide. He's probably about second slip. So there is yeah. a gap between uh, keeper and slip. Here's Holder. It's short of a length, and a diving stop in the covers prevents any runs. So maybe just a bit of energy in the field as well. You feel they've got to get themselves out here, don't you? That the, the bowlers aren't going to do it. It looks flat, lacking pace, and it'll just be if they get ahead of themselves and one of these where they've been looking for sixes might just miscue. Well, there was one that was that Beddingham hit in the air and you saw a couple of the fielders. Was it Finch and... and Jones. Finch and Jones. Oh, Jones. Yeah, Jones and Smith. In comes Holder to Borthwick. Oh, he chips at that one. It was wide of off stump. It was in the air for the moment, but just dribbles out to point in the end. They get a single. So yeah, you were right. It was it was Smith and uh, Finch, wasn't it? Yeah, Smith and yeah. Finch. And uh, they, there was a, almost seemed like there might have been a chance for a moment, but I don't think that either of them would have no. made it. Even if one had charged full tilt and dived, I don't, I don't know that they would have actually got there. But Beddingham is on strike now. 
He's on 90 off 71. He is holder. He bowls and he go, attempts to flick that one down the leg side. It goes straight through to the keeper's gloves and he finishes with a dot ball. So just two singles coming off holders over. He's bowled five and he is none for 13 off those five. So he's been more economical than most. And they just need to find a way to replicate that the other end. It's 202 for two. Uh, Borthwick on 69 and Beddingham on 90. Matthew Waite coming on at the railway end, replacing Josh Baker. Right. So his first bowl from this end in the second innings. His first spell. Let's just have a look for you as... Uh, Four overs from the pavilion end for 15. Again, on this uh, very flat looking pitch. Didn't look threatening. And he's coming in now with a, a partnership of getting on for 170 between these two. So it'll be the left handed Borthwick on strike. One slip, who's holder. Point. Fine leg. Mid wicket, mid on. Got a deep square leg, and uh, he's the man just moving round Jones to uh, backward square leg, deep backward square leg to field. Now come through for one more. Score on to 203 for two. It's in there. Uh, She's back talking toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Not uh, many spectators leaving, enjoying no. the sunshine and the cricket. New it's, balls, it's been entertaining. It's been yeah. entertaining, isn't it? It's been rattling along. Meanwhile, Sunderland have done their usual and lost at home to Millwall, so I think that's Millwall probably safe now. I think any football manager with a team struggling in the championship this season must have been rubbing their hands with glee at the idea of going to the stadium. Mm. I think that's about 11 home defeats or something in the league. I saw Hartley pull 1-4-3 away. Did they? Yep. Gates had one. Yeah. Is Wait. Turned square on the leg side. And to Joe Leach. And they're through for one. Well, Gateshead beat Bromley. And they have to play them away in the playoff. Next week, I think it is. And it's it's like a quarter-final playoff, yeah. like they do with the one-day cup. Yeah. So, uh, but um, Gateshead have also qualified for the FA Trophy final for the second year in a row at Wembley. Wait. Into Borthwick left-hander is in the air and it's again wide of the field it was hose that got interested there i think he's got a leading leading yeah. edge there came and low uh, off the bat yeah just spooned it but it was one of those where the fielder just sees it getting too far away from him but uh, something of a rarity this afternoon false shot from the batter Beddingham now on 91 on strike. Stands tall. And thinks of a single, but all he did was just steer the ball to holder. Move to his right at slip to field. Still uh, an hour and a half place to go today, so that's going to take us to quarter to seven, possibly a little bit later. These two put on 193, 196 in Chesley Street last year in a Durham win. I think it was Durham's first home game of the season last year. It was their first home win at the start of a season since 2015. So their current partnership today is uh, 168. And still going as weight bowls. Driven nicely. Just off the middle of the bat. And to long on by Beddingham. Moves on to 92. Beddingham got five centuries last season. Looks orthodox, doesn't he? Stands tall. Yeah. Legs 
He's got his feet not too far apart. Looks very comfortable with his technique. It's his partner, Borthwick, on strike. Left-hander. His weight bowls. And that's cut away nicely. Down to Leach at deep cover. Come through for a second. And uh, well, it's a good throw in by Leach there, taken by Matthew Waite at the bowler's end. And uh, just had to scamper a little bit there, did uh, Bellingham at the end, but got home. Waite didn't take the bails off. So the end of the over, two, three, four, five, six coming from it. Bellingham has moved on to 92. It's 208 for two, a lead of 268. In that game in Chesley Street last year, Bellingham got 204 runs. He scored 100. He's got uh, 118 in the first innings, 86 in the second. Scott Borthwick. At the end of the season, it was Durham's last away game in September at New Road, made 100. And... Uh, 34 not out. He also got 108 in the home game against Worcestershire, so they've both had runs against Worcestershire in the last season. Holder up the hill, bowls to Beddingham. Beddingham drives to Leach on the cover boundary. One run, 22 overs left today, so that is uh, around about an hour and a half play. I was saying, uh, if, you, if you picked her up uh, at the bat there, but they just seem to have so much time to play here, don't they? They're not rushed at all. Looking very comfortable. Durham were 5 for 1 at the end of the second over and 37 for 2 at the end of the 12th. Lost Lees for 4 and Ackerman for 18, but uh, these two have rattled along. 172 runs now off 183 balls. 209 for two, the lead 269. 21.5 overs to go tonight here on the BBC. Holder, right arm over. The ball to Borthwick, who turns that one late round the corner. 4 1 to backward square leg. Times the uh, traditional kickoff of the FA Cup semi final tonight. I think it's 5 30. Is it? Yeah. And then there's a, a 7.30 Premier League game. Wolves against Arsenal, not too far from here. Yeah, I passed a sign on the road towards Kinvert and uh, Stourton the other day. Wolverhampton Business Airport, five miles. This is pushed away to Minon, no run there. So I presume it's just a little aerodrome or something, is it? I've not heard of it. Probably a field in someone's <laughs> <laughs> back of a farm or I something. Think probably <laughs> got to be more than that. <laughs> but um, Burnley have won four-one at Sheffield United today, yeah. and Brentford five-one at Luton. Yeah. At uh, Wolverhampton Halfpenny Green. Airport. Oh, Hapenny Green, yeah. That's it, Stourbridge West. Yes, I should have known that. In comes the bowler. And uh, Benningham's thrown the bat at that one, and he slices it down towards deep backward point for four. Takes him on to 97. So he's eyeing up his 20th first-class 100 and his 11th for Durham. Has there been any scares, any chances there, I think the nearest they came was the uh, the miscue in the last over um, that went wide of hose and possibly the one that uh, saw weight going into the advertising board. Yeah. Now he's lobbed this into the air and that's away for four down towards long leg and there is a century for David Beddingham. He gets there with a four. It comes in 79 balls and uh, he's hit at least five sixes that I can recall. So let's just check the stats on the terms of the shots. Uh, five sixes and 11 fours. How many balls did you say? 79? 79. 79 balls. He's just taking his helmet off to celebrate. Give himself a little bit of a wipe down. Have a think and a reset. And the partnership now moves on to 181 as well. He's looked very comfortable. He's just paced it nicely, hasn't he? He's just... He, he uh, once he's got his eye in, just slowly accelerated, and then he's cut loose in the last 30 or so. 
It's a short one. He pulls it out to deep mid wicket. Who's fielding out there? Who's let that ball go through the hands and away for four? Rob Jones, I think. Rob Jones staring into the low sunshine. He just miscued that, didn't he? Yeah. I thought he got himself down behind it nicely there, and then suddenly the ball was through his legs and over the rope. Yeah, he's got his shades on. I think he's looking directly into the into the sun. Well, they they started with a, as I say, a bit more life after tea, and uh, but that's been knocked out of them now, hasn't it? They, they've gone very flat out there, which are, which is understandable. Is that these two have dominated, approaching 200 partnership. 185, I think it is at the moment. 2-2-2 two, two, two for 2. It's wait to continue. There's a bit of a conflab going on between uh, Captain Bowler and Finch. Finch is in his Rishi Sunak tribute trousers. <laughs> As, uh, <laughs> wait bowls and is driven but to Dolivir at mid-off. He's, uh, yeah, he's got plenty of sock showing. Is there any? Has he got a giant pair of boots on as well? <laughs> uh, now, Captain and Finch in, in discussion. Wait, just plodding back to his mark. Gets a, a tap on the backside from Finch. He's probably thinking, I'm glad you're bowling and not me in this situation. Wait, bowls wide of off stump. Cut away down to Leach. At deep cover. Uh, definitely the sun's in their eyes because uh, you see Roderick just shielding his eyes as the throw came in. You can't actually see it because it's away to our right and uh, Marquis we're in has got a, a solid canvas screen on the, on the right hand side. Weight is bowling from the railway end. Runs away from us. No slip now. And attempted cut there by Beddingham. Cut it into the ground. Back to the bowler. And no run. 20 overs to go after the one being bowled. Again, Captain at cross to have a word. Keep chiving his bowlers up, motivating his players. And Beddingham waits. His next delivery down the leg side, and horrible one for the wicket keeper going down, having to turn his face away from it. That uh, just in case it bounced up and gave him a bit of a smack there. Loose delivery from Waits, but no harm done. Must be the ones the wicket keepers dread where they're going down that side and just bouncing in front of you. Very neat outfield though here at Chester Road. Next delivery again tries to cut and has mistimed it. And Wait fields himself. I, think I was saying earlier on that uh, when my two lads were were young in the winter, there's a lot of mini footballs played on the, on the outfield here. So it's yeah. one of, one of the best. Uh, Places to, to go. There's always a, a, a good pitch. Wait, bowls. Play defensively, but pick up a single because the field's set back. And fielded at deep mid on. And that takes us to the end of the over. Just two runs coming from that Matthew Wait over. He's bowled six overs for 23 now. Beddingham is on 106. His partner and Captain Borthwick's on 75. And it's 224 for two. Still the the weather is fine, blue sky, fluffy clouds above, sun shining brightly. A lot of good cricket being played. What more could you want on a Saturday evening? At 25 past five. So Benningham on strike. 
on 106 as Holder bowls. <laughs> that ball holds up in the pitch and is then baseball battered. Did it ever hold up in the pitch? Yes. <laughs> That That's just, just <laughs> that was tennis ball bounce. I'm trying to Hit think me as distance. far as you can. <laughs> That's gone into Kidderminster Harriers ground, I think. <laughs> it's in that direction. It's slightly over the other way, isn't it? But yeah, it's gone to the ring road. That was. It just yeah, sat him in the pitch, and he waited for it and <laughs> waited for it, and then just absolutely clubbed it straight over the pavilion. <laughs> it just dollied up, didn't it? I, d I don't think the delivery was that bad. It just held up. Uh, he had all the time in the world. And another ball is called for. It's going to be an expensive afternoon, this. So they now lead by 290. In fact, uh, let's work this out. Is that the partnership broken? No, they're three <laughs> short of it. As well as these two have batted, I think there's been nothing in this pitch this afternoon. No. So that rules out... Uh, you would think a declaration and that, wouldn't you? Oh. Well, they, th th there's no need to, is there? They can just keep on going, and, and especially the way they've batted in the last hour or so, with 20 overs to go. I mean, it could be close to 400, couldn't it? Is that four lost balls now? Or three? Yeah, four. four. That lead, th there's no need to declare tonight, is there? No. Because I think tomorrow's set fair. Um, and I don't know what you've seen, but I don't think it's a total washout we're looking at on Monday. So it's just bat them well and truly out of the game from, from a Durham point of view. So new ball we have. How old is this one? Well, not this one, but uh, we're in the... can't see it on your screen. Uh, 45th, this is a 45th over. So a ball that should be around 45 overs old. So how how's hold <laughs> going to react to that one? I don't know where it pitched, it was just a horrible bounce. Comes in. Pennyham drives the ball back past him and we'll go for a single down to long on. We've seen two extremes from that end, haven't we? Because with the ball that got, it was Baker, wasn't it? That just reared up, clipped him on the yeah. helmet and then, then bowled him. Um, came from nowhere and then that that one there just, again, came from no, the exact opposite. I think the one for Baker, though, was just a bit of extra pace from Bastelada, which took him by surprise. Yeah. Reared up at him and he took his eye off the ball and he tried to turn away from it and it hit the bottom of his grill and came down under the stumps. Borthwick facing Holder and uh, defends this one, just pushes it into the offside. Yeah, I think he did put more into it, but it did, it certainly reared up. Yeah. Um, and the only one we've seen do that. But the, the Worcestershire players have got to be thinking there's there's nothing in this pitch, regardless of, of, of what the target is, is there's from what we've seen with these two, no reason why even if they don't get the runs that they should they should get out. Unless it deteriorates as the game goes on. It's gone down the leg side. There's an appeal for caught behind from mid wicket, but from nobody else whatsoever. Should be doing an update for Listens to BBC Hereford from Worcester Sport on Saturday program in a moment or two. Field well spread. Borthwick drives out into the covers. It bounces back off the hand of a fielder towards the bowler's end. No run. Not surprisingly, very quiet out there. And very often you say it's about trying to make something something happen, but 
such is the way it's gone and seems to have flattened out. It's very difficult. It's tried tried with uh, six bowlers. Borthwick plays this down towards Scully. No run. That is the end of the over. 19 to go. 45 gone. 231 for two on the BBC. And the lead is 291. Durham in their second innings, 231 for two. So they really are making hay in this uh, tea time session. Beddingham is on 113 and uh, Borthwick 76. They came together with the score on 37 for two. And uh, they really have been making hay uh, in the afternoon and uh, tea time uh, post tea session. Uh, Beddington went to his 100 off 79 balls, five sixes and 11 fours. Six bowlers have been used by uh, Brett D'Oliveira, but uh, it's looking very hard work out there. The pitch certainly seems to have flattened out. We've got 19 overs still to go today, so uh, that lead could well be something towards 400 by the time we get to the close at around about quarter to seven. At the moment, though, 231 for two. That's a lead of 291. So, That's wait. Partnership's been together for 200 balls. Wait starts a new over. And it's pulled away down to deep backward square where it's uh, fumbled, but allows them to take a, a second run. Can't see who that is. So, in oh. fact, he's been run out. It was fumbled, allowed them to come back for what should have been a second. And the throw came out. I can't see who that is right out there in the distance. And uh, in going for that second run, the fumble has worked in Worcestershire's favour. And it's uh, Borthwick that's gone. Run out for 75. And a wicket from nowhere, Worcestershire have taken, and it's 231 for three. Well, they've come within one of equaling their record from last year. Borthwick couldn't believe that. They looked round to see the umpire had given him out, and he's got his hands on his head in disbelief. Can't see him in the picture because he's out of frame. That is a signal, isn't it, when you're yeah. going that well and, and so comfortably. And I did say, I think before you came on com commentary, that to, the only way you could see a wicket falling is if if they uh, if they got themselves out. And uh, courtesy of the misfield, uh, whoever it was over in, the, I don't know if you've seen it on the replay, but uh, recovered yeah. well and uh, got in an excellent throw to the bowler's end. Wait did the job in uh, getting behind the stumps and whipping the bales off, and Borthwick's gone. Well, they nearly broke their own record there. So Borthwick go on for 75. Who threw that in there, uh, Bradders, did you see? Smith, I think. Smith. All right. The misfield certainly uh, worked for him. So the wicket falling at 2-3-2. Hundred and ninety five as Waite bowls to the new batter who's pulled that away down to Smith who this time can't keep it in and it's gone for four. New batter being Coglin. Coglin, yeah. And he's away first delivery. He'd have been licking his lips, I would have thought, up in the pavilion. Looking at how it's gone this afternoon. And uh, it's quickly got in into the action. So two, three, two, four, three in the 46th over. So 195 in 34 overs they put on. Coglin right-handed, waits, and he's pulled that one away as well. And I think that's gone for six uh, to Chester Road. Indeed it has. And it might be another ball called for. So he's been there two balls. He's on 10 already. I think he'd made his mind up as he came down the steps what he was going to do. <laughs> so just as Worcestershire think they've uh, got a, a little ray of hope, Coglin has come out and said, no, you haven't. Flat patted it away. I'm not sure if it came back off the wall or not. In fact, they ha it has come back. No new ball's been called for. Probably haven't got any new one. And he, uh, and he left at this rate. <laughs> Seen everything this afternoon. This was wide outside the off stump, and uh, I think Wade had made his mind up that uh, no matter what, he wasn't going to be put in, put away again. There, 
Move that one wide of the off stump. In fact, it's, uh, it wasn't Coglin at all, was it? No, it's, it was uh, it's uh, betting on yeah. strike, so yeah. I was just thinking because the wicket for it, because it, he was run out at the bowler's end. So apologies for that. Wait, it is. And hold away for another single. So he keeps on ticking. He's gone on to 125 now, 242, 243 for three. Lead by 303. Still one ball left in the overs. So we've had wicket, four, six, naught, one. Interesting they've brought Coglin in there and uh, he's very quick between the stumps. So maybe he's been sent in with a, a pinch hitter's plan. Wait, bowls and he went for this outside the off stump and uh, not nothing on it. Went through to Roderick, end of the over. So we've got two, four, three for three with Coglin yet to score and Beddingham is on 125. Matthew Waite, seven overs, naught for 35. The lead was 292 when that wicket came and then the next looked up to see what the lead was and it jumped by 10. <laughs> Just a couple of deliveries. Yeah, caught me out in, the, in that over, so apologies for that. It, uh, so there was a wicket, a four, then a six, dot ball one, dot ball. And Borthwick, 75 from 142 balls with six fours. I just said they were in touching distance for breaking their record and then boom, didn't happen. Holder coming up the hill, right arm over to Beddingham, who's got a very open stance here, and Beddingham guides a York length ball along the floor to Leach at third man, one run. Steve says they'll run out of balls at this rate. Mel says she likes to think she's adding a bit of class with posh loo talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's become a bit of a fixation, hasn't it? You're never going to get her camping, are you? It has to be a posh port loo Well, the slip back in for Holder. The new batter. Coglin on strike. Holder in. Coglin <laughs> looks to swing hard at that one. He plays and misses to a ball down the leg side. Strange looking shot, wasn't it? Just rooted, trying to flick it away. Yeah. Is there anybody down this corner? There isn't, is there? No. no. There's only the one fielder, which is Jones, yeah. at, who's square. Other than it's that, got huge Jones cap. staring into the sun. He's trying to shield his eyes with his hands. He's got his cap on and his sunglasses on, but the sun is right opposite him. Just above the houses on the other side of uh, Chester Road North. Holder comes in. Coglin picks that one up, and that's a four. One bounce, and it hits the kit box. The cameraman is actually using as a bit of a little platform to stand on at the edge of the pavilion. Again, he had so much time to play the shot, didn't he? And mm. with massive gap over on that on that side, on that leg side, they're just putting another fielder across there now. It's it's a shot to nothing, really. Yeah. Providing he doesn't get a top edge. It, well, prior to now, they've they've plugged that gap, um, but that was a perfectly safe shot. Another one's just come across onto the leg side as well at mid wicket. So he's now got mid wicket, deep mid wicket, deep square leg, and long on. Holder in, Coglin digs out, Yorker length balls, but dust comes up there as he plays that down into the ground and plays it off towards the covers. Um, Chris Pinkney says, be grateful that you're actually working today and didn't have to watch Sunderland. <laughs> yes. My kids are never going to forgive me for sending them to that, are they? Yorker there, very few we've seen today. Mm. 
quite a bit of dust came up, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. That's probably only the second that can recall today, actually. In comes the ball, and that's a shorter ball, but it doesn't get up much. And uh, Coughlin, back into his crease, plays it away towards point for one. As this gentleman keeps wandering past us in a sort of confused manner. <laughs> do you think he needs? Do you think he needs some help? Yeah. He needs something. Off he goes. Microphone in hand. He still does some of the away games, doesn't he, Brad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah though, uh, he'll uh, keep on PA going, the old boy. Yeah, this week. He's been doing it even longer than me. I think I started at 91. <laughs> Holder in. Oh, that's another full length delivery, and it's played away by. Beddingham, who looked as if he was going to try and steer that through the leg side there. I think it's come off the toe of the bat. He's run a single. The ball worked its way up to mid-off, and he's just checking the toe of the bat. And of the over. So uh, how many have we got to go now? 17 to go, so technically an hour and a smidge. So you're probably looking at quarter to seven again. Um, the run rate is 5.3. Durham lead by 310 at 250 for three so that was a little ripple of applause so 47 overs for 250 Finch coming back into the attack from the railway end can he make something happen be bowling to Beddingham I see 127 from 93 is yeah. that <laughs> one day stuff isn't it yeah. Well, this uh, commentator cam, you're leaning in to try and see the screen and getting closer <laughs> and closer, to it, and your face is just filling the whole picture there. Uh, what a horrible sight. For apologies to anyone that might have seen yeah. that that coming towards them. Keep the kids away from the fire. <laughs> Bit of a delay going on here while tactics are discussed, and we might be seeing a change of bowler. So we've got conversation between Finch. batters, conversation between bowler, captain. And one between wicketkeeper and uh, and F Jake Libby had a quiet day in the field. Libby actually, it's one of those that the balls often seems to follow around. In comes Finch, and uh, bowls Oof. wide outside the off stump. Big swish. Oh, it signalled as a wide eventually. It was very wide, wasn't it? That's right, I'm going to jump off, and your uh, toilet expert is coming back <laughs> on. Right, just nail everything down. The way Finch came in to, to for his first ball there, just, uh, I thought he was actually just uh, just a, a practice warm-up because he just seemed to uh, trot through. It uh, went wide, cut the next ball down to uh, deep cover. Jones is the fielder down there. Score moves on by one. Finch, six overs for 27 prior to this. Or 26, actually, because we had a wide off the first delivery. Again, chat between the two batters. And changing the field. The holder has come up from the boundary at long off to deep mid off. Halfway in. Finch runs away from us and it's cut backward of point and that uh, may well go all the way. No, good diving stop by Jones down there on the boundary. They're through for two. Good work by him. Very energetic in the field is Rob Jones. Energetic in everything he does. He is, yeah. <laughs> Thinking about his next starring role in the What's this, your social media? But, uh, he's in a difficult position there, looking directly into the sun. He won't want too much in the air, I don't think. That's Finch. Bowls again. And he's caught behind, is he? Yes, he is. Coglin has gone for seven, cutting at a widish ball. And uh, Finch has made the breakthrough. Coglin has gone. And 
Durham lose their fourth wicket at the score on 254, a lead by 314. So just a, a glimmer of something for Worcestershire at the end of what's been a very, very difficult day on that occasion. It's a bit of an under edge and it was very, very well taken in the end down low. Under edge, probably one of the most difficult types of, of catches for the keeper. 22 those uh, they, they put on in what, over a wee and it just is it taken off the screen. So midway through the 48th over. <laughs> they came together in the 46th over and they put on 22. Yeah, it's been a bit of a rum fest. A bit of a chastening day really for Worcestershire. Newly promoted up in the first division. They've had a couple of draws already. That were they were good against uh against Warwickshire first round. They were on top of that game. The weather intervened, but they got themselves into really good position. Very competitive against Knots as well. This is uh, proving to be a big challenge for Durham. Their first game, they didn't get on the field at all. Second game at Edgebaston, uh, they were on the other side of it, really. Maybe a bit rusty. So Finch into the new batter, Robinson, who plays defensively within the crease. Oliveira does the fielding, no run. And Brad is walking past again. You can't... So we, we, we spent a, a very enjoyable week with Jonathan Doidge up in Leeds, the last game of the, the season last year. Uh, the Yorkshire-Worcestershire game, when Worcestershire secured their promotion, although Yorkshire won that particular match. Oh, he had a great week up there. Finch bowls. This uh, played onto the offside to Dolivera, no run. Yeah, he, he has to keep walking in front of the commentary point because the only place he can get a signal for the uh, for the microphone is uh, is away to our left. So he's getting his steps in today. Well, you need to if you're going to indulge in in the cake oh. that they provide here. So just a little taste, and then a walk around the ground. <laughs> <laughs> you need a few laps of that, and you. <laughs> Robertson, right-handed, waits and then drives nicely back past the bowler, but Holder just moving round to his right from mid-off, does the fielding and there's no run. End of the over, we had a, a wide, a single, a two, a wicket and then three dot balls. Finch one for 30 now from seven overs, Durham 254 for four. And of course these two sides both promoted from Division 2 to Division 1. Both expecting, I'm sure, to be challenged. I think a lot of punters are, are more confident about Durham's fortunes in the top flight. But uh, Worcester has certainly shown signs. A couple of injuries might have proved to be a, a bit difficult this week, and their depth probably will be challenged. But with Kashif Ali out with that little twinge in the back, apparently not out for, for too long. And Tom Taylor still coming back after injuring his knee and his shoulder in a, in a clash with Ben Gibbon. Apparently his knee is fine. It's the shoulder that they're just monitoring at the moment. So I'll be looking for him to come in and just freshen up this bowling attack, which has had a pasting today off the bat of Beddingham. Here is Nathan Smith back into the attack and first ball back. It's in the air and dropped. A fielder coming in from the deep mid-wicket boundary. Jake Libby. And, well, it was, it was there, I think, for the taking. Not easy, though, because Libby is fielding in that position where the sun is directly in his eyes. And as he was running in... Might have found it a bit difficult to pick up that ball as it was launched in the air. But next ball, it's just carved in the opposite direction. 
You get another couple of runs. They got two off that. He was right under it, Libby. And be that, really frustrated with that. That that was the sun because you'd, you'd put your money on in there. Yeah. Of 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 all of it, there's him and Oliveira, uh, and and I think you'd always put your money on on Libby. And well, we'd we'd been commenting it was Smith who'd been fielding out there. He's running in again. And this time he has absolutely cracked that one. There's no chance of getting that unless you're a spectator. Huge from Beddingham. He has been absolutely brutal with anything loose. And that one just sat up perfectly for him. He continues on his merry way. Another six. He moves on to 138 off just 97. He split the two fielders, but um, Rob Jones didn't see it at all he, he wouldn't have got to it but you could see from him he was he got his hands up uh looking and just staring trying to see where the ball was coming from well he knew where it was coming from where he couldn't see the direction it was going in um i have to say because he didn't see yeah he was clearly blinded out there he's in a very dangerous position the way beddingham's going beddingham again this time it's a full ball and he's just dug that out towards mid wicket so, better from Smith. Smith has generally bowled well with just maybe the odd loose one, but betting him in this mood, just being super aggressive. And anything, anything that's short, any width given or anything in the slot, he's just pummeling. It's on strike again now as Smith is in over the wicket and... He just lets that one go because it's wide. Called such by the umpire. So I'll have to go back, but 10 runs off the over so far. Still 11 now with that wide and still two balls remaining. This is just astonishing stuff from Beddingham. His second 50 came up in just 24 balls. And he got to 100 and he's now Staring at 150 on strike now. As in comes Smith. He's carved that one away in the air. And it's taken. So there it is. He went one too many. But it's been a fine, fine innings from Beddingham. Worcestershire delighted that they have finally struck through. But he's done plenty of damage, Beddingham. He departs for 138 off 98. And Durham now 265 for four. Now the crowd really has been entertained by magnificent innings from Beddingham. Just went to carve that one away over the offside. Didn't get all of it. And it was a terrific catch in the end. 13 fours and eight sixes for Beddingham. And... Uh, just a, a, a brilliant innings from him. Just seeing it again. Can't see who it was. And it was a very good catch in the end. Was it Waite? It's absolutely brilliant. I'm just waiting to find out. Of course, he's right over the oh, other side. It was Hose. Hose. Oh, I wondered Adam. if it was Adam Hose. Right. Hose. The long hose. Now, that was really terrific stuff and of course he's at the opposite side to poor old Jake Libby at least he had the advantage of not having the sun shining directly in his eyes but it was a lot more than that it was terrific work for it from him as Beddingham just launched one too many times he, he just got it. it was a dive forward just managed to get his fingers underneath it I should be doing another update in a, a minute or two. Last one of the afternoon. So Smith has taken his second wicket. He's got one ball remaining. And he's into Clark now. He's come in and he just defends that back past the bowler. Ball rolls away and it's a dot ball to finish. So an eventful over for Smith. First ball almost had Beddingham out. It was a drop catch. He was... Absolutely spanked for six and uh, in the end managed to get his man. So a bit of a tussle. The end result after 49 overs. It's 265 for five. Durham, they lead by 325 
at the moment. Still five wickets in hand. Clark is the new batter in. So Finch starts a new over to Robinson. Both batters on naught. Finch took a and it says no run, just played cut into the ground. Uh, 15 overs to go in the day's play, but uh, Worcestershire have struck back in the last half an hour, taking three wickets. Scott Borthick uh, was... They, it looked as though they were only going to get themselves out was the way that uh, Worcestershire would make a breakthrough, and, and that's what the case with uh, Borthwick going well on 75. Played the ball out. Uh, the ball went out to the boundaries. A misfield by Smith. They came through for a second or an attempted second, but a good th throw from Smith to the bowlers then saw Wait take the, the bails off, and Borthwick was run out for 75. Then Coglin was caught behind off Finch for seven. I should say that the partnership between uh, Borthwick and Beddingham was 195 in 34 overs. Coglin went for seven with the score on 254. And then uh, the real class innings of the day, Beddingham, he's gone caught hose off the bowling of Smith for 138, made from 99 balls with 13 footballs and eight sixes. So very much it's Durham in the ascendancy here. They lead by 325 with 14 and a half overs to go today. They're on 265 for five with Robinson on north and Clark on north. So Finch continuing. Three dot balls at the start of his eighth over. So with 14 overs to go, it's going to be close on 7 o'clock, isn't it? It is. D still bright sunshine, no clouds at this point. So we'll probably have a quieter last hour, you would feel, as this next delivery is just flipped onto the leg side. And the hose fields, and they're through for a single. Two balls left, and... Uh, Martin Emerson will be making his way in. And so already, obviously, with that lead at 326, but this is like perhaps just a, the glimmer of an opening for Worcestershire with two new batters at the crease. If they can try and force a little collapse here. Next delivery driven onto the leg side. And those fields, and the, there's no run. It should, it should certainly slow things down now. As you're looking at uh, a lead of 400 by the close, that might uh, just be pulled back somewhat, although still 14 overs to go. But uh, two new batters out there. Still plenty of time in this game. We're not even at the end of day two. No. Rattled along this game. Clark cuts into the ground and the ball bounces over the stumps there. So... Uh, Finch, be happier with uh, two new batters out there. Conceded just the one run in that over. Uh, 30, 14 overs still to go today. The uh, run rate at the moment is 5.32. With Durham 2 6, six for 5. Robinson on 1. And Clark still looking for his first run. Oh, it just has to be this moment in time, you think. Now or never. And it's going to be Smith continuing from the pavilion end. So the one who made that vital breakthrough, getting Beddingham out, who was really just taking the attack to pieces. He runs in, he's over the wicket and beats the bat first up with a lusty swing from Robinson. Smith has... Two wickets and has looked to be the most likely to make serious inroads into this Durham attack if there's a moment for an opening. And they're not going to get a better moment than right now with five down, two new batters at the crease. Robinson on strike. In comes Smith. And he just fences at that one. Ends up with Jason Holder at mid wicket, short mid wicket. So, can there be a bit of fight back here from Worcestershire? We've got some fight back here in the uh, commentary tent because Martin Emerson is back joining me. Well, I think Durham just decided to hit the accelerator a little bit harder into the ground, didn't they? And that's what's brought the two wickets. 
Smith is in. It's full. It's dug out. And diving attempt in the covers prevents it from going to the boundary, but not enough to prevent them from taking a couple of runs. Ball just squeaking out of his hands and rolling away. The three wickets, really, because I forgot about Borthwick. I mean, that came out of nothing, the th you know, the run out. Um, but probably also a sign of this yeah, the well, acceleration. Yeah, well, they were obviously looking to try and push on, weren't they? But as you say, there's still two days left in this mm. game. Smith is in over the wicket. Just hurries Robinson a little bit. Squeezes the ball out. No run. Maybe Durham were looking to... Well, how many overs have got? Well, yeah, to have a lead of at least 400 by the end of the day. So just a little interesting phase this might be now. To see if, if Durham are able to continue... If Worcestershire are able to just claw things back a little bit. Smith runs in, bowls. It's full and down on one knee, carved away down to deep cover. They will just pick up the single. But again, that, that run out. I mentioned Smith's fielding at uh, Edgebasson. Pulled off a brilliant run out from the deep there. And again, there was a misfield, but a great throw in from him. Brought another wicket. He's in again. This time he's beaten the bat, and that is going to roll all the way, is it? Oh, there's a fielder on the boundary. Very fine. That's Joe Leach. I'm just waiting for the umpire's signal. It looks like he was able to stop that one. Just a very fine little edge. I get another two runs from it. So five runs coming off Smith's over. 271 for five. Robinson on four. Clark on two. End of the over. 13 to go tonight. Durham lead by 331 here on the BBC. The uh, pitch does seem to have flattened out a bit this afternoon as well. It seems a bit slower, doesn't it? So... Uh it definitely did. Bivin betting him had so much time to play so many of those shots, but then you've got to give credit to him as well. Here's Finch bowling to Robinson. Robinson drives up back past the bowler. It's cut off just behind him. I've got my fleece on. I gave in. Yeah, this is where we... It's, uh, I mean, the, the the ground is bathed in sunshine, but the, the sun is going around the corner and behind the trees from our point of view. Still feel a little bit of warmth on the side of this marquee. But well, not wearing my gloves yet. On my ear warmer. Finch in. Oh, this has gone off towards point. Dot ball. And, and that's it at the moment too. It is... Can they just be accurate enough to dry dry up the runs first up with uh, two new batters at the crease, but still find a way to penetrate? Here comes the bowler. Defended by Robinson up to mid on. Let's see what's been happening elsewhere. The other games, Lancashire were bowled out for 146 in their game against Essex at Chelmsford. Essex now lead by 231 at 377 for nine. As Finch comes in again and bowls. And it looks to cut there, Robinson, and he's played and missed. So Dean Elgar opening the batting there, made 79. Farrow's Cushy, 53, 81 from Tom Wesley, the skipper. And that's the current situation there. Warwickshire, 455 all out. Hampshire down in Southampton now, 139 for one. Kent made 244 at Canterbury. Surrey, 136 for none in reply. Into the third innings in Taunton. As Finch bowls, Robinson plays this ball along the ground. Oh, now he was coming back for a second here. He played that out into the covers, and as he turned, he and Finch collided with each other. Robinson went down on his knees, and Finch went right over the top of him. 
Uh, Rob Jones was also. It was a beautiful pick up and throw yeah. from Jones. Yeah. Kept them on their toes. So knots were out for 193 yesterday. Somerset then commanding lead of four. Yeah, they made 454. So knots at 12 for one and now 249 behind in their second innings in Taunton. Finch to Clark. That's gone off the pads down towards fine leg. Bottom corner of the ground. Leach comes round to feel that. Leicestershire, 574 for seven, declared in Derby. And uh, Derbyshire currently are 11 for one. So quite a sizable score from Leicestershire's point of view there. And the runs in that innings coming from uh, Marcus Harris, who made 214. Mm. Peter Hanscom, the former Durham player, 68 and 69 from Ben Cox, former Worcestershire wicketkeeper, 49 as well from Ben Mike. Here is Nathan Smith from the pavilion end, first ball down the leg side, diving take by Roderick. Well taken in the end. A couple of Australian players mentioning in mm. there. Marcus mm. Harris from Perth. That's over your way, isn't it? No. It is. It so is. It's just the other side. It's, it's just over the back fence. Man, it's it? a five-hour flight. That's nothing. <laughs> Maybe not to us. Here's Smith again. Just lets that ball go past. Does Clark? We flew, I think we flew Perth, Adelaide, and that was a good three, four-hour flight. It was a jumbo jet landed in Perth and then continued on to Adelaide and there were loads of empty seats so we were able to stretch out and have a kip. I remember a few years back I went to the Australian Cricket Awards in Sydney. Mm -hmm. Might have had a couple of beverages as Smith runs in. <laughs> Bowls. It's a full delivery. It's dug out. <laughs> Just got a couple of the Durham players pausing in front of us because they were worried about walking in front of us. Uh, but yeah, so I might have had, look, I might have overindulged just a little bit. And then I had to get up. I was out, I was out till about two in the morning, had to get up at 4.30 to get the flight to Perth. So it was like a five hour flight. D did a double header in Perth that day. Smith is in over the wicket, full of ball, just Played out to the offside, no run. So I did the double header, perhaps suffering the after effects of overindulging. Then went straight back to the airport and got the red eye from Perth to Brisbane, which is even longer. That was like mm. five and a half hours. Landed in Brisbane and then did a double header that day as well. <laughs> and then the next day flew back to Sydney. Mm. That was not fun. No, it flew back to Perth. Here comes Smith. He's in. Because it was the, there was you the Big Bash finals. The yeah, no, well, no, that was no run, by the way. Because because it was the Big Bash semi final in Perth, and then the next semi final I think was in Brisbane, but then the final was back in Perth. Ah, it was all over the place. Yeah, so I went from Sydney to Perth to Brisbane to Perth to Sydney in the space of a few days. That is a long way. Mm -hmm. It's a big country, Australia. I don't know if you've noticed that. Here's the last ball of Smith's over, and it's just played along the ground, slip running across towards Gully to do the fielding, and it's a maiden over from Smith. I was looking at it on a map and it, comparing it. It's just slightly bigger than Yorkshire, isn't it? <laughs> so. Just slightly. Yeah. Slightly. Not as nice, I mean, though. The, you know, that's counting the East Riding in as well, obviously. So, yeah, there's some daft distances. So I consider, people ask me where I'm from, and I say I'm oh, just inland from Sydney. It's about four hours' drive. Yeah. So I consider that quite close, though. So what's there? Is it desert or not? Is no, it, it it's greenery? not far enough. Yes, where mountains? I'm from. Is it mountains? We, to get to my hometown of Orange, you, you drive over the Blue Mountains, mm -hmm. and then you keep going. And then when you, you're far enough west so that you have to duck to let the sun go down, you yeah. know you've arrived. Right. But it's lovely. No, lots of wineries. It's wine country. Ah, very nice. You know, I went to the Hardy's Vineyard in Adelaide when we were out there. 
Going to see Baker returning with a bit of spin here. Durham are 333 ahead at 273 for five. And uh, Robinson forward to this one, pushes the ball towards deep point for one. There's ski resorts in the Blue Mountains, isn't there? No. But you can go skiing in South Australia, though, can't you? Uh, no. There are some yeah. ski resorts. There are, but we're mostly it never snow? south of south of um, st south of New South Wales and and north of Victoria. Yeah. Cut hard by Clark this one, and Rob Jones is diving in to cut it out on the boundary next to the pavilion. Two runs. I almost think did he stop I mean, a little do, bit? They do get some pretty net poor winters in certain corners don't oh they? it gets very cold that so it gets quite miserable doesn't it in the winter a bit wet it can and cold. be miserable in the summer at mm. times baker in again this is defended by clark there's a much quicker delivery that time and uh, actually my hometown we do get the odd snowfall mm. it's on the slopes of an extinct volcano it's quite a high altitude ball played this time to backward point no run so it's one of those places that people say often it looks a bit English because they do have four seasons. Yeah. Next ball played back up. Are there any other restaurants or just that one? <laughs> There's lots of... In fact, it's very it's very well known as a proper foodie place. Is it? Oh, yeah. My word it is. Food and wine. Baker in and uh, an attempted sweep from Clark. It's hit him on the pad and gone off down towards uh, square leg. A leg by will be signalled. Yorkshire are batting again at Lords. So they were out for 159 yesterday. Middlesex made 246. Yorkshire now 140 for six. So they only lead by 53. And in Northampton, Glamorgan made 271. North Hans have nearly caught them up and only for the loss of two wickets. They trail by just 22 runs at the moment. The other match taking place at Hove, Gloucestershire made 417, Sussex 230 for three. Here's Nathan Smith, and he bowls at full, and it's just, just chopped really into the offside by Clark. And no run there. So Smith bowled a maiden in his last over. Mervyn's email. He said, Good afternoon, Martin. I hope Durham realised that reckless batting could dissolve a strong position. He says, We've just seen a good performance from the Diamonds. So let's see what their score was. As Smith runs in, bowls to Clark. Again, he just chops that one down into the gully region this time. No run. Trying to find the scorecard. Yeah, Ashthorpe's confirming for me. He says Orange is just over the back fence from Perth. I thought it would be. It's so... It's just not even close to being in the same region. Smith is in and uh, just pushed out into the covers. It's, of course, the hometown of Phoebe Litchfield, who uh, will be no stranger to the fans over here of the women's game. And for those who don't know who... <laughs> Oh, what? Phoebe is. She's she's a she's a gun. She's one of the Australian in the Australian team she made a real splash in the uh, in the WPL as well. Smith bowls a fuller delivery, and this time it's chopped into the offside, and they will get a run. That looked like a, a risky single initially, didn't it? But um, soft hands, yeah. I think. He didn't. One of those occasions where because he didn't hit it hard. The run was there. It was well run in the end. Yeah, so she's uh, she's a fantastic player. One of the best ones to ever watch. It's almost hypnotic if you're watching her in the nets. Thunder made 165. Northern Diamonds 166 for one. So it's been fairly comprehensive. So in comes Smith once more. And this one's just sent up towards... Mid on. Diamonds won by nine wickets with 93 balls remaining. The Central Sparks made 213 for nine at Edgebaston and bowled the blaze out for just 135. Southeast Stars have beaten the Vipers by uh, four wickets with three balls to spare, chasing down at 274. So. Robinson on strike now as Smith is in and he just 
clips that one in the air for a moment, but it's safe. And in fact, it may go for four. It does. Rob Jones diving deep backward square leg. Can't save the boundary. So Robinson moves to 10. 282 for five now. Lead is uh, 342. Five from the over. And there's nine overs to go tonight here on the BBC. Uh, what else? Um, South East Stars beating the Vipers with uh, four wickets and three balls to go. Wiz, Western Storm all out for 114. Lost to the Sunrisers by eight wickets. 98 balls remaining in that one. And uh, I was wondering how Nepal got on. Baker with a new over here. Coming in from the railway end. It's turned by... Clark off through square leg for one. Nepal, oh. 139 for eight. Lost to Hong Kong by four wickets with three balls to go. Yeah, it's a, it's a real scrap at the moment in the associate world. Ball defended here by Robinson off Baker. Coming round the wicket, left arm round the wicket. Comes in again and bowls and a little tap. Out on the leg side. Dolavira pounces on it. It's short extra, it's short mid wicket, and he's up on his toes in a second and fires it towards the stumps at the bowler's end. He th I think he's hurt his wrist now as well. It's a single though. Clark on strike now. Clark plays it back into the ground and back to Baker. Next ball. Looks to sweep. That looked like even from here is going down the leg side. It's given not out. He's played and missed it. It's hit his pad, but uh, Paul Pollard says no. So we've got one ball left and eight overs. So that's technically half an hour, but with a spinner on, it will be quicker than that, you'd imagine. And uh, this one's gone out towards deep square leg for one for Clark. Keeps strike, end of the over. So Durham lead by three four five at two eight five for five. So where are we? Eighteen minutes past, so around about quarter to seven. Possibly slightly earlier for the finish tonight. Might get some food before the milk train sets off to the markets of London. What's the milk train? Well, uh, they had it on the milk trains were uh, I don't know if they still have them now, but they used to have milk trains coming in from Cornwall and all over all the rural areas into the big cities during the night. Farmers would load up their milk. Jason Holder in the pavilion end. First ball's full and just pressed down to mid on. No run by Clark. So the, uh, you know, the milk that you were putting on your cornflakes in your flat in Ballam. It come from a cow in Cornwall the day before. Ah. See, as a as a country girl myself, yeah, we used to have our own cows. And hold up, he's in a full delivery. And that just in the end, just kept them in the spare room, out. did you? <laughs> so we just we had we had a, uh, one horse that thought it was a giant sheep, and we had several sheep. And uh, quite a few cows as well on the orchard. There's so a picture of a milk train. There were big, um, oh. what looked like giant gas canisters or oil canisters on on rails. They were a common sight in the railways of Great Britain. Hold up. He's in. And that one is just pressed into the ground on the leg side. No run for Clark again. So they were around from the 30s to the late 60s introduced to transport drinking milk from creameries to consumers in the cities but by 1981 they'd all been replaced by road transport I think if you go to the railway museum in York I think they've got some of the old milk trains on show there and possibly one of them in Shildon as well as Holder commences his run up he's in over the wicket to Clark he just drops this one down on the leg side and they scamper through for a very quick single they do still have mail trains, and I remember not that many years ago, if you had an important document that you wanted to get down to London, there was a mail train used to come into Newcastle Central Station, and it was basically a sorting office in a train. And you could go and post your mail into the side of the train, and it would get sorted and delivered in London the next morning, so you could post your stuff about 8, 9 o'clock at night. 
and he will be in London the next morning. This holder is in over the wicket. Just played out to the offside, no run. Yeah, see, tell you what, that is something in Australia. The mail is very slow. Yeah. So I, I, I'd like a mail train in Australia because the, sometimes it seems it takes three hours to drive to Canberra, but if you pay express post, it can take a week <laughs> for um, for the letter to get there. As I discovered when I renewed my passport recently. Here's Holder. Full ball flicked through the leg side. Rob Jones has done a lot of work today. He does some more now. I'll just get the single. So pretty tidy over there from Holder. Two runs coming from it. 287 for five now. Robinson on 12 and Clark on 28. So they're just starting to build again. Watch the... Um is it a green passport, the Australian one, is it? No, what it's a it? blue one. Blue. So I've got two. I've got my British well, passport. Well, are now sort of bluey black, aren't they? Well, Printed in Belgium or somewhere. I've still got a red one. I've got to get uh, I've got to get that renewed now. You've got an, Eng back you got a Euro an English Your British passport. British passport. Hey, I'm no. British. You're British, are you? Yeah. Are you? Yeah. 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 Here's Baker. Starts a new over. I know all the words Seven of Land of Hope and Glory. Do you? Of course I, I do. Why do you need to know that? I don't know. I'm not a fan of Jerusalem. Uh -huh. Baker balls played by Robinson out through mid wicket. Uh, out through the covers, sorry for one. Yeah, I always think when they sing Jerusalem it just it just irritates me because the answer to every single question in the lyrics is no. No, those feet did not. No that no. It's just no. This is defended by Clark, the next ball from Baker. Well it's St George's Day in a in the next few days, isn't it, in this country? Celebrating mm -hmm. a man who never came to Britain, apparently, if he existed. <laughs> Baker Bowles. I think he was Turkish, wasn't he? Yeah. This has gone up to long on for one. Yes, yeah, so, but, uh, well, yes, British and Australian. Best of both worlds. Pick whichever one I want to be. Next ball comes in and uh, is played away. Up to long on again, this time by... Robinson, I didn't know this thing existed and that it had been a tradition going back many years, but apparently it is a thing every year that hundreds of people from Sunderland go to Benidorm to celebrate St George's <laughs> Day. I really don't know why that became a thing, but <laughs> this is driven by Clark back to the bowler. It's a dot ball, and it, apparently there are hundreds of them all go out there. Wow. Well, any excuse? Yeah, don't know why how that all began, but... See, I never used to understand when I first came over that that British people would go on holiday to certain parts of Europe that just seemed like they were basically places that served English breakfasts yep. and well, same yeah. thing. But now after sp spending time here in the cold, I do understand <laughs> it. Here's Holder. That oh, is chipped right in the air. It's going straight towards Rob Jones. He does really well. Great awareness on the boundary. Robinson out for... It's a, no ball. Ball. Oh. it's a no ball. It's a no ball. Would you believe it? Oh, the well, maybe chances. That's why he played such a tame uh, shot straight to the fielder. He'd heard the heard the shout. Oh, uh, and Jason Holder is just staring. <laughs> he's he's got one hand on his chin as if he's uh, very confused, and staring at the crease. So Robinson, I mean, he just chipped that up perfectly for Jones. And Jones had done really well. Uh, it's so frustrating. And he does have long strides. Does hold up. He's in. It's a full ball. And it's just dug out. I watched um, Shirley Valentine again recently. I hadn't seen it for 20 odd years. Do you know the film? I've never seen it, oh, but yeah. I know it's it. It's a good film. Still, It's still, still good. But she ends up working in a, a little restaurant on a Greek island and this British couple come in and every day they're looking through the menu and all, oh, don't like that. Don't. So every day she does them egg and chips and they absolutely <laughs> yes. love their egg and chips. That's it. Holder's yeah. in another full ball. That just squirts off the inside edge of the bat. they will run through for a single. Yeah, I, I do understand it now. Because so sometimes people might not be so interested in going and looking at museums or churches or war, whatever it is, it is uh, you know, various tourism thing. They just sort of want to hang out and be warm. Mm. So I kind of get that now. Let's hold up. 
is in over the wicket. And that one is just dead battered, really, by Robinson out towards the covers. I'm just wondering if this mass trip to Benidorm may have started with one pub organising like a you know, a holiday for the regulars and then it became a thing and then a couple of other pubs joined in. So I think a lot of those who go there drinking <laughs> and, uh, you know, a finite oh. number of pubs in a particular area of I'm, London, I think. I'm sure it's a holiday f that's full of sobriety <laughs> as Holder is in and again the inside edge. This time it's going to run all the way down to the boundary. Rob Jones running around can do nothing about that. Uh, inside edge, doesn't matter how they come for Durham at the moment, but they're getting a bit of a wriggle on again now. The scoring rate's just lifting somewhat. Um, Have they got, we'll where's the ball? Has it gone into the marquee? Oh, it's gone under the covers. Oh, it's just it's unlucky. That is unlucky. <laughs> well, Tell the, you the, the lead is now 358, so there's 5.2 overs to go. So you're looking at three, 370, 380 maybe. He's found the he's found the ball. Oh well, good because it, it it may it's been a very expensive day for Worcestershire's bowlers, but it's been an expensive day for the, the people who have to buy the balls. Yeah, they've lost a lot. Here's a holder is in, just slowly rolls out into the covers. Two hundred and ninety-eight for five is the actual score, so the lead three five eight. So I'll jump off now, and then Chris can come back in and mop up for the last five overs. Do a bit of clearing up at the end of the day. Fill the dishwasher and whatnot. Oh, well. Are you, you're here tomorrow, aren't you? <laughs> I am here yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. In comes Holder to Robinson. Sent straight back to Holder. He puts a half-hearted boot in front of it, but it wasn't going very far anyway, so... You've done well, because you've landed yourself a lift home tonight as well. So. Oh, I, I have. Yeah. Uh, I was quite happy to get the... The train, but no, yeah. I've uh, managed to get a lift, so mm. I'll get the train here tomorrow morning. Yeah. It's 298 for five now, off after 59 overs, that lead 358. Robinson has moved along to 19 as Baker continues. Ball goes straight back to the bowler, and Clark is 10. So just getting a nice partnership together. Clark on strike, and he plays a very delicate little carve off Baker, but only as far as backward point. Welcome back, Chris. Thank you. You're well, here to do some mopping up. <laughs> Story of my life. Baker again, this time punched to a diving... I think it's Brett D'Olivera. He's coming around from mid on. Vents a run there. So Baker in once more, and this time it's driven straight down. Joe Leach running in from long off directly in front of us. He's going to keep that to one. Don't like it when they field right in front of us. <laughs> you have to whisper. I mean, I always say nice things anyway. He's actually fielding quite in, in quite a way off the boundary as Baker's in. Again, this time it goes down to long on running in off the boundary and they will take another single. Yeah, he's not too close. He's not right on the boundary at all. It's a good 10 metres in. It's Baker to Clark. He slaps that one away down to Rob Jones at deep point. He'll get another single. Most of the spectators have, have gone there, haven't they? Well, the shadows are creeping. Uh, that's the end of either one. I thought we were, I think the scoreboard has got only five balls being bowled there, but uh, they're changing ends. So yeah, we'll take that. Any, anything to there we go. Uh, so there was a single off there. It so was, yeah. yeah. So three singles coming off the last three balls of the over. So that 300 coming up in that over as well. Just missed that. 301 for five. Holder starts a new over to Clark, the right-hander, at a leading edge there. We'll pick up a run, ball going to a backward point. Clark moves on to 13. As you get home tonight, my wife say, how did it go? And what were you talking about today? And I go, toilets and milk trains. And 
I mean, and that's the sensible bit in here. I just went into the media tent and, well, it's like being with the Muppets in there. <laughs> <laughs> My head was ringing after about 10 minutes. I had to come out again. Oh, well. <laughs> it was all our yesterdays. <laughs> Let's hold her is uh, in again. And the ball's run down to third man. Two men chasing after the ball. And they'll come through for two. Think of a third. It's not there, though. But I think a lot of thinking for uh, what's the just to, to do in terms of their approach tomorrow. There's five wickets down, so yeah, they're going. You would have thought 450. They'll be well, not not necessarily chasing, but they have a lot of time to to bat out tomorrow and into Monday if the weather holds. I don't think it's. Uh, due to rain all day on Monday. So there'll be a conclusion here, you'd feel, as the next ball is just flicked away down to Joe Leach at fine leg. And through for one. 3.3 overs left today. And I think those Worcestershire players will be glad to get back in there and showered and, and rest up. Uh, a, a long two sessions out there for them. It certainly has. And uh, they were battered a little bit by Beddingham. Very much so. Holder bowling oh. from the pavilion end is pulled away, and well, that's a brilliant oh. stop on the boundary by Jones. Got across quickly, dived, and just pulled the ball back before it went over the ropes. Great bit of fielding from him. Late in the day, here we are. What? Just gone half past six. And 60 oh, is it 60? 61 overs he's been out there. And bring a stop like that out. That was absolutely brilliant. And one thing I will say, he's been a crackerjack in the field yeah. all day. He, yeah. he really hasn't let his energy drop. It's been a really good effort from him out there. Holder bowls, played into the offside and no run. And he's been in, well, he could do a danger money out there, couldn't he? Toward mm. When the sun was in his eyes and very difficult to pick the ball up. But he stayed out there. Joe Leach, in fact, just gives him a, another clap. That's what, that's what you need is players like that. They would just give it all day. And regardless of, you know, they're behind the eight ball. Keeps on going. As is Holder, bowling. That's a nice looking shot. Just uh, flicks away up to wide mid on. And uh, they're through for one more. So another over ticks by. Three to go. 307 for five. Robinson 24. Clark 13. And the lead, 367. Holder, 11 overs, naught for 56. There's still quite good light here as well, I confess. I was wondering what it would be like here sort of late in the day. But certainly with blue skies, it's uh, held up really well. So Baker, it is to continue first ball. Big stride forward and just gently pressed into the offside by Robinson. Again, Baker is in around the wicket. It's just chipped down towards Joe Leach running in from the long off boundary. Keeps it to just one. Yeah, it'd be interesting to hear the views. I would imagine it's uh, one of the coaching staff that will come out afterwards to do the interviews. Clark on strike now and just strokes that one from Baker again to Joe Leach, giving him a bit of work to do on the long off boundary. Just the one. Yeah, that's always it, isn't it? You get, you get a, a coach on the bad days. Yeah. yeah. In comes Baker again, and that is just well, carved away. It was in the air for a little bit. Uh, just deep gully doing the work there. And get another run. We used to call it when um, Darren Lehman was the coach of Australia. When Australia did, did badly, we used to call it bad day boof. <laughs> Baker. And again, once more, and that beats a fielder in the covers so Joe Leach, have, Joe Leach having to do a lot of work late in the day another single yeah so it was bad day boof he always knew you were going to get get him on those days of course that's fair enough we protect the players Baker is in again beats a fielder in the covers and it is Jones having to clean up as he comes in off the boundary again so just the singles, five singles in a row. So just a little bit easy 
to milk in that over Baker. He's bowled 12 overs, none for 56. Uh, 312 for five now Durham leading by 372 with Robinson on 27 and Clark on 15 and this pair both came out after a couple of wickets fell quickly and have actually done a, a very good job of building a nice little partnership yeah they've just played sensible cricket haven't they there's uh, nice total on the board already when they came out plenty of time left in the game there's no need for any uh, heroics and from what's your point of view, I think probably both sides now, it's just about seeing it through to the end as Libby comes on at the pavilion end. And another brilliant stop on the boundary by, by Rob Jones. They're through for two, but that was superb fielding. Getting around there, diving down to his right and certainly saved two runs. Alan Robinson's just walked in front of us in the commentary box and uh, given him an extra little clap as well. Libby bowling his spinners, drags that one down, driven out to long on. So uh, the fact we've got spin on at this at uh, both ends now should be through in uh, about five minutes' time. Nine balls left in the day. Uh, ten balls. Libby in again. Turn square on the leg side and no run. That last single brought up the 50 partnership. So I mentioned in building a nice little partnership. Mm. It's... It's gone at a pretty reasonable rate. They've each faced 43 deliveries. Robinson scored 30, Clark 15. Ooh. And well, it looked to pull that, the batter then. Lost the, lost the bat, came out of his hand, went high in the air and wasn't too far from uh, giving Roderick a, a, a bash on the head there. Well, that was bizarre. <laughs> Just have a look at it again as uh, the ball was bowled. Went to... Well, not even did, didn't even go to pull it really. He just was looking to flick it on the leg side, and the ball went out of his hands into the air, and and then as I say, just dropped short of uh, hitting Roderick. In the meantime, they've just managed to get another single, but that was weird. Last ball of the over, played defensively by Robinson, and uh, that's the end of the over. One over to go. 316 for five, lead of 376. Robinson on 30, Clark on 16. Yeah, I was lucky that it didn't actually clatter on his head. It just, I guess it just slipped out of his um, hands a little bit. Yeah. But it wasn't like he was trying to heave it with any great He was thought. trying to flick it, wasn't it? That was a yeah. bizarre thing for it to go <laughs> to go as high as it did. It was, I don't know what happened there, bizarre. So, Baker it is to bowl the last over of the day. First ball is just straight leg, leg side, and that is flicked away to the leg side by Clark. Quite comfortably going through for the single. And I think that's probably what they'll be happy with at this stage of the day. Just to try and milk it around a little bit more. Next ball, this is better, fuller delivery from... Baker, he really gave that some flight and it's just sent straight back to the bowler by Robinson. Here comes Baker again, push forward and it goes out into the covers. Rob Jones running in from the deep. And they'll get a couple of runs. No, just the one actually, he kept it. He's uh, been good at keeping them tight. Baker, that one just glided out again to deep point running in Rob Jones worked hard today deserves a, a lot of credit for what he's done in the field fielding in a tough position with the sun in his eyes here's Baker again a fuller ball pushed back straight to the bowler by Robinson I won't take any risks here there's one ball remaining in the day and it's just just pushed into the offside for a dot ball. So three runs coming off the last over. And it's 319 for five now for Durham, leading by 379. Good day's play here. Seen uh, plenty of runs. Worcestershire starting the day at 78 for four. Uh, took that on to 184. Good bowling in the morning session by the visitors taking six wickets uh, for Worcestershire. Jake Libby top scoring with 61. It was 18 from Holder, 33 not out from Smith and 18 from Finch. 184 all out was a lead of 60 for Durham. 
looked in a little bit of trouble uh, when they uh, went down to 37 for two after Smith and Leach had accounted for Lees for four and Ackerman for 18. But then a superb partnership uh, between Beddingham and uh, Borthwick, the captain, they put on 195, just one short of the record uh, in 34 overs before Borthwick was run out for 75. And uh, an excellent 75 from him. Uh, Coglin came and went for seven, and then Beddingham was the fifth man out for 138, made from uh, 99 balls, 13 fours and eight sixes. And uh, since then, the, the, uh, the, for the six wicket, unbroken, over 50 between uh, Robinson and Clark have taken the score at the close to 319 for five, a lead of 379. So a uh, good day's play here today and uh, all set fair with the weather and for another good day tomorrow. And uh, very much it's been the visitors' day. So uh, from uh, the three of us here today, myself, Chris Williams, Martin Emerson and Mel Ferrell, uh, well, those two will be back with you tomorrow. Uh, be joined by Frank Watson, but uh, from Chester Road, Kidderminster, I wish you a very good evening.